Hello and welcome to the Full Grip Games Gym Leader Challenge 2.5k event featuring the newest Pokemon trading card game set, Astral Radiance. I am joined by trainer Chip Richie. How you doing, Chip? I'm doing so good, Andrew, and I am so excited for this event today. We got through the standard yesterday. It was a great time. We saw a ton of new cards, a ton of new decks. Ultimately, it was the good old Mew VMAX taking it down. But I'm really excited for today, the Gym Leader Challenge event. I love this format. Love getting to see some top level play and some really fun different decks because each of the types is so unique right and this format really is about unique combinations we're gonna get to see cards spanning the last decade of the pokemon tcg side by side forming strategies together to take wins it is going to be an awesome day for Pokemon TCG content, we've got a great round one queued up with Michael Zeely versus Jesse Parker, a metal deck versus a lightning deck. If you're unfamiliar with Gym Leader Challenge format, it is my favorite way to play Pokemon cards and a ton of fun. It is a singleton format, so you can only play one of each card in your deck. It's a monotype format, so you have to pick your favorite type to build your deck around, just like a gym leader would, and it's a single prize format. So no Pokemon with rule boxes allowed. And the resulting format is, I think, a real joy to watch. Let's get down to the table and see what round one has got in store for us. On the left, we see Jesse Parker, who's going to be rocking a metal deck today. Jesse's made top eight at several of these Gym Leader Challenge events here at Full Grip Games, but he's always been playing a water deck. He's kind of coined himself the Water Gym Leader, yes. but has decided to switch it up today, going with a metal deck. And on the other side, Michael Zeely is going to be playing Lightning, which I know is one of your favorite types in Gym Leader Challenge. Yes, I love the Lightning deck. It is... Uh, and it is definitely my favorite type to play. But I also love this metal deck. These are actually my two favorite decks in Gym Leader Challenge. Here we go. And I think that they are both such a joy to play. The metal deck and the lightning deck both play very differently. The lightning deck is all about nimble Pokemon with quick and efficient attacks. The team up Zapdos is kind of like the leader of the deck, I feel like. It starts the game off with its thunderous assault attack in a lot of games, only doing 80 damage, but that 80 damage can knock out a lot of low HP Pokemon. And Gym Leader Challenge format is all about evolving. It's about Pokemon that evolve into more powerful stage one and stage two Pokemon, like this Meltan that Jesse has got in the active spot. It's gonna be able to evolve into the powerful Melmetal from Evolving Skies. Melmetal's got the Ingot Swing attack, which does 80 damage and prevents all damage done to this Pokemon by attacks from Pokemon that have abilities during the next turn, and then its Blasting Hammer can do 150 damage. Yeah, Melmetal's huge. 150 HP on a stage one is really big in this format. Jesse's taking a little bit of time here to check the prize cards, which is super important in a format like this. It's already important in standard to kind of have an idea of what you've got prized, but in a format where every single card in your deck is a one of, it is much more important because all of your evolution lines, you've only got one of each of them. So you don't really want to go get Bronzor in play if you know you have Bronzong prized. Yes, absolutely. And I think that Jesse is running the new Hisuian Heavy Ball item card from Astral Radiance, which almost feels like printed specifically for this format in some yeah. ways. It can <laughs> allow you to go into your prizes, and here it is. You flip over your prizes, take a look, and you're able to select a basic Pokemon you find out of the prizes, Ooh. and Jesse is able to find the uh, Q font. Q font. Yes, Kaparaja Jr. over here. <laughs> uh, able to find the Q font out of the prizes. And that is huge because Kaparaja is one of the most powerful attackers in Jesse's deck. And since this is a singleton format, you can only play one Q font. A one turn into this tournament. And we're already seeing the impact of Astral Radiance. Of course, Hisuian Heavy Ball being a new card from the set. And Jesse's getting set 
set up pretty nicely here for turn one going first. Yes. Getting basic Pokemon in play is one of the more difficult things in the early turns, especially if you're not playing a supporter like Gloria or Bridget to set your field up. The fact that Jesse is going first and is getting all of this set up is incredible. Now, Jesse was con Ooh, debating, considering yeah. the metal core barrier on the active Meltan to make it so that Zapdos could not take a knockout. Michael has got the turn one Parallel City. Parallel City is a card that I consider to be one of the most powerful stadium cards in Gym Leader Challenge format. Parallel City is going to limit Jesse's bench to just three cards. And then Zeely playing a professor's research to discard the hand and draw seven cards pretty solid i think that you love to throw down that parallel on a turn when your opponent has four or five pokemon in play and you're going to be disrupting some of their board so it's unfortunate for michael that he was forced to play it now since he was going to juniper the hand away anyways really love to play that when you can maybe make your opponent have a tough decision. Do I discard a support Pokemon? Do I right. have to discard one of my attackers? So didn't get the full value out of Parallel, but it is an extremely powerful card. And Michael did also discard the Avery in that Juniper. So another key bench limiting card that he's not going to have access to. And yeah, Michael's going to use Quick Ball and search out amazing Raikou. And this is kind of the star of the deck. Zapdos gets you going, but Raikou is what kind of sweeps through the game in this deck. Yeah, this whole deck is built to utilize amazing Raikou effectively. Amazing Raikou has its amazing shot attack, and boy, is it amazing. <laughs> it does 120 damage to the active and 120 damage to a benched Pokemon. However... It is an attack that comes at a cost. A, a steep one. A grass, a lightning, and a metal energy. And I don't know if you've ever tried to play a deck with three different types of energy in it, but it is sometimes tough to get all three of those different types of energy onto the same Pokemon. But in Gym Leader Challenge, there are ways to make these kinds of things happen. So Michael passes it over to Jesse, and this is not the best use of your Guzma. You love to be aggressive with this card and take a big key KO. It seems like Jesse's just going to have to Guzma and go for the overhaul. A little bit slow of a play, but not too bad. And I honestly love the Magearna because it's a solid attacker. Wind-up cannon can really get in there yep. as a basic Pokemon. You're, you're dealing a consistent, you know, 70 90 damage, something like that with the wind-up cannon. And then it has the added bonus of a good setup attack with the overhaul, which is what Jesse is having to go for here. Pretty solid. And also got a double colorless energy on the Meltan. Really looking for the Mel Metal to start attacking with it and got swing. Yeah, this is actually a really solid turn from Jesse because he's got both his Q font and his Mel Metal on the bench. Those are the two most powerful right. attackers in the Metal deck. He's starting to build up his strategy. He's got the Dialga on the bench. The Dialga can use its temporal backflow attack to bring a card back from the discard pile next turn as he tries to build up his strategy. Looks like Zeely is going to play Ultra Ball. Nice yeah. golden Ultra Ball there. And search out a Pokemon from his deck, trying to craft a path forward. He's got both Flaffy or Mareep and Tynamo on the bench, which evolve into Flaffy and Electric, which are Pokemon cards that have been released about a decade apart. Uh, literally a decade apart. Noble Victories came out in 2011, and Flaffy here came out at the end of 2021. And this is what I love about the Gym Leader Challenge format. We're seeing cards literally 10 years apart being utilized in the same deck. And what's cool as well is that these cards are literally the exact same. They have the same amount of HP, the same attack, and that same key ability. Dynamotor, bringing back a lightning energy card from your discard pile to one of your benched Pokemon. And in a format like Gym Leader Challenge, energy acceleration is key. Looks like Zilli's getting another big draw with uh, potentially Cynthia. I think so, yep. Or it was Verse Seeker for research. I think Cynthia, yep. there's six cards in hand. And getting that grass energy onto the amazing Raikou means that it is just one turn away from that amazing shot. So to say that 
the pressure is mounting on Jesse is a little bit of an understatement because this deck is going to start hitting hard next turn. One of the easiest ways to power up Amazing Raikou is with Counter Energy. Counter Energy is like a double rainbow energy if you are behind on prizes. So usually you are safe from Amazing Raikou so long as you don't take the early lead. But if you attach three separate energy to the amazing Raikou, then Raikou can start swinging with its amazing shot very quickly. Zeely's going to use the Dynamotor ability and start loading energy onto Electabuzz, which can evolve into the Electivire, capable of taking some big one-hit knockouts with Electrified Bolts. Yeah, that's going to be one of... Michael's best attackers in this matchup because Jesse's part, uh, Jesse's Pokemon have so much HP and they can have those damage reducing tools as we saw the metal goggles just got attached to the Q font. We see the shield energy going on to the Meltan. These Pokemon are going to become very difficult to KO, especially if Jesse can find things like the metal frying pan, the metal core barrier. All these damage reducing items is one of the reasons metal is so powerful in GLC because these Pokemon are so hard to KO. And in addition to all these damage reduction buffs, we also got Crystal Cave in play. Yep. Crystal Cave is a stadium card that heals 30 damage from each of your metal Pokemon during your turn. So that is part of the tanky strategy of this metal deck. You wanna get these big Pokemon into play. You wanna put these damage reduction tools on them and then tank hits and dish out a ton of damage. Jesse is able to find the Mel Metal from Evolving Skies, evolves that into play instantly because it helps to protect that energy investment, right? The Meltan's only got uh, a little bit of HP. Heavy Ball will find the Copper Raja. So now both of these major players yeah. are online. This yeah. is a huge turn from Jesse. Yeah, Jesse is setting up excellently. This game is going very well. And you can see the stark difference here between GLC and Standard. We're at like turn three and these guys are still kind of getting set up and getting ready to start going in and attacking very soon but it's a slow grind. You know, they take their time to get there, whereas in standard, it's just like a race to the first knockout. It's gotta be, right. And you're taking a third of the game with a knockout of a Pokemon V. It's, uh, it, the pace of the game is much different in Gym Leader Challenge, which is one of the reasons that I think a lot of people have really fallen in love with the formats because the format really, uh, I say, accentuates the core of the Pokemon TCG and what makes it such a fun game to play, the back and forth strategy, the ability to set up different Pokemon that do different things and have all, them all work in tandem towards a common goal. Jesse's ready to start attacking. Magearna retreats to the bench, puts some metal energy in the discard pile so if he can get a Bronzong next turn, he can start metal linksing energies into play and Mel Metal is ready to swing. Ingot swing. Dealing 80 damage, taking out that Blitzel, which I actually believe has metal resistance, but 80 damage still enough to knock out that 60 HP Blitzel. And now Michael responds by Evolution Incense to grab the Electivire. Does need a special energy in order to activate this attack for the boosted damage, and it doesn't look like he has it. No, uh, looks like maybe going for uh, Paralysis or just going in with the Electivire potentially to just swing for some damage saying maybe i'm just not knocking out this mel metal in one hit and that's okay because the raikou can clean up shop later mm -hmm. so the electivire is a big dude 140 hit points could be pretty tough to knock out you know maybe jesse can pull off the let's see so zeely's gonna play teammates i do wonder what he's going for yeah, it would have been a great turn, I feel like, to go for the Electrified Bolt. You would have taken a prize on the Mel Metal here, 150 HP. Oh, yeah. Which would have been pretty solid. Is going to play the town map, it looks like. Did grab that, so 
We haven't seen Zapdos yet this game. Oh, is that the, it's there in the deck, I guess. So yeah. I was wondering if that could be a piece that was prized. Strange line. I mean, because Zilli just attached that lightning energy to the Electivire so quickly. Yeah. And it could have just as easily been a rainbow energy or, or Aurora. Or Aurora to deal the boosted 180 damage necessarily necessary to take the knockout on the Melmetal. And I feel like with Jesse having a zero energy board, that would have been a huge turn. Yeah, maybe Michael's just trying to build for the Amazing Raikou on the next turn. That must be his game plan. He did grab the Aurora, it looks like, off of the off of the teammates. So that's prepped. A couple of energy in the prizes. A Marnie, a Guzma. Yeah. Those are some pretty tough prizes, honestly. The the electric is in there as well as the air balloon. All very valuable cards. Uh, Zeli could also just be going for a paralysis with Thundershock. Yeah, try to buy Maybe a turn. trying to buy himself a turn. Uh, definitely a missed opportunity with the electrified bolt, though. And I wonder if talking to him after this, he's going to be like, yeah, I'm a goon. Just uh, <laughs> threw down that lightning energy before I even uh, read it. Oh, yep. There's the nod of the head. I think Zeely thought he was taking a knockout the whole time. Yeah, I think that's definitely a misstep there. On yeah. You're going to want to read your cards, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is uh, quite unfortunate. So 50... Damage. Yeah, shield energy the, re reducing 10 there. And then the crystal cave right. healing. Yes. And this is just a huge missed opportunity from Zeely, thinking that he's taking the knockout with electrified bolts, missing the key buff with the, oh my gosh, and getting the town map, thinking that he's going to go get a card off the town map, right? Nope. Yeah, it's really tough. And now losing the Electivire, wow. which is the most powerful attacker in the lightning deck. Yeah, definitely not ideal. But there is a decent amount of damage on this Mel Metal now. So Amazing Shot is going to be able to take a knockout. And Michael can target down a Pokemon on the bench. Either that Magearna or more likely that Bronzor to take that threat of Metal Links out of play. Cynthia and Caitlin will discard a card from hand. Looks like Colrus. This is like the best draw yeah, card Col in the deck. <laughs> Colrus is maybe the best draw card in the format. Yes. Yeah. Uh, but going to the My discard card. pile, and Michael will be able to recover a card here from the discard. And there's a lot of powerful supporter options. Looks like Avery is the choice. I know Cynthia and Caitlin is one of your favorite supporters in the format as well, just because I it provides you with so much. Love Cynthia and Caitlin. Cynthia and Caitlin is a card that draws you cards and it also guarantees you more draw for next turn or more options for next turn because it's fetching a supporter card out of the discard pile as well. And in a singleton format, that is incredibly valuable. Michael's going to use Flaffy's Dynamotor ability to charge an energy onto the benched Dynamo. And we're looking at an amazing shot. Can do 110 damage, which is enough to take out this Mel Metal. Going to discard the Gloria. Gloria. Yeah, not super useful at and this point. I would say that uh, I would like to see the knockout on the Bronze Ore as well. Or I maybe think, setting no, up damage. Uh, this is really, a, I think, a, a misplay here. Because by hitting into the Caparaja, it's just going to heal 30 and then can go in next turn and swing. So you're, yeah, you're trying to soften up the Caparaja, but you are also opening up the door for you to potentially get smacked next turn. Whereas if you knock out the bronze or there's going to be no metal links happening. Yeah. Right. So, and also you get to take a prize, like another prize. And I think are safe, more safe from the Caparaja. Jesse top decks, the Colrus. We were just talking about how good that card is as a supporter in this format, but there's not a ton of Pokemon on the bench right now. So it could be a little difficult to get that set up. Jesse could even go with a big drain, a dig drain this turn. It would yeah. two-hit KO the amazing Raikou, and you're healing 30 more damage from this Copperaja. And Copperaja is an absolute tank with 190 hit points and those metal goggles boosting it even more. Yeah, this is uh I mean, I see why. I really see why Michael wanted to swing into the Caparaja, right? Because Caparaja's muscular nose does 220 damage, but it doesn't do anything if it has eight or more damage counters on it. Sure. My counter argument would be by putting 90 damage on it, you're allowing it to just heal with Crystal Cave, and you're still not t stopping it from attacking. And by keeping the Bronzor in play, now it's a Bronzong well, and can mm -hmm. metal links. Well, I wonder if Michael is thinking 
you know, even if you take out the Bronzong, if Jesse had, Jesse could theoretically have had a response of like Raihan plus attach and then bit muscular nose, knock out your Raikou. This and is then true. you have nothing. Yeah. So by Michael attacking the Copper Raja, he guarantees Raikou's not going down. I don't think there's really anything Jesse could pull off this turn that would lead to Raikou being Ooh, KO'd. That Raikou can definitely go down. Yeah, so Metal Links, an attachment to the bench, and uh, a U-turn board for the active. Mm -hmm. And it happens. To knock out with the Dialga attacking, I guess? No, with the Kaparaja. Well, Kaparaja only deals 60. <laughs> it can heal and do 220. Oh, eight or more damage counting. Oh, right. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, so it could definitely go down if Jesse pulls everything he needs off of this Colrus, but it is only for five. Right. So he needs to pull a U-turn board. But if he finds the U-turn board and a way to get a... I think he's already got a basic metal in the discard pile, then he's in there. It's all going to be whether or not he can find the U-turn board to pivot the Magirna out of the active. But there is only one in the deck. Yeah. Maybe this play would have been better for Michael if he was also replacing the stadium. Yes. Right? Uh, Let's see. Is there U-turn Jesse board? did not find it. Mm. So, actually, this play ends up working out for Michael because he is going to have another turn with the Raikou. So it's and the and the Kaparaja does have some damage on it. I would really like to see a counter stadium come down on the Crystal Cave though, because that Crystal Cave is going to cause a lot of problems for Michael's deck. Michael's deck is very good at spreading damage on the board and wants to keep it there. Yeah, Michael's already down the Parallel City, so has the Stormy Mountains. That's going to be his only option as a counter stadium through the rest of this game. Jesse's playing Nest Ball. He needs to be really careful with this, though, because he just saw Michael get back Avery last turn yeah, with the true. Cynthia and Caitlyn. So now when Michael plays that, you're going to have to discard one of these Pokemon. You've just gone and gotten this Meowth. Obviously can evolve using that Evolution Roar ability to go get Perserker. Can evolve on the next turn to start using that Steely Spirit Perserker, that ability that boosts your Metal Pokemon's damage output by 20. Really solid in a deck like this. But that might be the card that is best for Jesse to just discard. Yeah, I'm thinking either the, the Dialga or the Galarian Meowth. The Galarian Berserker isn't going to do as much against Jesse's against Michael's deck because right. Jesse's deck is already hitting for some really big numbers, and Michael's deck doesn't have a lot of hit points. I mean, really, there's just not uh, not real big HP fellas in the Lightning deck. It's very low to the ground, generally. Jesse's going to thin his deck a little bit using the Galarian Meowth's ability to discard two cards from the hand. Getting another Metal Energy into the discard pile. I do love that synergy between the Galarian Meowth and the Bronzong. And here we go. Tropical Beach. Jesse will replace his own Crystal Cave and fill his hand to seven. So Michael doesn't even have to worry about replacing it anymore. Jesse yes. took care of it for him. And this play has worked out great for Michael because now what he's going to be able to do is he'll be able to hit the Copper Aja again this yep. turn, and then now there's not going to be a way that Jesse can heal it enough for Muscular Nose to deal 220. So Michael really kind of took a risk, but it's paying off. Well, maybe. You don't want to say never. That is a Mallow and Lana. Ooh, big They're draw at, there off the beach. At, on the end of the hand, there is a Mallow and Lana, which can heal 120 damage. So I'm, um, you know, it's tough because that would be the perfect line for Jesse if he is able to, you know, soak a hit on the Kaparaja again and then dish another big hit out. Looks like Boss's order is going to bring up the Bronzong. I do like this. And Professor's letter, Michael Zilli wasting no time powering up the Reggie Lecky on the bench. This is another great attacker in the Lightning deck, doing 120 damage to the active and 40 damage to two benched Pokemon with its Terra Spark attack. So this play is going to work out really nicely for Michael, can knock out the Bronzong and hit the Kaparaja really hard. But like we saw, Jesse has the Mallow and Lana now, which would heal basically almost entirely two turns of damage off uh, from this Copper Raja, and then it could come in with the Muscular Nose to deal just a ton of damage. But Jesse's going to need either an Energy card a or a U-Turn board, and does top deck the Energy, so has access to a Pivot now. Yes, this is going to be really tough. I mean, Michael kind of let that Electivire go down without 
really maximizing its effectiveness, yeah. the Electivire is who you want in play right now. Yeah. Because it is the only Pokemon in the deck that can do uh, 180 damage, which is, you know, close to enough to knock out the Caparaja. So we are all tied up on the prize cards, but if Jesse can pull together this heal plus attack, how does Michael manage to get through Caparaja? Yes. Well, the nice thing is that Muscular knows, you know, if the... If the Caparaja has eight damage counters on it, uh, it cannot swing again, right? Right. This is a great play. Actually, finding the energy and being able to pivot with Amazing Jirachi is incredible because Amazing Jirachi allows you to find another card off the deck. We've got Tag Call and Marnie. the Marnie going to give Jesse at least another draw option for next turn and then can pay to retreat the Amazing Jirachi to the bench. And Caparaja is now almost completely healed and ready to use its muscular nose attack for 220 damage, taking Jesse down to just three prizes. A chew. Goodbye, Raikou, <laughs> to the discard pile. Michael did take Guzma off of the prizes last turn. We know that from the town map, so that is a card that could be an option to try to get around Caparaja because you're only hitting it for 90 damage with Terra Spark right now. Yes. But you can uh, you can really cook some plays up. There are things you can do. I mean, with the teammates right here, it's possible for Michael to be able to just power up another amazing Raikou. It's like Counter Energy Rescue Stretcher. Yeah. You're Dynamotor, and I'm You're out there. in there. Now, Zili does have all four Lightning Energy in play. So it's not actually something that he can do right now because there are only four Lightning Energy in this deck. So he's going to have to find a way to maybe retreat, then switch. Uh, in order to move a couple energies off, if this is what he's trying to do. But he doesn't need to rush towards this play. He could just Terra Spark with the active, soften up the Caparaja one more time, and then next turn go in with the Amazing Raikou. I think it would be a little bit uh, preemptive for him to go in with the Amazing Raikou this turn. He does have the... Um, Stormy Mountains. Stormy Mountains in yeah. play, though. So this is really nice because he could just go shuffle the three cards in, identifying that he wants that Electivire back in the deck Definitely. because it's his big hitter. He just put a couple of special energy back in the deck with a special charge and is going to start powering up this amazing Raikou again. I do think it's correct for him to go in with Reggie Lecky this turn and just soften up a couple more targets, stay behind on prizes, and then let Raikou do some work next turn. Yeah, what he might be wanting to do is take something off the prizes here. He might be fishing for something. But it looks like, oh, Jesse's prepping the damage. So we could be seeing the Terra Spark. Michael just setting up for a turn, potentially. Counter Energy does get attached to the Raikou. Has access to Dynamotor still two times. I think there is at least a Lightning Energy in the discard pile still. Maybe not. It does Terra look Spark. like Terra Spark's coming out. Yep. And 40 damage on two Pokemon. Where's this going? Yes, I really like this line. Uh, Jesse just played the Mallow and Lana last turn. It's not likely that Jesse will be able to Mallow and Lana again. Yeah. Right? So the Caparaja is going to be stuck doing 60. And then if Michael has this Lightning Energy in the discard pile, the Counter Energy is now on Raikou, which means that the Guzma in Zeely's hand is yes. going to allow him to use that amazing shot again for two more prizes. And Jesse is totally aware that that Guzma is there because yep. Michael took it from the prizes, and those prizes are face up thanks to Town Map. Definitely taking a look. He's got Tag Call. The Lusamine is there in the deck. Would love to find, you know, Crystal Cave or something like that out of the discard pile. Can use Cynthia and Caitlin to go fish a supporter out of the discard pile. You could go get Mallow and Lana again, right? Uh, this is one of the things that makes the metal deck so good is the ability to tank hits and dish out damage. This elephant is really tough to knock out. Yeah, it, it takes, I mean, it's been in play for like five turns now, and <laughs> Michael has damaged it every turn <laughs> that it has been in play, and it is still trucking along here, still having 60 hit points remaining. Or, uh, 70, actually, right? Yes, yes. But again, with that, uh, with that qualification on the muscular nose attack, yep. with the eight or more damage counters, cannot use muscular nose, has to dig drain. I mean, dig drain's nice. Heals 30, 
does 60. If you've got the Galarian Berserker in play, it's a nice little 80 damage punch. And it heals you, right, and to help maybe prepare for another muscular nose down the line. If you have a card like Crystal Cave in play, that's a 60 damage heal. Uh, you can see how tough this Kaparaja is to take off of the board. But Zeely doing what he needs to do, finding that he needs to soften up Pokemon and come sweeping in with the amazing Raikou. It's what this Lightning deck does best. Jesse plays Cynthia and Caitlin grabs back the Mallow and Lana. And it will just be a dig drain. Jesse did find the Lusamine for the next turn, so we can see the Stormy Mountains come back. And got Mallow and Lana, yes, off yeah. the Cynthia and Caitlyn. Right, right. But I do not expect that this Kaparaja is going to be... Oh, uh, well, okay. So it's got 100 hit points, right, yes. remaining. And it has a tool on it. Yep. So it does not actually get KO'd by the amazing Raikou right now, right? That's right. Yeah, it is just short. Michael could KO it if he had, like, Fighting Fury Belt or Muscle Band on it. Electro and power. hit into it in the active. Yeah, yes. but if he's having to play Guzma, that means Kaparaja is going to the bench, which yes. means those tools or damage modifiers in the Electro Power will not boost that damage to the bench because those only affect damage done to the active. Yeah, so this is like a situation where maybe maybe Michael is best off. Uh, it's like, do you even swing? You have to swing into the Gaparaja again, but it's so much work. I mean, so many of these amazing shot attacks just glancing off the Gaparaja and with just the Guzma as the card in hand to utilize. There's a, what is that? It's an Electro card. Power. Is it Electro he's Power? He's got Electro Power, but he's got no way to, mm. oh, this is really tough. I feel like, Okay. Can't retreat the active. Here. No. I feel like, okay, I like this line. I think that, yes, yeah, you Dynamo her twice, yep. and you Guzma. I think you Guzma and just take two prizes and ignore the Kaparaja, potentially. Yeah, get max value out of the Raikou here, because if you take, take a prize. Take away the pivots, because yeah, you know he just got back yeah, Malo and Lana. Yep. So maybe take out the two single energy, or the single energy retreaters, yeah, right? Yeah, Berserker and Dialga both having two retreats. Yes, so I think you take out Jirachi Magirna here. Okay. Take those two out, make it so that the Malo and Lana play, like, doesn't really work, right? Yeah, and then also what this does is it lets you get max value out of your counter energy, because if you just took one prize here... You're only getting one prize card, and your counter energy is not going to be working next yes. turn. Yes. So, so by getting two prizes out of your counter energy, that's really what you want to do for max value. And I think you can afford to ignore the Kaparaja, knowing you got Electro Power and potentially Electivire next turn. You're going to take the Timer Ball and the Marnie off the prizes. Right. Right? So you can ignore the Kaparaja. Say, I'm coming in for base 210 next turn on it. It looks like the Berserker is the one okay. coming up. So this is fine. Maybe saving the 40 damage on the Jirachi saying, I want to try and clean that up later. With a Terra Spark. Yeah, because it could. Right. And that could be game winning. So Michael here, I think, is debating, do I hit the Kaparaja or do I take a prize card? Yeah. Hitting the Kaparaja is definitely good. Sure. Uh, I think that actually if, if Michael just hits the Kaparaja, even with the Mallow and Lana, it's going to be in range of Electivire next turn to take that knockouts. So I feel like maybe it is just hit the Kaparaja. Yeah, and this is like, it's so tough. It's going to have <laughs> 10 hit points left. Yeah. It doesn't get closer than that. Yeah, this, I mean... <laughs> and there it is. It's been it's... hit so many times, and it just refuses to go down the absolute tank that Kaparaja is. 180 damage on it, but this is going to require that if Jesse wants to Mallow and Lana this card, and uh, Zeely going for the Marnie, I like that. If he wants oh, to use... top decks oh, the U-turn board. the U-turn board. There it is. This is huge. That is the perfect card to to pair with the amazing rare Jirachi because it gives all of your Pokemon that have it gives them all minus one retreat and Jirachi has of course one retreat cost. Malo and Lana healing a hundred and twenty damage going into that amazing Jirachi using the ability to look at the top two cards, getting the chance to put one of them in the hand, put the other one back. So now Jesse has knowledge of that top card on the deck. Yeah, which is good uh, because Jesse just saw that Zeely took Marnie off of the prize card. So he knows that he's going to be getting that card next turn That's true. as one of his four cards with the Marnie supporter. And now has the retreat option into the Kaparaja. 
did heal enough damage, so Muscular Nose is going to take a knockout. Yes, both players at three to three prizes. This game could not get closer. The Copper Raja just refuses to go down. Jesse does not have a lot of, uh, I guess, a very stable board. It's just the Copper Raja, but Copper Raja is a board state in of itself. Oh, and Michael top decks Electivire, wow. but needs one more energy card. And because he had to promote the Electabuzz, that means that it has to be a, an energy card drawn. He cannot Dynamotor to an active Pokemon. No, needs to find an energy. So he's got five, five cards. cards to do it. No safety net. There are not a lot of energy left in this deck with one prize. What's he got? Will he find the energy? There, there is it one is. there. So this is going to be a knockout. With the Electivire, Electrified Bolt, finally there are special energy on this Electivire, and we're going to see it hit for the full 180 base damage. And Kaparaja will finally go down finally. after what feels like forever. This guy has just stuck around, tanked so much damage, but that's really all Jesse has been rolling with is the Kaparaja. His board, I don't know that he can pull off an attack this turn. It would take a Metal Saucer. Right, or and it's already Raihan. been used. He used the Metal Saucer, so yes. I think it's got to be the Raihan. I don't know if he's got access to it, though. Yeah, let's take a look at what Jesse's got going on. Iron up. He uses the Stormy Mountains here, checking the, the deck. The deck, seeing what the options are. Versus Seeker can get Jesse potentially any card out of his deck. The counter energy is in the deck. That's an option. Okay. Also, but not yet, but like for next turn, right? Yeah, right. It's two to two, two prizes. To two. So the kind of and the and the Cabalions in the deck. The kind of plays that you can cook up here at the end of the game are Cabalion, Counter Energy, Metal Core Barrier. Yep. Take those final Try to two sweep. prizes. Yeah. And this is Oh my gosh, the first Gym Leader Challenge game of the day, and it's coming down <laughs> to the wire like this. This is such a crazy game. Going to be a close finish here. Jesse trying to just piece everything together, figure out what plays he has available. Does have Versus Seeker. That's a great draw off of the Marnie. And also has access to Dreamy Revelation. Chose to shuffle the deck off the Stormy Mountains. So if there was a card in his hand before the Marnie, now he has a chance to draw it off of Dreamy Revelation. Yes, this is true. Who has N. Can N Michael to just two cards. A great hand disruption option michael's never able to set up the zeb strika in this game the zeb strika sprint ability is really your protection against this late game disruption but again will jesse be able to launch a meaningful attack this turn yeah can jesse even afford to play in because it works both ways michael <laughs> would only get two cards but same would be true for jesse and i mean you could go in then go into the temporal backflow or in into the you know overhaul from Magirna to draw a bunch of cards but is that a winning play i don't think so yeah this is really tough deciding to commit an energy to the dialga it definitely it. feels like and you can see the gears turning right you get it the gears turning in this metal deck right oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> you're proud of yourself for that one <laughs> i think is raihan in the discard Ooh, pile that would be huge Plays the Versus Seeker, so he's looking at all the supporter options. Yes, we'll see what Jesse options. Because then the Metal Blast would be able to get in there, yes. but is not quite KOing the active. Yeah, Metal Blast would do 120 damage. Yep. Yep, so not a KO. 10 short again. Just 10 short. <laughs> oh. Does Jesse have Muscle Band in this deck? This deck really relies on the damage reduction tools, not really no. the damage boosting ones. No damage, no damage buffs. Uh, for Jesse, unfortunately, is going with Raihan. Has to select a card out of the deck. And it's like, what is it? You want to try and Caballion counter energy or something to like, like on the next yeah, turn. Yeah, to like try and cheese the rest of the game. But the thing is, once it goes to one to one prizes, the counter energy doesn't work. Right. So it really needs to be two metal energies, it feels like. It does, but. Uh, Michael able to take out the Bronzong earlier in the game is really going to limit Jesse's options coming down the line. And the fact that Michael knocked out Perserker as well means yes. that this Electivire is not going to go down. It all is making a huge difference. I think Jesse identifying that if he's going to win the game, he's going to need to potentially go in with Magirna and redo his hand with... Oh, but also deciding maybe I'll... Maybe he just needs two Metal Energies on Cobalion. Yeah, maybe I'll just power up the Cobalion and pass... And I think that that's what he's got. Wow. That is a really tough turn. But 
Uh, the ball is back in Zilli's court. Zilli's got an incredible board state. If he can push that Jirachi to the bench, Michael can win this turn. All he needs to do is... He's got escape rope. Escape rope. But he's wondering, can I knock out the Cabalion? I think the Cabalion has a, a tool on it, right? It does. It's got the metal frying pan. And Michael did just Marnie the Electro Power to the bottom of the deck. But if Michael can find that Electro Power, then he can take the win. The Air Balloon on the Flaffy, finally a free retreat pivot for right. this deck. It's been really grindy not being able to Dynamotor and then retreat into the desired Pokemon throughout this match. Michael uses the Stormy Mountains. This will shuffle the deck, so now Electro Power no longer on the bottom heads up play because that is the piece he'll need because Jesse almost assuredly would send up the Cobalion off of the rope. Let's see what he does. Yeah, escape rope. Gonna push somebody. It's got to be Cobalion or you yeah, lose. Yeah, I think... So it has to be it, right? And then if Michael can find the Electro Power, it is going to be a win with Terra Spark, the Jirachi that he set up earlier in the game. Here comes the Flaffy. He's got the Air Balloon. Oh, just retreats? Retreats, and then might just... Oh, because he doesn't have anything. Literally, this hand is is not good. Okay. No yes. no supporter to work with. So no. he's just got to go in with the Electabuzz, or take Electivire, the, take the KO, and hope that Jesse can't pull anything together. Well, I think that this should do it, because Electivire is going to be taking the 180 damage knockout with Electrified Bolt, and taking out the most substantial threat on Jesse's board, which is the Cabalion. Oh, Jesse could get counter energy, though, and then Dialga would take the KO. This is true. But if uh, he can get a damage, the metal core would need barrier. The core barrier, right? Oh my gosh! And there's the core barrier. Oh my gosh! This but would does be... he have a way to get the counter energy? Rescue stretcher. It could be. Yeah, core barrier could potentially buy a turn. The metal core barrier is a tool card that makes the metal Pokemon it's attached to take 70 less damage, but it only lasts for one turn. This is coming down to the wire. I don't think Jesse's hand is super strong here. It doesn't look like he has a supporter card. Oh, I think there is an energy, but he's not taking a KO with anything. And you can't even buy a turn with Kilbalion's, you know, I think it's like... Uh, quick Guard. Quick Guard, yeah. I was going to say Quick Draw, but I knew that wasn't right, yeah. Because it only prevents damage done by basic Pokemon, so that won't work. That's sometimes a, a little way you can buy a turn. Doesn't yes, work in this instance. Because the Electivire, right? It's right, exactly, one. exactly. Yep. So, it's oh, going to end. In. Okay. Okay. Michael's just going to get one card off of this. End to one... Jesse did attach an energy card, though, so that means drawing counter energy off of his two cards here is not an option. So Jesse is just going to promote the Cabalion and hope it sticks to try and get one turn to uh, be able to cook up a threat to the Electivire. And Jesse can use Quick Guard, but it doesn't really make a difference. Actually, if Michael just has a way to get an energy onto this, can use the Terra Spark to knock out the Jirachi for game. And I think Zeely just assuming that that's a knockout, but it's, it's not. not. quite. Yeah, minus 70 damage from the Metal Core Barrier. Yes. So it's only 110 damage. It has to swing. I still don't even know if Jesse can win, though. Even if he gets another Metal Energy to Revenge Blast... Yeah, I right. mean, Michael's Zilli's got, got the, the free retreat. He's got the Terra Spark, yeah. right? He's got everything built up at this point. Even with like a Lana's fishing rod, get back the metal core barrier. I, I and Jesse would have to do that and then find that card again, which I don't think he has a strong enough hand to pull something like that off. Yeah, that would be really tough. This is really a grindy game. I mean, my goodness, what? two minutes left. Yeah, what? An absolute thriller of a match. Going to bring up the electric and maybe try to stall for time. And the Floatstone, Floatstone wins the game, can retreat into Electivire, and that is your game one. That is the first round here, the Gym Leader Challenge 2.5K event. Michael Zeely emerging victorious with his lightning deck. That's the exact kind of game I want to see here at the Gym Leader Challenge Tournament. That was awesome. What a back and forth from both of these players. And you can see with how long these games are, you have plenty of time to recover. 
Michael made a crucial mistake early on in the game with the Electivire <laughs> and was able to fight back and just overcome that Copperaja turn after turn after yeah. turn, hitting into it like six, seven times it felt like. It finally goes down, and then Michael's able to come back and win that game. What a close So win. much drama. That's what I'm here for <laughs> with the Gym Leader Challenge event. There is drama in the gameplay. There's a story to tell with each single game of Gym Leader Challenge for me. You get as much excitement in a single game as you might get in a best of three and as many ups and downs and peaks and valleys. It's uh, really a joy to watch. So Hopefully, we'll get to see these guys later on in the event. Michael Zeely starting off 1-0. Jesse starting off in the back foot with a round one loss, but navigated that metal deck really well, yeah. and I think showed some of the promise from that metal deck and its potential here at the Full Grip Games 2.5K. Well, I'm excited to see how Michael is feeling after that round one victory. How he's feeling. Uh, he's giving me the thumbs up behind the camera. How he's feeling, uh, you know, moving to 1-0 here, getting a win in round one, feeling about the lightning deck and all of those things. So we'll be right back with an interview with Michael Zeely. I am here with your round one victor, Michael Zeely. That was a nail-biter you had the turn with Electivire early on in the match, and we were just joking about it off camera. What what was going on there? Oh, I saw that the special energy needed to be attached to somebody, and I was like, oh, surely he puts a double Carlos on it. I'm in there. And then I read the card. I was like, oh, that's a knockout. And Jesse's like, no, it does 90 damage, bro. And I was like, oh. And you had special energy in the hand. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, I did. <laughs> Yeah, so, uh, you know, reading the cards is always very good. And that's the thing about Gym Leader Challenge format. You have, uh, there are like 50, you know, 55 different cards in that deck. Yes. Oh, yeah. So you've got uh, a lot of different cards to pay attention to. Just a slight miscomputation <laughs> on the Electivire. But you were able to come back and uh, you didn't tilt. You stayed focused and you were able to navigate the rest of that match yeah, really well. It so, felt really smooth. It was great. The being able to attack with the one turn when Jesse missed the energy for the Megirna and I was able to do amazing shot again on the Cop Raja was great. Um, him mellowing in Lana, the Cop Raja, like twice was really frustrating to deal with. Oh, yeah. I mean, like, being 10 damage short on the Cop Raja yeah. with the amazing shot, like my good. And then the Mellow in Lana. <laughs> I was hoping he'd retreat it because I had a uh, Electro Power in my hand so I could Guzma it up and then just go like, sh like crazy I know. up there. And, yep. I know. What a crazy game. You never were able to get the Zeb Strike established. No, so you're... it was fine. It was, it was I, chill? Yeah, it was fine. It was cool. <laughs> I saw it in the opening hand with the Avery and the Parallel, and I was like, you know what? Just We're send sending it. Off. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, like my mouth is dry. I'm like shaking a little bit. It was a really close game. It was like definitely closer than any of the games I played yesterday. That's for sure. That's sick. So it was a joy to watch. And, uh, I think that uh, it's it's going to be a lot of games like that that we're going to see today. I'm hoping, yeah. Give me a few more rounds to actually read the cards, and then <laughs> we'll see how it goes from there. You are working with a deck that spans 10 years of the Pokemon TCG. I think there's, what, like five languages in there, too. <laughs> yeah, we've got a lot of different foreign cards in the deck. Do you have any memories of playing Electric from Noble Victories back in the day? Vaguely. Vaguely. It's like, it's I mean, I while. remember playing it, but it's been like 10 years. It's, <laughs> a lot has happened in those 10 years. <laughs> a lot has happened. For sure, for sure. Well, congratulations, Michael, on your round one win, and good luck in the rest of your games. Thank you. Players are getting set up for round two here at the Full Grip Games. Gym Leader Challenge Astral Radiance Release 2.5K Tournament. On the left, we've got Thomas Rowe, who's rocking with the Darkness type deck. A little bit different from the Darkness type deck that JW used to win the last Gym Leader Challenge Tournament. And then on the right, we've got Kevin Baxter, the Dragon Tamer himself, with, of course, the Dragon deck. Yeah, Kevin loves this dragon deck. He is a huge fan. And that's something that's just awesome about this format and awesome about, you know, Gym Leader Challenge is that you really take a lot of pride in your type. Right. I've seen, you know, Thomas Rowe was out one of our last events playing this dark deck. You learn the ins and outs of your deck. You have your favorite Pokemon that you get to utilize in battle. Uh, Kevin has been working on this dragon list for quite some time now and has been refining its tournament after tournament and is one of the one of the most accomplished dragon type gym leaders, I would say, that I have um, 
I have seen in the Gym Leader Challenge format. The Dragon deck is really cool as well because it functions so differently from any other Gym Leader Challenge deck. You only have 10 Pokemon in the entire deck. A ton of basics that are really strong attackers and then two really solid stage twos with the Garchomp and the Dragonite. And the Dragonite is really kind of one of the key ones since that is your main support in the deck with its fast call ability. Yeah, fast call allows you to hand select your supporter out of the deck every turn. And that's one of the things that Kevin loves about this deck. I mean, obviously, every single Gym Leader Challenge deck is a is just filled with one ofs. Yeah, because I mean, <laughs> the, the entire deck, the entire deck is a, is just a pile of one ofs. And Dragonite helps to make sense of that. And for someone who really likes to be able to hand select the route out of their deck every turn, Dragonite is going to help you to do just that, since you can go grab the supporter that you need for any given situation with its fast call. And arguably, the most important card in the dragon deck for support is probably that gabite right with the dragon call ability allowing you to search your deck for whatever specific dragon pokemon you may need which is what allows you to get any of those basic pokemon that you need at the key time it allows you to you know get into those stage twos as quickly as possible and these players are getting underway yeah let's go ahead and reset the timer and we'll see who is playing first. Looks like it's going to be Kevin. I think that Kevin usually will choose to go second with the Dragon-type deck. Sometimes you can get a really explosive turn one if you happen to open with a Guzma and Hala in your hand because Guzma and Hala can go get you the double Dragon energy, allowing you to attack with cards like Drampa and its Berserk attack on the first turn of the game. Double Dragon Energy is one of the most powerful special energies ever printed from Roaring Skies. It's just a double rainbow energy for dragons, which is fantastic considering that all of the dragon's attack costs are... <laughs> ridiculous. <laughs> ridiculous, right? Which is one of the dopest things about playing the dragon-type deck is that it's a huge flex just getting this deck to operate because of all the different energy requirements in order to make it work. Yeah, de uh, deck lists for Gym Leader Challenge always look really funny because it's just so many one-ofs, right? Yeah. But usually when it comes to the energy, it's a little more simple. You just write your energy cards down, and you have, like, one or two special energies maybe. Kevin uh, ran out of room here on his deck list for special energy because that's what you have to do with the Dragon deck in order to support all these different types that each of these Pokemon requires. Yeah, there are a bunch of different special energy, a few basic energies to help power up Raihan so that you can accelerate various energy from the deck. And it looks like Kevin just going to quick ball for that Drampa. Get it onto his bench. And hopefully he's got something going for next turn. Obviously can't play a supporter on the first turn of the game. So not an option to play one if there's one in his hand. But setting up the Gabite and the Drampa. And like we said, this deck is a little thin on Pokemon. There are only 10. So a sparse board state is something that you're going to see pretty regularly from the Dragon deck. Thomas is getting started with a quick ball. This can go get any basic Pokemon. It can maybe eye up the Purloin. Lipart is one of the most important new cards in the Darkness type deck since it allows you to just consistently draw through and, you know, utilizing that trade ability, it consistently allows you to just get through the deck and find your key pieces that you need each and every turn. I think Thomas also has a Piers in hand, which could be an okay supporter this turn, can get another basic Pokemon in play potentially, and it can also get you a energy card to get your attachment for turn. Yes, Piers is a nice card in the Darkness deck, helps you set up, helps you find the twin energies, double turbo energies, things like that can really starts to power up this Guzzlord quickly. Guzzlord is probably the most powerful card in the Darkness-type deck. Yeah, and maybe one of the most powerful cards in the entire format with its red banquet attack. It does require four energy cards, but if you take a KO with it, you get to take an extra prize card. And we saw this with the Lightning deck, with the Amazing Raikou taking multiple prizes. Anytime one attack can get you multiple KOs, it is extremely powerful in a one prize format like this. And Piers finding the hiding darkness energy. Oh, 
uses the Mountain Munch, discards the top card. I love that attack in a singleton format yeah. <laughs> because every single card you could hit is probably a bad one for your opponent to see discarded, right? Uh, I think Kevin doesn't mind the water too much, but, you know, there's the always a chance it, it hits something like, yeah. yeah. Could, I mean, what if it hits the Raihan, you know? Or, or the hits Dragonite. The, yeah, or Dragonite like, or <laughs> Guzma or Ultra Ball. Like, any of these cards are, like, great cards Kevin would want to have. Yeah, what if it hits, like, the Dragon Call Gabite? And, yeah, you know, <laughs> your like, entire game is ruined. Oh. Uh, now, Kevin is able to find Ball Guy and Guzma and Hala. So, Ball Guy is a really funny card in Gym Leader Challenge because, I mean, just what a what a card, right? Ball Guy allows you to search your deck for three cards with the word ball in them. And I'm wondering if Kevin is playing the new Hisuian Heavy Ball would be a cool card to search out. Doesn't go for it. We've got Level Ball, Nest Ball, and Ultra Ball. So going to allow Kevin to continue setting up this board, which is exactly what he wants. And I'm sure he's looking for that Dragon Call Gabite yeah. off of this Level Ball. And there it is coming straight to the top of the deck. Yeah, this is what we were talking about. One of the most important cards in this deck, allowing you to just get everything set up. I definitely would love to see Kevin get Dratini in play this turn as long as he's got access to the Dragonite line because that, you know, getting to fast call is what you want to do. Kevin could also pull off an attack this turn, theoretically, but it's going to be much harder since his uh, supporter for turn was ball guy. Yes. I'm thinking this is more just like, uh, you know, we're setting up, we're yeah, continuing sure. to kind of get things moving in the right direction. Now, with the hoop on the bench, Thomas is kind of projected this is where i'm going next turn it's got the hiding darkness energy already on the guzzlord so it's got that free retreat pivot set up and you see that hoopa's assault gate attack gonna be able to come in for 90 damage next turn when the hoopa switches into the active spot so kevin sees that and has to respond you would hate to lose the gabite to a hoopa with one energy yeah that would feel really bad and kevin is not getting dratini here so there's a chance that card's chilling in the prizes, or maybe a piece of the line is, and Kevin's not prioritizing getting it in play right now. Does I up Dredagon, one of the newer dragon-type cards, which has the Revenge attack, dealing 40 base damage, but if any of your Pokemon were knocked out by an attack from your opponent's Pokemon during their last turn, you deal 120 more damage. 160 damage for two energy. Incredibly strong. And this could be Kevin's potential response Ooh. to a Hoopa play next turn. Has the float stone in hand. That's really nice. You know Kevin does not want to lose that Gabite. Definitely so not. being able to retreat into the Drampa and opting to keep the Drudagon in hand and just keep the Reggie Drago on the bench. And this is kind of exactly what a board state might look like with the dragon deck. We've got a lot of really powerful basic Pokemon. There's the Drudagon. There's the Drampa. There oh, is... Oh, Thomas this trades hurts. into the boss's orders to bring up the Gabite, has the energy for the Hoopa, and takes the Assault Gate KO. That is brutal. Oh, Kevin hitting the... Floatstone to move the Gabite out of the way. That Gabite is so big with the setup and consistency of this deck. Also evolves into the most powerful attacker in the Dragon deck, the Garchomp. Kevin does have Guzma Rescue and Stretcher. Hala in hand. Also has Rescue Stretcher. So Guzma Hala could pull off the attack here this turn. Kevin can use this to go get the Team Magma's secret base. Probably why he held off on benching the Dredagon last turn, because he wanted to proc the damage on the bench, right? I like that. And now can get a double dragon energy as well. As long as neither of those pieces are in the prizes, there's the Magma base, there's the double dragon energy. We're going to see a Berserk here. Yes, we are. He's got Berserk, and he's got some really cool options, because I think he's got another ball card in his hand. Oh, with the Fighting Fury Belt. That makes Drampa very hard to KO. This Drampa is getting in there with a vengeance. Guzma and Hala is one of the most powerful supporter cards in the Dragon deck because of its ability to search out those special energy and tool cards. Kevin going to be able to toss the Gabite line back into the deck and then I think potentially search it out right away. He might have a ball card left yeah, in his hand. I think he still hand. has Ultra Ball hanging around. He does. So it's going to depend on if he can afford to get rid of two of these cards in his hand. Yeah, so we'll see. He did play the Nest Ball, I think. Yeah, so he doesn't have the Nest Ball anymore. Let's see what he's got in that hand. Double Dragon Energy, the Fighting Fury Belt, giving the Drampa plus 40 hit points and making it do plus 
10 damage. So this Drampa is using Berserk for a massive 170 damage. Really getting in there, and Thomas is not going to be able to respond to this. And 170 damage is enough to KO everything in Thomas's deck. That's a basic, at least. I think the Grim Snarl, actually, I think it has, does it have exactly 170 hit points? So that actually doesn't even survive a hit either. <laughs> no, and this is why the Dragon deck is so scary to play against. Teammates is actually going to get Thomas whatever two cards he wants okay. out of his deck. So this is big, giving him a chance to be able to potentially respond to the Drampa. But, like, what can you do to respond to a raging Drampa? Does grab Field Blower as one of the options, so that'll get rid of this Fighting Fury belt. But I don't think Thomas can really piece together an attack here. Beast Ring not activated yet. Yeah. Twin Energy wouldn't be enough to power up the Red Banquet. You'd still need one more Darkness Energy. Has Zerua eyeing that up? Definitely, I feel like off this teammates, we're just, Thomas should maybe just try to establish a future turn a little bit better. Right, just, establish a board. It's like, yeah. look, the board state is looking a little scary right now for, for Thomas. Sure. Yeah. Just one energy on the Guzzlord. There is the Lipart. I mean, this is like, this is good. It's a good start, I would say. But you want to get maybe another attacker to move in, I think, to have some options because right now this Drampa could just go knockout, knockout game. You need to get something to be able to respond. And you definitely want the beast ring, and we see Thomas eyeing up that beast ring. The beast ring is going to be able to accelerate two basic energy from the deck to the Drampa next turn if Kevin goes down to four prizes. So that's a big grab using the search out of teammates to go get it out of the deck. But Thomas has to make sure that his hand doesn't get disrupted this next turn it might have to sack a pokemon to yeah. wait for that beast ring to get used and we see thomas grabbing zarua as one of the cards off teammates and it feels a little bad because zork is a solid attacker but i guess it's not that good in this matchup right no. because kevin doesn't really ever have that large of a bench so it's probably the best option of a pokemon to just send up let it go down and then have your beast ring activated for the next turn and actually has versus seeker for teammates once again next turn if he wants it and has trade, still hasn't even used that card yet. Yeah, finds darkness energy, so he's going to be able to attach that to the Hoopa. If he wants to just maybe, yep, swing into the Drampa, okay. soften it up a little bit. I think that that's probably fine. This means you can Red Banquet KO it on the next turn and take it's two true. prizes. Yep, if the Drampa just swings and, yep, goes to four prizes, Kevin will have to pay the price for that. Does find Ooh, the Dratini. Off the prizes, what what a great ga grab. Top decks the Professor Kukui, a quote unquote draw supporter it only gets him two cards boosting the damage which isn't relevant at this point drampa already dealing more than enough but dratini coming into play very good for kevin feels very bad to not be able to disrupt this hand it's almost like a do you just not take this knockout knowing that your opponent just if your opponent teammates and doesn't play cards from the hand you're like uh <laughs> right i know exactly what's coming do i just like initiate the trade or do i wait another turn it looks like kevin's gonna initiate the trade yeah I mean, thomas did play a couple cards he benched the zarua and then traded played the darkness energy so like kevin doesn't know exactly what he grabbed but fighting fury belt is gonna give guzzlord a lot of hit points and beast ring is live putting two darkness energies from the deck onto the guzzlord could even just grab one energy if you're planning to play teammates this turn save your darkness energies for other places later on but we'll just throw two onto the active, and I believe does have that versus Seeker in hand. Oh, I think that Zerua actually needs 20 damage from Magma Base, so that is a ah yes. that is something that does need addressed right now, just to make sure that that game state is saved. That is a good catch by Riley in the chat. Thank you. But yeah, it can be easy to miss. The team Magma Base is a similar card to the Gape Jaw Bog, which was just printed in our most recent Astral Radiance set. So Thomas, as opposed to using teammates, is actually just going to use peers. Uh, I mean, I guess it's kind of the same thing, right? Because <laughs> something was knocked out, uh, but teammates can get the same cards peers can. But yeah. you know what? P peers is more on theme, isn't it? Yeah, it's on, it's on <laughs> brand with the dark deck. So yeah, yeah. you want to you wanna play the peers. If you're getting uh, an energy and a dark Pokemon, eh, might as well. Yeah, mm -hmm. Show off that nice full art peers again. So does grab Zoark 
that excellent stand in ability really good in the darkness type deck because it gives you a pivot throughout the entire game it synergizes super well with something like the hoopa if you want to go in with it over and over again though thomas has already attacked with it twice it's kind of hard to attack with it once more trade can discard the glaring wheezing does find that roxanne a new card from astral radiance which could definitely have an impact and also trainer's mail which is one of my favorite cards i love turbo items like this i love the new trekking shoes that just came out trainer's mail has always been one of my favorites yeah trainer's mail is cool gives you some selectivity in a deck with sometimes anywhere from 50 to you know 50 plus unique cards in it trainer's mail gives you some selectivity off the top of the deck allowing you to look at the top four cards of your deck and pick a trainer card you find there, other than trainer's mail, which obviously will never happen in Gym Leader Challenge, <laughs> right. and put it into your hand. So a nice option for finding supporter cards or key item cards. Guzzlord will use its red banquet attack, 120 damage, and take two prizes, escalating uh, Thomas, or I guess advancing Thomas's board to a 3-4 prize lead. And it is very unlikely Kevin's going to be able to do anything about this. I mean, if he top decks Raihan, he could power up the Reggie Drago in one turn because he's got special charge in hand to put back the double dragon energy. But with the way this hand is looking, he just has to send up the um, Dredagon. And it looks like it might just have to be kind of a pass and lose this card and then thomas would just go to one prize card left that's why i was almost wondering like would it, would it have been better for kevin to just not take that knockout last turn right give yourself one more turn to try and get establish this dragonite into play more, yeah, yeah establish a little bit more your board state's looking a little scary and it uh, there's not really enough going on right now you can put the double dragon back into the deck but can kevin even grab you know say next turn he gets the dragonite online is there a supporter that could get enough to knock out a 200 hit point Guzzlord next turn? Yeah, I mean, it's got to be the Reggie Drago, right? It's attack dealing 240 damage, minus 10 for each damage counter on it. So, I mean, that can get in there. And Thomas, outside of this Guzzlord, does not have much of a setup. Yeah. So we have Cynthia and Caitlin discard the Gloria, going to go get Guzma and Hala back, right? Because you want to be able to go get a special energy out of the deck the floatstone is already in the discard pile kevin does find mysterious treasure can maybe start to set up garchomp i mean we could see something like the garchomp come into play if it's able to um you know it could be invincible and the and the reggie drago is actually getting the rainbow energy so next turn the reggie drago could swing for a one hit ko on the Guzzlord, but it's just going to be a pass from Kevin this turn. Thomas Big is opening. in the driver's seat. If Thomas can find a boss's orders or a Guzma, something like that, to take a knockout on the Reggie Drago, that would Shoot. be potentially game winning. Reset stamp. Reset as well. stamp. Oh, that hurts. Putting the Guzma Hala back into the deck that Kevin just got out of the discard pile. Yeah, that is a stinger, man. I haven't seen Reset Stamp played <laughs> since. Picaram days. Yeah, that definitely hurts. The Hisui and Heavy Ball getting played, finding the... Uh, Imp Dimp. Impy Dimp, yes. Yeah, I love uh, cards like this whenever they come out. Uh, Imp Dimp, you know, the, the Grimstone was pretty cool for this deck, and Imp Dimp has Call for Family, just a nice little consistency yep. booster. Was prized this game. Thomas will try to start establishing that. Kevin only getting four cards from the reset stamp. I think does find the Guzma and Hollow once again, though. Okay. I think it would be best. Yeah, Guzman Hall is obviously good. Thomas, you know, is going to be able to take two more prizes of this Guzzlord, which is just absolutely gnarly, right? That Red Banquet attack is so powerful and absolutely churning through right now. Uh, Kevin's board going to take Thomas to just one prize card remaining. Thomas has got Cynthia and Caitlin can get a boss's orders out of the discard pile, and this could give... Thomas a potential win con next turn if Kevin is not able to respond to the Guzzlord. The Sneasel hitting the bench could oh, evolve that, into Weavile. That boss's orders needs to go to the hand, right? Because he just grabbed it out of the discard. With yeah, Cynthia it does need to go to the hand. So, so we'll get that figured out in a um, Sure, he'll realize, like, oh, hey, yeah, that, uh, yeah. Uh, there he goes. Yep. <laughs> and... Red Banquet going to take the knockout. Two prizes, only one remaining now for Thomas Rowe. Kevin sends up 
The Reggie Drago was that Guzmahala drawn once again off of the end. Does find Guzmahala, does find a research, does find a Guzma. Doesn't actually have anything to evolve this dragon air, dragon air, which doesn't feel good. Mm -mm. It feels quite bad, actually. And the Reggie Drago, what, has got 120 hit points now? What are we looking at? What's the base HP on the uh, Reggie Re Drago? Reggie Drago has 130, I believe. So, yes, it has 120 hit points left. Thomas doesn't have any sort of way to deal 120 damage immediately on board. It's Not on board. He does have Clara in hand, and that Moltres did get discarded earlier on, but does need one more energy card to still pull that off. I think that's why we saw Thomas put the energy on the Imp Imp last turn, because now that is a retreat option to get into the Moltres next turn. The Galarian Moltres is so good, insane. honestly. Such an insane card. Looks like Kevin's going to opt for the counter energy, and I agree with this. Uh, yep, your opponent's only got one prize remaining, so <laughs> that counter energy is going to be able to fulfill the energy requirement for Reggie Drago's dragon energy, and dragon energy is going to be able to fix this uh, the Guzzlord problem. But the question is, is it a turn too late? Yeah, Thomas doesn't have the energy in hand necessary for Moltres just yet, but has trade, has a top deck, plenty of ways to find it. We'll see if he can hit it. Sends up the Imp Imp right away. Draw for turn. It's the Spirit Tomb. It's got Boss. You can't... You can't quite win yet. Yet. Kevin's got Marnie in hand. We've There's... got Weavile. There's N Roxanne could get played. Trade discarding the Field coffin. Blower. No energy, though. No energy. Morgrim can evolve. Does not have a great attack, though. I don't think anything that can take a KO here. Even with Dragonair having, I believe... Just 60 HP on the bench. Can evolve into the Morgrim. And let's take a look at what that Morgrim can do if it has to stay in the active spot. It looks like a bite attack for the first one. I think it's that single strike one, yeah. There we are. Bite and crushing blow, yeah. So stand in. Could just be a placeholder. And Roxanne. Yeah. Going to shuffle both players' hands into the deck. Kevin only getting two cards from this. Thomas will get a full six and has not attached for turn. So that is something to consider, but I don't know if there's anything he could attach to this turn to win the game. Mind Jack is only dealing 40 damage, not enough. This would be an insane comeback from Kevin if he can pull it off. Yeah. Thomas is getting a full hand of six. He's got teammates, which he can't yeah. ever use. And I think Gibble is the yeah. other one. Can't ever use the teammates. Dark Patch. Wow. I mean, Thomas has got options in the hand. Oh, wait. Oh, no. Does not quite have it yet. No. Can options. He... Options. Only mm. dealing 40 damage with the Morgrim. But yes. this is setting up for a Grim Snarl. Kevin needs something big off the top of the deck. It's pretty much got to be a Dragonite. And then Dragonites can come in, maybe save the day with N. It is tough, though. More damage dealt, and it's a fighting. That is not going to do it. This is really tough. Kevin's probably just going to have to take the knockout with Dragon Energy and brace for impact and say, I hope you don't have it. Kevin going to just two prizes left. Is Thomas going to be able to cook up the game-winning knockout this turn? Yeah, has the Spirit Tomb there with a damage counter on it. It can take one more and then... With the building spite, Anguish Cry would deal 70, which is actually 10 short of the KO here on Reggie Drago. And there's the Gabite. And the thing is, if Thomas had an energy, he could just gust up the Gabites and finish it off. Right, yeah. It has Sonya to get an energy, but can't gust and Sonya, right? Right, so. so very strange. Very strange. If Thomas can find a darkness energy, then he has got the win. Building spite adds one more damage counter. Playing kind of quickly here. Sonya can go get the darkness energy. Yeah, Sonya from the deck, yep. Go get a darkness energy. I think this There's is only one. Yeah, not enough here, only dealing 70, so that would add up to 120. Yes, but is there a damage mod in the hand? He's already used the Fury Belts. Does he have Dark Claw, maybe? Maybe Dark Claw could do it. Muscle Band. No, he no. doesn't have it yet. I think his hand is just four supporter cards. 
not doing it so close. Well, the thing about this Reggie Drago is now it's doing no damage. Here we go, gear. No, this is a uh, town map. Town map. No, that's not good. No, what was the prize card? Was it anything useful? It looks like it's a basic Pokemon, so I'm going to say no. It's no. the Zygarde. Has to retreat. Yeah, Reggie Drago's doing nothing here. But what? Yeah, the Zygarde can withstand a hit. And has boss's orders. And Thomas Rowe it. will win the game. Taking out that Reggie Drago or the gabble, uh, the Gibble on the bench, moving to two and zero, getting the victory with the Darkness type deck. That was a tough one, man. That Guzzlord really showing everybody who's boss with the Red Banquet taken two thirds of the match for Thomas Kevin, unable to respond to it instantly and never able to get his board really established with that Dragonite or the Garchomp, the two right. strongest Pokemon in his deck. Two really cool decks. We got to see that round. Kevin's dragon type deck. We got to see some powerful attacks with the Drampa's Berserk attack doing 170 damage. But with Thomas able to respond and set up that Guzzlord with Beast Ring, he was definitely in control. And I think the supporting role of the Lipard really helped Thomas to craft that win condition. Yeah, Dark has always been pretty strong in Gym Leader Challenge, but after Brilliant Stars released, that's really where it took off and became yeah. one of the top decks. And that, you know, we saw it win the Brilliant Stars release weekend tournament by JW Crewall. And I think it is really just on the back of Lipard, just the consistency of trade. I mean, everyone remembers trade from Zoark GX, right? It was so good in standard for so many years, reprinted as an ability on the Lipard, and is such a great consistency booster for the Gym Leader Challenge format. Definitely. And the Dark Deck has a lot of really cool options throughout the game. Different hard-hitting attackers. We're seeing that Grim Snarl in Thomas's deck. Would love to see that Grim Snarl hit the board and take some crazy knockouts with its attack that uh it does like 240 damage or something well yeah right? it does yeah. a lot you, you you have to have like very few pokemon in play so it's kind of like a late game sweeper yeah but it's really good when it gets up and running definitely so some exciting action ahead don't go anywhere we'll be right back with thomas to talk about his dark deck in just a moment i am here with thomas Rowe, hot off his round two win how you doing thomas i'm doing good Playing the dark deck. I think we've seen you before with this dark deck. Yeah, I'm trying. So this is the uh, I'm trying to win this one and make it because I've top four and I've top eight it. Yes. And I just I just need to win it. There you go. But um, actually, when I was playing him, I uh, I don't know if it's good currently, but I was thinking about playing the Mighty Anna. Yes. Because of the special energy and like every deck's like playing a little bit of it. But I didn't have time to test or anything. So yeah, I was just yeah. Like, we're just going to run it back with Roxanne. Very cool. Yeah, the Roxanne was uh, definitely a great card. And that ability to disrupt your opponent's always strong. We're seeing you still rocking the Grim Snarl uh, in the dark deck. Is that a card that you feel like is uh, is something you really like in the deck? I think it helps with the water like water matchup. Yes. Just because it can kill Whale Lord. Yes. Um, Torteras. Yeah, it just kills it kills stuff that shouldn't be killed. Yes, because it does base two hundred and forty damage with rear attack, right? And it works. Yeah, and it works really well with uh, parallel worlds that I play. Yes. Because if I'm playing against water fire or uh, grass, I just put the, that side on them and I make it to where I can only have three on the bench. Right. So it will always hit for, you know. So you can parallel city yourself, mm -hmm. right? And then you can uh, swing in with the Grim Snarl's rear attack. That's really good. Yeah. What was your round one against? Uh, it was against a water control deck. Oh, frame what? Uh, I think I don't know. I don't remember the. Did name. you Marnie him and they just lose? Yes. Yeah, I, that I was probably a lot. Yeah. Uh, no. Well, so he chose to go first, and when he chose to go first, I was like, he has to be playing some kind of control deck. Yeah. And I just started off with wheezing, and I was like, I think I just win, because <laughs> yeah. I Marnied him, and I was like, if he doesn't have the boss, I just get there. Yeah, because you're gonna be able to ability lock with yeah, the wheezing. Yeah, I just poisoned, and I just sat there. Yeah. Sick. It felt, it felt really mean. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> I was like, I just want to, I just want to open uh, wheezing every game, but like that one, I couldn't because the wheezing was prized. Oh the, no, um, the uh, coughing was prized. Yes, yes. So I went for the lie part instead. There you go. Yeah, Galarian wheezing is an incredibly strong card in the dark deck. What, uh, what's your favorite evolution line? Do you have a favorite evolution line in the dark deck? Uh, I like the Ascension ones because they're just so easy. But because um, you have coughing and Zerua. Yeah, because Zerua just trades in, and then it helps with the Hoopa. I think they're 
my favorite though, it would have to be Weezing because I've been playing it. I played it in Standard and Eternatus when it yeah. was first. Like, ah, it's like my favorite card. Like, if I can play a deck with Weezing in it, I'm just happy. There you go. Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. Well, it's great to see you back, yeah. Thomas. Making a run for another top eight. You yeah, said you got a top eight, a top four. I'm trying on the hunt for that gym leader challenge win. Well, good luck today, Thomas. It's a pleasure to have you back. Thank you. I'm here with Kevin Baxter, hot off his round two non-win. Non-win. Unfor unfortunate. Yeah. But Kevin is a two-time regional finalist, multiple-time North American top 16 finisher, and a great friend of mine. So I wanted to bring Kevin back here to talk about the dragon deck. You've been you've been calling the dragons now for a little while. Yeah. What draws you to the dragon deck? They're so cool. Yes. And well, it's like kind of like a bunch of little combos you get to put together. It's like yes. a puzzle. Um, yeah. It's a lot of fun. Different energies. You know, it's cool. Play a lot like of powerful basics. A lot. Yes. Yes. Guzma and Hala really unlocks that deck. The double dragon energy. Now, have you taken a look at like cards like a Hisui and Heavy Ball? Or any of these, you know, entry? You play the ball guy. Well, you can ball you see, guy for the Hisui. Sure. And Heavy Ball. In that particular scenario, <laughs> that would have been that would have been cool. Because you prized the Dratini. Uh, I did prize the Dratini, and that's why I lost. So maybe <laughs> maybe you're converting me. Uh, yeah, no, I, I thought I was chilling until I saw Dratini was prized. Yes. So. Everything seemed cool. Uh, there was the one turn where it's like Thomas teammates and uh, and kind of just hit into your, your Drampa, and I was thinking, like, is it is it ever correct to, like, not go to four prizes right here and then just invite the Guzzlord up? You know, it's kind of yeah. like a weird, you know, if you just like maybe give yourself one more turn to try and get a little bit more going on before you, because yeah, I think like just allowing the Guzzlord to attack twice. Right. What was what like really dug you into the hole? Yeah, yeah. no, I I could. I I didn't really consider that. I I thought I would, my only shot to win after prizing Dratini was just to like top deck really well. Yeah, that's um, fair. So, yeah, I could have thought about that, but it the really, the matchups don't really matter with this deck. It's like, do you get Dragonite out? You win. Do you not get it out? You lose. <laughs> so that seems to be how it goes. Hasui and Heavy Ball. I know. You right. already play the ball guy. <laughs> well, then it has to be the basic that's prized. Like, if you prize the Dragonite, it doesn't help you. Yeah, your whole deck is basics. I guess. Yeah, you go get any of the good basics. I only play six basics, though. Like, what's the odds that somebody's... You only play ten Pokemon. You're right. It's 50% <laughs> of your deck. 60% of your deck. Uh, that's pretty sick. Now... Uh, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, yesterday, you played Hisui and Samurott. Yeah. We, you know, last time I, I really got to talk to you, we were editing up the Hisui and Samurott deck, and we ended up putting a Galarian Obstagoon into the deck. The uh -huh. thought was that you ought not to lose to Blissey. With right. that card. I did, yes, that is the idea. That was the idea. Now, I it heard almost, you had a little bit of a heartbreaker against Blessy. It almost worked. Uh, I had the Obstagoon out. I was attacking with it. Uh, obviously, he plays Crushing Hammer. So he was flipping tails all game one. Basically, all up until that point, he was flipping tails. Yes. And he, then he decided to start flipping heads when the Obstagoon was attacking. Uh, yeah. So he knocked an energy off the Obstagoon. I didn't have one to put back on it. And then I couldn't attack. So then it just got knocked out. Yeah. And that was the end of that. Because the Obstagoon, you know, stops the entire Blissey deck from attacking. It so, does, yeah. Yeah, so, so theoretically, you should just never take damage. If you I got I it. got a little greedy to get it out because I wanted to start doing it, like, as soon as I could. Yeah. Um, just so I could, like, kind of stabilize the rest of my field. Um, but I, I ended up, like, having to discard a Dark Patch and my Raihan early to, like, set up. Mm. And so, like, I was kind of short on energy as it was. And then he hit that heads on, on my second energy and... Tough. It was yeah. No, it was it was a gamble I made and it didn't pan out. But so what's right. your uh, what's your what's your standard season looking like right now? Are you in the hunt for a world's invite still? Uh, Do you have a couple tournaments left you're attending? Well, I had the invite since before the pandemic. Oh, so you've been you've so been at that. I'm yeah. just kind of chilling. Uh, I did not. I knew I wasn't gonna go to Milwaukee. Okay. Um, just because I got other stuff going on. Um, I was trying to register for NIC, did not get in. Um, Dang. I didn't try as hard as I could have, to be honest. I, I knew I, it wasn't like, I mean, I'd love to go and play, but yeah. like it, I don't have anything hinging on it sure. for worlds. So like I wasn't sweating it too much. I was in Italy at the time, like 
Oh, okay. It, yeah, it was it was just the circumstances were not meant to be. Uh, it's fine. I was like literally about to board a boat when the first wave hit. <laughs> so I was like, that's not happening. And then since I was in Italy, the third wave was like 2 a.m. So right. like, that's not happening. No, I, no, I tried no. during the second wave. Didn't happen with, you know, shoddy Wi-Fi or whatever. Yeah. It's fine. Um, but yeah, I'll be at Worlds, playing cool. at Worlds. Uh, don't really have anything major until then, though. Awesome. Cool. Well, we'll see you at the World Championships. And obviously, best of luck in the rest of your rounds. Nice talking to you, Kevin. Thanks. Round three is beginning here at the Full Grip Games Gym Leader Challenge 2.5K event. $2,500 up for grabs today with today's Gym Leader Challenge champion taking home a grand prize of $1,300. We have got an awesome matchup on the table with Chris from Iceland. I believe so. All the way here from Iceland in lovely Akron, Ohio, to play some Pokemon this weekend against Nathan with his Psychic deck. So we've got a Water deck versus a Psychic Spread deck. Very cool to see Chris traveling from so far away for this event. Loves the Gym Leader Challenge format and is bringing a pretty straightforward Water deck. This has always been one of the most popular types in GLC. It just has some of the most support of any of the types, it's got energy acceleration through Frostmoth and Blastoise. It's got consistent card draw through Octillery. And it's even got really solid Pokemon Search with the Alolan Volpix, which has one of my all-time favorite attacks, Beacon, allowing you to search your deck for up to two Pokemon, revealing them and putting them in your hand. And this is an excellent turn from Chris going first and has a bunch of basic Pokemon. Yeah, this is fantastic. Exactly what you want to see. The Snom is on the bench and can Ooh. evolve into Frostmoth. I think that's the 40 HP Snom, actually. And that's pretty relevant because something Nathan could do here. I saw that Duskull, uh, which is on the bench. Nathan could drop the Giratina in the discard pile with the Duskull, Distortion Door, put 10 on the Snom, and then side power with Mew to take a prize on the first turn. Yo, that's crazy. The, that That's wild. That's crazy. <laughs> Let's see if that's what he goes for. It does require you to discard three cards from hand yeah, for the Dust Skull, which is does. pretty costly, but very solid if you can set it up. Might just be able to uh, take it a little slower, though, is getting a coughing here. And I think Weezing is just one of the absolute best attackers in all of GLC, especially if you can get it into play on turn two. Looks like... Nathan is going to be going for the coughing in his deck. And the Mew from Unbroken Bonds can get this game kicked off just right with Psy Power. Start placing those damage counters on Chris's board. And then the goal of this deck is going to be to eventually overwhelm Chris's board with damage counters and make it so that Nathan's going to be able to take some sweeping knockouts. We even see the Gorgeist. Is that Gorgeist in this deck? Wow. There are some really cool cards in this Psychic deck. Yeah, this is a spread strategy. Duskull on the field tells me that we have Dusknor here as well. One of the coolest Psychic type Pokemon. When you think of spread and you think of Psychic, you always think of that Dusknor. Gorgeist, an excellent option, of course, as well. With its eerie voice, spreading two damage counters to every Pokemon. Very solid on a stage one for just one energy. Now, the strategy on Chris's side of the board, whereas Nathan is trying to spread damage counters and meticulously craft a win condition with pointed, you know, pointed uh, damage counters placement christian is going to be trying to swing very hard and very fast with waylord that's <laughs> just the out. idea just hey. kind of a more traditional attacking deck yes 200 hit points behemoth of the sea waylord has the hydro pump attack which does 10 damage plus 40 more damage for each water energy attached to it and then with frostmoth's ice dance ability energy can get reined into play. So if Chris is able to get all of these in play, and it looks like that Frost Moth hits the board, here's Professor's Letter, and those water energies are flowing. 
We actually could even see Whalmer get in there and take a KO. Whalmer has a solid attack, dealing more damage for each water energy attached to it. And Mew only has 60 hit points. I believe Whalmer is like 10 plus 20 more for each water energy attached to it. And requires three colorless energy. So if Christian can get two energies on the bench, two more energies on the bench with the Ice Dance, and then attach for turn to Vulpix, could go in and be really aggressive here if he wants to. Also could just play it a little slower and go with the Beacon from Vulpix. And generally I like to lean on the, uh, the side of set up a little bit whenever it comes to gym leader challenge we'll see though christian has the energies necessary to go in for this knockout definitely yeah that whalmer is using hydro pump for 70 damage this is an explosive turn too wow. i mean the dream is coming true over here on water's <laughs> side of the board what this a is set up here yeah turn two going first nonetheless and has evolution incense could even get the whale lord out Evo of the deck. Evo Soda. And, or sorry, Evo Soda already played the Evolution Incense. Ooh. And also has Colrus to keep drawing cards. I don't think Christian's even played a supporter this turn. No, this is the dream. Turn two. Whale Lord, 200 hit points. Uh, if you're Nathan, oh you gotta gosh. be, you gotta be reeling. Like, what, what does any deck in the format even do to a start like this? Christian just hitting the absolute stones here. Let me remind you that every single card in this deck is a singleton. One of. So Christian yeah. was able to open with the one of Wilmer. Found the one of Remoraid on turn one. Got the turn to one of Octillery. Found the one one Frostmoth line <laughs> and pulled together the one one Waylord to hit with four energy cards on it. What is happening? I, there are standard decks that are not this consistent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so this is a lot of pressure for Nathan to deal with. Chris getting that waylord out and into the active water is one of my favorite decks in gym leader challenge format i've put a lot of time into uh into figuring out the best ways to play the water deck and it's a deck that has seen success yeah here at the full grip games gym leader challenge championships uh, i think three top eights all at the hands of jesse parker we've seen some other players Finish. Yeah, John Mostovi got top eight at one as well with water. Yes, we've seen some other players do well with water also, but I don't think water has never cracked the finals. And I'm, I think maybe a top four. I think water was able to finish in the top four at one. I think Jesse did finish top four one time, but yeah, never a finals appearance. And I think that the time is definitely ripe for water to make a deep run here at the Full Grip Gym Leader Challenge Championship. Nathan is definitely reeling here a little bit. Needs to get set up. Needs some help. Does have Professor's Research, the Juniper Edition, that new full art from the Premium Trainer Collection. Drawing seven new cards. I don't think you found a Psychic Energy even, though, to get an attachment this turn. Yeah, this is tough. A wheezing set up on the bench. It's got that splattering sludge attack does 40 damage and 20 damage to each of your opponent's bench Pokemon that has any damage counters on it. Having to sack the Inke is not good, and the Inke's only line of defense is an attack that puts the defending Pokemon to sleep, but Waylord cannot be affected by special conditions. And this is where Nathan's deck is going to falter. It is very good at playing the long game, spreading damage early, slow and meticulous, getting a bunch of damage built up, moving it around with Dusnor or Tapu Lele, but it has a hard time with a high HP Pokemon that is hitting this hard and just knocking everything in your deck out from turn two onwards. Like, I mean, honestly, any deck would have a hard time with this setup. This is crazy from Chris. Yes, this is a lot, a lot of pressure. You want to have something in your deck that can hit that 200 hit point mark. There are a lot of decks that have access to a heavy hitter like Waylord. The grass deck now has Torterra from uh, Brilliant Stars yep. with 190 hit points, capable of hitting upwards of 200 damage with its Evo Press attack. It could hit 300 if you got a lot of <laughs> evolutions in play. Yeah. Uh, so capable of hitting that 200 mark. This Waylord capable of hitting that 200 mark that has five energy attached to it, also with 200 hit points. And... The Caparaja, which we saw in round one, yes. 190 hit points. A lot of decks have got these beefy Pokemon that need dealt with in some way. You have to have some sort of X-Factor answer for them. 
Chris just going to take a look at this Weezing. Weezing is best at, you know, stunting slow setups. If your opponent doesn't, you know, has to play a little bit of a longer game, you know, go for Gloria, Beacon, all of those things, Weezing is incredibly good. It's a lot weaker when your opponent has a setup like this, though, because it's only dealing 40 damage. And let's not forget as well, Chris playing the water deck is playing Rough Seas, which is extremely good against a deck like Nathan's that is built to spread damage turn over turn over turn. Yeah, Rough Seas is going to be a nuisance for Nathan to deal with, most definitely. It is similar to Crystal Cave in that it heals 30 damage per turn from two different types of Pokemon. Except instead of dragon and metal, we're talking water and lightning. So a nice tanky option for this water deck, giving that Waylord a little bit more legs once it's set up. So Nathan here off this Cynthia is really needing to find Gorgeist. It's second attack, spirit scream, Yo. places damage counters on both active Pokemon until they only have 10 HP remaining. So it would deal 190 damage to this Waylord. That's Quite good. Now let's see if he's got it. Does he got it? I don't see it. Oh, he's oh got there it. it is. There it is, hiding at the back <laughs> of the hand. And we can see Spirit Scream 190. This is this is an answer. This is you an know, answer. This is an answer. And, and even then you though can Psy Power it next turn even. Yes, even though it's not, or you could attack it with Weezing. I yes, mean, there, yeah, there yeah, are yeah. options, right? Even though, you know, even though it's not taking the KO this turn, if there's anything that this deck does really well is that it is capable of finishing off targets that do have damage counters on them. So this is a good hit from Nathan. It's going to keep him in this match as... There's not actually any other attacker built up on Christian's side of the board right now. It's just the Waylord. Yeah, it is just the Waylord. But the thing is, Gorgeist also puts itself to a really low amount of hit points. So Christian could just do a 10 damage attack and take a prize this turn. And I think he's got Scoop of Net in hand. And that you... is a big pickup. But I don't know if he's got the energy to attack with anything else yet. Yeah, do you deny the knockouts? Yeah, that is... Oh, and Nathan actually has Horror Psychic Energy on the active Gorgeist, it looks like. So if Christian attacked, the Waylord would just get KO'd. Yeah, check this out. He's got the Sobble. The Sobble actually has an attack that does 10. But no energy yet. No energy yet, but the Octillery can draw. So there are options here. There's I Lysander. Boss. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, Lysander. Yeah. Yeah, we've got options on Christian's side of the board. Just trying to figure out which way we're going to go with this turn. And it looks like boss's orders is the choice. So Christian kind of conceding this Waylord, not going to deny the prize. And I think this is kind of a fine decision because even though Waylord will go down here, you are just so far ahead in the prize race. And it looks like Nathan going to send up the Mew, opting to save the Gorgeist for later. For later, Gorgeist could use its eerie voice attack to take the knockout and put two damage counters on everything. Or... Um, you know, we could just see Mew use its Psy Power to place one damage counter, two on something else. Maybe save the Gorgeist for something else that has too much HP. Uh, Gorgeist, if it puts... And I like this. Gustal, you know? And then you can use Eerie Voice here. Yes. The hope that the Octillery gets stuck in the active. It does have two Retreat. And now you're going to spread damage to all of these Pokemon and take a knockout on Waylord. Yeah, we got... Gore guys, I love this Gore guys. Gore guys, such a cool Pokemon. I feel like Pumpkaboo always gets all the love, right? <laughs> There's the Pumpkin Pit Pumpkaboo in yeah. Standard right now. It's used to bump stadiums. There was the Night March Pumpkaboo, of course. Never a Gore Geist. No, never a Gore Geist, unfortunately. But it's time to shine is here in the gym in the gym leader challenge, challenge format. So sick. There we go. We've got Nathan taking the first prize of the match, going to just five prizes remaining with the eerie voice attack. The ball is back in Chris's court. I think Chris has teammates in hand, which is the perfect response when your opponent just took a KO. It is. Teammates allows you to search your deck for whatever two cards you want. Yeah, it's there in the hand. Brings it to the front. Could get the float stone or air balloon to move the active octillery. The problem for Chris right now is lack of energy. Has just one in hand that I think he took off of the prize cards. Right. That Starmie is really important 
for retrieving energy from the discard pile, the Starmie from Evolutions. Yeah. There are two basic water energy in the deck, and there is a Capacious Bucket. So it's possible that Chris could use Capacious Bucket as a grab to go get two water energies. And we see Chris eyeing up that Capacious Bucket, bringing it to the front of the deck. Might be a key grab off of this teammates. Does still need to move the Octillery, of course. Didn't grab a Float Stone or Air Balloon, so that might mean one of those retreat options is already in hand, which would be really nice. Uh, Lapras could be good option for an attacker, too. Lapras has got a nice Hydro Pump attack. And the Lapras actually only needs to do 10 damage. That's the right. Gorgeist has only got 10 hit points left. So it doesn't need to be fully loaded. Lapras also has a nice respectable 130 hit points. Very decent amount of HP. Of course, you can just attach one energy now or two energies with the Frost Moth even. And then next turn, you can attach another one to keep boosting the damage. You only need to do 10 here, like we said. But Lapras can start to ramp up very quickly, similarly to how Waylord can as well. Yeah, they're... Hydro Pump is definitely the name of the game in the water deck. You've got these water energy accelerators like Frostmoth and Blastoise. They rain the water energy into play, and then you can do a ton of damage with the Hydro Pump attack. Yeah, it feels like I'm 10 years old again playing Pokemon Blue and just getting to the Elite, elite Four and spamming Hydro Pump <laughs> <laughs> over and over and over again. The timer ball does net a heads, which is going to allow Chris to go get Drizzile out of the deck. And if you have played the Pokemon TCG at any point <laughs> in the last 12 months, you have seen this card. Yeah. Absolutely. A dominant force in the standard format. And it's just as good here in GLC, even though you only get to play one Every single water deck is going to play that full Intellion line. And what a huge grab. You can see Nathan reel back in the chair. No. Rough Seas is too good against a spread deck. And that's effectively going to erase a whole turn of damage from Nathan's side. And yeah, Nathan hates to see that. And these deck lists are not public. So the players do not know what sort of tech tech cards or inclusions their opponent might be working with. Oh, and this Lapras is getting big already. The scoop up net can pick up okay. the Octillery. Up so, hand drawing one first. Yep, and then scoop up net can move the Octillery. Not the best switch card to move a stage one Pokemon, but it's fine because the Octillery also can get healed with it. So exactly. it's, it's fine. You can just evolve it next turn. And the Scoop Up Net, I mean, is an incredible card in this format. It is a switch card. It is a heal card. It is a get-out-of-jail-free card in the Gym Leader Challenge format in a lot of situations. Chris is playing a Nest Ball. This will allow him to search the deck for any basic Pokemon and put it directly onto the bench and does get that wishy-washy from Cosmic Eclipse with the Scatter ability. It has 180 hit points, and then at the end of your opponent's turn, if that Pokemon has any damage counters on it, you flip a coin, and if heads, you put it back into the deck. A great way to deny prizes on a really solid attacker. Lapras Hydro Pump will deal 130 damage for the knockouts. Chris has just two prize cards remaining now. And with Rough Seas, oh, Field Blower, get that thing out yeah, of here. I'm sure Nathan was happy as ever to top deck that card in that spot. The problem for Nathan here is there's no quick response to this Lapras. It's going to be a while before anything can really happen. And Nathan's setup is not very good. We've got a Duskull and a Mew in play, and that's it. Yeah, it's not ideal. With the Psychic Spread deck, you really want your damage counters to stay in play so you can manipulate them and take sweeping knockouts at the end of the game. With the Duskull, this N will net Nathan five cards and limit Chris to just two. And since Chris did have to use Scoop Up Net on the Octillery, that Octillery is no longer there as a draw option with its Abyssal Hand ability. So even though Chris is only going to have two cards, has the Abyssal Hand, like you mentioned. No, it does oh, not. Oh, no, yeah, that's right. It got Scoop Up Netted. Yes, yeah, yeah. yes. So he's going to need to find, like, Intellion or something like that in order to draw out. Oh, this. and you can see Nathan just tossing the stadium into play. It would have been so nice to make that Lapras eat damage counters yeah. every time it got 
uh, and energy accelerated to it with the old cemetery stadium. But the question is, is it too late for that old cemetery to have an effect? If it sticks, then that's two damage counters for every energy accelerated. Right. It's an especially spooky stadium for the water deck. I agree, yes. Because the water Pokemon have to... Ha they're very energy hungry. They need a lot in order to get moving. Wow, and is Nathan just going to have to let loose Ooh. here? Did not find anything great off of the inn and just has to go looking once again. This is actually going to give Chris plus two cards. I I love this card. This is one of my favorite cards, like, ever. I love Let Loose You Marshall. are a menace for that. <laughs> yeah, I, I love this card. Oh this my card gosh. is so sick. <laughs> yes, because in the team-up standard format, before Unbroken Bonds, mm -hmm. when things got truly degenerate, okay, in the team-up standard format, you just had Let Loose. So you had Let Loose, and you had, like, uh, Stellar Wish, Jirachi, and, man, those were some times. You let <laughs> loose your opponent to four cards. You can do it on the first turn of the game. Yep. Yeah, it was sick. <laughs> I played two Let Loose Marshadow in my deck <laughs> just to let loose twice. <laughs> yeah, just see more cards, man. Yeah. See more cards. Nathan drawing the open the, the hand here. Doesn't even have an energy to attach anywhere. Mew can spread some damage, but it's going to go down very quickly to the Lapras. Right. Evolution Incense can get the Dusclops. Ooh, this could be interesting. Which Dusclops is being played here. It looks like it is the Disable Dusclops. So what Ooh. Nathan could do if he had drawn an energy is retreat the Mew into the Dusclops and you use Disable. It deals, deals 20 damage. And then you pick an attack on your opponent's active Pokemon. They cannot use that attack on the next turn. Yeah, and it does a nice little 20 damage. This is a very disruptive card, especially when hand sizes are low. Oh, a lot I, of just, I don't think Nathan got the energy though. A lot of good attackers only have one meaningful attack. <laughs> can look again. Yo! The scoop up net and let loose one more time. Let's find an energy card. That is so <laughs> gnarly. Yes. Let loose Marshadow. Gonna spin the wheel of fortune again. At this point, Chris's hand has been disrupted three times this turn. <laughs> <laughs> yes. At what point will it end? This is a ride that I want to get off. <laughs> Nathan needs to find an energy card. If he does not, Christian is probably just going to sweep the last two prizes with the Lapras. And Finds oh, Fog, Fog Crystal. Crystal. Fog Crystal does work. Can get a Psychic Energy. we got an Evo Incense. We've got the Floatstone in this hand. So you can pivot the Mew out of the active without losing the... En Actually, it's got a Mystery Energy, so that doesn't yep. matter. The Fog Crystal will find a Psychic Energy. I wonder if... Disable is going to be the route of choice, but it does look like Chris has the Intellion in his Ooh. hand. And I don't know if Chris has played Escape Rope yet. I'm pretty sure I saw that in his hand earlier. He does have Bird Keeper as well in the deck. That is a way to get out of the Disable Lock because in the Pokemon TCG, anytime a Pokemon goes to the bench, any effects that have been put on it are cleared, and Disable counts as one of those effects. Yes, it does. So we'll see Nathan take a look through this deck and consider his options. He's got one Psychic Pokemon to fetch or one Psychic Energy to fetch. And this board has just been unfortunately underdeveloped, I think, throughout the game so far with Chris able to get out there, turn two Wailord, turn three Wailord, then Lapras to back it up. Nathan was able to respond to the Wailord, so kudos to him for that because I didn't know that he was going to have an answer. Yeah, I thought Wailord was just going to sweep the game. Yeah, that was a very fast whale, but Lapras is here where Wailord uh, left off. It looks like Nathan is just going to start setting up the... Uh, the Cosmog. The Cosmog evolves into Cosmoam. Eventually Luma Lunala. Lunala, yes, yes, yes. Lunala. Probably the one from Celebrations. I think Most likely, good. yeah. Very good in a spread type deck like this. So Nathan is not going to go this Disable route. It's just going to be Psy Power spreading some damage, it appears. Yeah, Psy Power with the Mew from Unbroken Bonds. May have rotated out of standard format, but never rotates out of our hearts as we see it here <laughs> as a star in this Psychic Gym Leader Challenge deck. One of the few Pokemon in the Gym Leader Challenge format that has a Bench Barrier ability. There is the Mew and Mr. Mime, both 
for the psychic type deck there's the new mana v with its water veil for the water type deck end of list there okay there's the fairy i Mr. was gonna Maya. say let's not leave anything out here let's not talk about fairy okay <laughs> let's not talk about fairy in gym leader challenge Christian Listen, does get that Intellion, so will use Shady Dealings, can get any two cards from the deck. Guzma is an option as well, in addition to Bird Keeper, potentially. Oh, yeah, it doesn't even need a Bird Keeper, right? Because uh, the Disable was not the choice from Nathan. But Guzma could still be good, or boss, uh, Boss's Orders, Lysander, one of those options to target down something a little more threatening in this Mew, like the Dusclops, maybe even the Cosmoem, or Cosmog, bring that up. Yeah, just like in standard format, when you use shady dealings in gym leader challenge, you basically got the whole deck in your hands. You have got options on options. Now, unlike standard format, you can't go scoop up net shady dealing, shady dealing, scoop up net, and just like bounce it all over. Right. Uh, but searching your deck for two trainer cards, incredibly good, especially when the deck is filled with singleton cards. So Chris is eyeing up Nessa here, an excellent supporter in the water deck. You can get up to four in any combination of water Pokemon and water energy cards from your discard pile and put them into your hand. So Chris, I think, is going to be content going for this because it means that you're less... It's kind of like playing to not lose the game right you're, you're trying to just get enough stuff back so you have enough to clean up the game on the next turn versus seeker is the other grab here which i think the lysander did get played earlier on or the guzma so that is also an option here versus seeker going into chris's discard pile it finds lysander. the lysander and lysander's gonna bring up that duskull so that lapras can take the knockouts with its hydro pump attack Nathan's deck, the one with the ghosts trying to scare the opponent, but Nathan must be scared over on that side because Lapras is going to clean this game up. All Nathan has is Evo Soda and Wally. You actually could use that combo of cards to get Lunala in play, but there are just no energies to do anything. Nathan's only chance, I guess, is boss's orders and stall. But even then, Chris has so many ways to retreat these Pokemon. Yeah, this is such a cool thing you could do. With Wally, you're able to just skip the evolution rules and evolve a Pokemon, even if the Pokemon has only been in play for one turn. Really neat to have early on in the match if Nathan would have been able to find it to help spring a powerful Stage 1 or Stage 2 into play. But Nathan needs something... A little bit more substantial to not lose this game. You could gust the wishy washy. Wishy washy is big and kind of tough to move, so it's possible that it could buy Nathan some time. Nathan needs plenty of it. With five prizes left to take in this match to Chris's single prize. So, boss will bring up wishy washy. It does have a pretty hefty three retreat. We'll have a hard time moving from the active, but. Bad news for Nathan. I'm pretty sure Chris has the Guzma ready to go in hand. Yeah, Guzma. I think that Chris also plays Bird Keeper. There are definitely some switch options. Has Floatstone even. Floatstone. And it's just going to be a side power onto the Remoray. Does Chris have it? And there is the Guzma and a Hydro Pump for, for game. Chris hailing from Iceland, advancing to 3 and 0 oh here at Full Grip Games. So you come out here from Iceland. Chris was talking to me, said he, he saw the banner on fullgripgames.com and was like, oh, 6K tournament? Yeah, I could see it. Let's go. <laughs> you know, flew out here and is now 3-0 with his water or ice type deck. We, we did got get Frost to see. Moth, we got Lapras, ice types in the video ice game. Ice types, so. yes. I'm seeing some, uh, <laughs> yeah, some synergy here. Very cool. Is Chris the ice type gym leader, perhaps? Yes, from Iceland. <laughs> Very excited to talk to Chris about his journey here to Akron, Ohio for the 6K Astral Radiance doubleheader weekend. What do you think about those two decks we just saw, Chip? Yeah, very cool. The water deck has kind of been a staple of the Gym Leader Challenge format. That's whenever I'm introducing someone to the format, it's one of the first decks I show them. Yeah. Because it's, you know, just solid. It features cards from all of the eras of the game. And it's pretty basic and easy to understand, but very, very powerful. Especially when you have turns like Chris did in that Ooh. game. The turn two Waylord hitting for tons of damage with four energy cards on it. 
that's going to be tough for any deck to overcome. If Chris keeps running like that, we're definitely going to be seeing more from him later on. <laughs> Absolutely. Let's get Chris back here for a winner's interview. We'll be right back with Chris from Iceland. And I'm here with our winner from the last <laughs> round, Chris. What a match that yeah. was, man. What that was interesting. a crazy turn, too. You yeah. went first, got a ton of basic Pokemon in play, and then found all of your stage ones on turn yeah. two. That was wild. Yeah. That was, <laughs> I had the nuts. You definitely did. Have, have you been uh, finding turns like that pretty often today, or is that kind of a, a little bit of, a, bit of an exception? That was above average. Yes. Was, yeah. <laughs> I, I can't ask for more, right? Yeah, absolutely. Definitely. The I, I mean, what can any deck in the format do to a turn two Waylord, yeah. it feels like? Uh, nothing, I think. <laughs> well, you came all the way here from Iceland. You definitely made quite the trek to yeah. get out to this event. Why don't you talk to us a little bit about the journey and why you decided to come from Iceland all the way to Akron, Ohio? That's an excellent question. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> why I came here, uh, I just was buying some cards of the, the website and I saw the banner for the event and I was like, why not? Just yeah. try it. And I came here. <laughs> you <laughs> did, whim. and here you are, and playing GLC. Did you play in standard yesterday as well? Yeah. I assume. Yep. Yeah. So uh, it didn't go as well as this. <laughs> so, but it was fun. Yeah, three and zero start here in GLC though, which is a nice way to yeah. to kind of turn things around. So we see you were playing a water deck, but we also we were talking about this a little bit. You got a lot of ice type Pokemon in here as yeah. well. The Frost Moth, the Lapras, you know, yeah. representing the home country yeah. a little bit. <laughs> uh, why did you choose the, the water type deck for this tournament? All right, so the funny story is, it's not my list. Okay. I borrow the list from a friend of mine. Okay. Or newly friend. Yes, friend yeah, yeah. So it's his list and I just play it. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a borrowed deck. So for the deck choice, it's not mine. I Got gotta you. go give it to him. Yeah, but you you must have chosen like, hey, I think water is the, yeah, the yeah, deck yeah, I want to yeah. play. Why, why I, did you I feel like that was the choice for this event? Because I saw the Blastoise and I used to play the expanded Blastoise and I was like, oh, it's so fun. Right. Just turn one, set up Blastoise, put all the energies down, knock out. Absolutely. Yeah, love. I mean, that's one of the things that's great about GLC yeah. is that you get to relive some of your favorite cards yeah. from from the past. And it's pretty difficult to play Blastoise even in Expanded these days since yeah, you can't yeah. Archie's it into it, play it, anymore it, on turn, turn one, one, right? Yeah. So really cool that you get to relive some of those old memories yeah. in the Gym Leader Challenge format. So yeah. uh, as the water type deck, is there any matchup that you're not really wanting to see? <laughs> or you feel okay against a lot yeah. of stuff? I definitely don't like the psychic one. Okay. I just played because it can lock you out the, the abilities. Uh, the lightning one is also scary because it hit you for weakness and can snipe your bench. Sure. But I haven't really seen uh, the grass type. Eh, it's kind of scary. Mm -hmm. But I haven't. Never, this is my first time playing this format. So Got it. So I don't know what to expect. Well, that's one of the things I love about GLC is that even bad matchups, yeah. the games are close. Yeah, yeah. And there's so definitely. much time in the match you can come back from you know really early deficits we saw that actually in our round and one that we had earlier on today where someone was able to come back from a pretty quick early deficit so yeah. that's one of the things i like about this format a yeah. lot uh your opponent playing the spread psychic deck yeah. maybe something you're not as uh really wanting to see no. quite as much but you've got answers to it right yeah, yeah. with the uh the, the rough seas yeah, are very yeah. good against the spreading type deck yeah. whenever you're playing against a spread deck like that how do you have to adjust your strategy and your game plan i just Go for healing. Yeah. Just heal it off. Try my best. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes it doesn't work. I saw I had the what's it called? The guy who not, uh, puts damage on the basics. The uh, the wheezing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So you took I that thought, out before it even became yeah, a threat. Yeah. So I thought, okay, I'll just have to get someone to evolve. Don't get basics, basically. Definitely. Wow. Well, great play from you, Chris. Congratulations on getting to 3-0 here Thank you. with the water deck. And hopefully we'll get to see more from you. If you keep drawing keep, like that, yeah. we'll uh, definitely be seeing more yeah. from you. So, <laughs> well, good luck, Chris. Thanks yeah. for the interview. And uh, don't go anywhere, guys. We will be back very soon with round number four. Hell yeah. <laughs> Players are getting underway here in round number four. Grant Manley on the right, the winner of yesterday's standard tournament, going up against Travis Brooks on the left, who's having an excellent start, 
with the Gloria, one of the best supporters to see in your opening hand. Both of these players are playing a colorless deck, but they are quite different from one another. Yes, they are, Chip. As you can tell from the Shining Arceus, you know, if you're playing standard format, you might be accustomed to seeing uh, Arceus V-Star. But let me tell you about this other <laughs> Arceus card that you might not have ever seen before. It is a Shining Arceus with the Fabled Defense ability, which reads as long as this Pokemon is your active Pokemon, prevent all damage done to your bench Pokemon by your opponent's attacks. Grant is piloting a control deck. This is a deck that aims to mill the opponent's deck and discard all of their resources and win without taking a single prize card. In Gym Leader Challenge format, you have access to many of the most degenerate cards ever printed in the history of the Pokemon yep. TCG. Orangaroo from Ultra Prism was banned about uh, four or five months ago and has been out of the format for a while, but there are ways to recycle those resources and use your powerful disruption cards over and over. Bunnelby is going to be one of the key cards Grant looks to utilize in this deck. Yeah, around the same time that Orangaroo was banned, Bunnelby was unbanned. The ancient traits began to be allowed in the Gym Leader Challenge format. Not quite as strong as a Rangaroo, but it's got differences, right? I mean, it's maybe not fair to say it's not quite as strong. It's just different. You can either Burrow or Rototiller. You discard a card from the top of your opponent's deck or shuffle a card from your discard pile back into the deck. And thanks to the Omega Barrage Ancient Trait, you get to attack two times in a turn. Now, Winona is a really powerful card in these colorless decks because Winona allows you to search your deck for three colorless Pokemon. A pretty ideal supporter card. Not only does it allow you to search out basics that you want to evolve, it can search out your evolution lines too, like Chinchino with its Make Do ability or Pidgeotto with its Airmail ability. We see Grant's grabbing the Skitty, the Minchino, and Snorlax with its Gormandize ability. Snorlax, one of the strongest setup Pokemon in this deck. The Gormandize ability, when you put it in the active spot, or when it is in the active spot, you may end your turn and then fill your hand up to seven cards. Super solid, because all Grant's deck really wants to do is just get through the deck you want to draw as many cards as possible get to as few cards in your deck as possible so you can set up a lock grant's deck is aiming to control the game lock the opponent out of being able to do anything what grant will eventually do in this game is use counter catcher bring something up from travis's bench that has a high retreat cost and then Grant will reset stamp, put Travis to very few cards in hand. He will use Delinquent to discard those cards from hand and then play Chip, Chip, Ice Axe to look at the top three cards of Travis's deck and put them back in any order, leaving Travis with a bad card to top deck, all in combination as well with a Hex Maniac so that Travis can't just draw out of that lock with something like Bieberl. Yeah, and the uh, the Delcaddy is a key piece to getting this all Absolutely. together, right? Because you can use the Delcaddy Search for Friends ability. So you have all these pieces that are moving. It's like a machine, a well-oiled right. machine, and you have plenty of options to access your prize cards without having to take any prize cards, right? Since Grant's deck is not going to be taking any prizes. Grant has to make sure that if he prizes any key pieces that he can go get them since this entire deck is singleton. I think this control deck is actually 60 different cards. That's right. Uh, usually in GLC, you don't quite have 60 different cards because you've got a bunch of basic energies, right? But Colorless Control, one of the few exceptions since for your energy cards, you've only got three of them, one Capture, <laughs> one Recycle, and then one Basic Fire. Yep, that's it. So three different energy cards uh and 60 different cards in the deck this is the definition of a pile right <laughs> this is a Absolutely. pile of cards <laughs> but there is a really 
concise and a really coherent strategy with the colorless control deck the grant has been piloting at these gym leader challenge championship series events uh very uh, consistently i mean he's played Since control the first one. he's played control at the three he's attended he's played control every time yes that's right and got top four at one of them losing to mike gibbs who was eventually able to defeat azul playing the same deck in the finals of course mike went on a tear with his grass deck in that format and uh shortly after force of giant plants was banned so yeah, uh -huh. <laughs> actually yes that uh that event specifically uh i think spawned two bands of the formats yes. because we saw forest of giant plants and orangaroo enter the gym leader challenge hall of fame once a card is Hall of Fame, they are no longer legal for play. <laughs> oh, could even call it the Hall of Pain at that point. <laughs> That's uh, what those two cards were inflicting. Yes, but when you are dealing with cards that uh, span a decade of the Pokemon yeah. TCG, inevitably there are some cards that do not jive well with a format, and uh, it is best if they just are excluded from the format. There are only, what, three cards on the Gym Leader Challenge ban list, so... Not a very deep ban list, and players are really free to explore any of the non-rule box cards that they wish to play uh, that have been released since the black and white set in 2010. So Travis is going to be able to get in here and get the first prize. Take a KO with Aerodactyl's Fossil Fangs, discarding that triple acceleration energy, KOing the Snorlax. Taking that first prize... But Grant doesn't really care how many prizes Travis takes, as long as he doesn't take all six. <laughs> we got another really cool card for the colorless control deck from Astral Radiance, Hisuian Heavy Ball. Perfect for a deck that doesn't take any prize cards. If Grant happens to unfortunately prize any key piece, he can just go into the deck, into the prizes with Hisuian Heavy Ball and search out a basic Pokemon to put into his hand. We also see Grant playing Peonia right now. There are a lot of ways for these decks to access the prize cards without taking prizes. A lot of decks will just play Town Map as a way to flip over the prize cards so that right. you can map out your prize takes for the rest of the game. Not an option for the control deck as you will just be sitting there staring at them over there if you play a Town Map. But Peonia, great, because you could swap some cards in your hand with cards in your prizes, and then Hisui and Heavy Ball, fantastic for searching out a basic Pokemon. And Grant playing down the Tropical Beach, probably one of the few players in the tournament that has a real English beach in his deck this weekend, using that card to fill the hand up to seven but, of course, the turn in. Same ability as the Snorlax, but it is on a stadium. One of the strongest stadiums in the history of the game. Yeah, Tropical Beach is a fantastic card. It actually finished in second place the year, the first year it was legal at the World Championships with Ross Cawthon just playing a single copy, I think. That's right, yeah. yeah. It's actually a pretty funny story. Ross had cooked up this super unique rogue deck, was really prepped for all the matchups, arrived at Worlds, and the day of the tournament got... This promo card in his swag bag, read the card and realized, this could be pretty good in my deck. Went up to the judge table and asked, am I allowed to play this card in my deck? <laughs> and they said, sure thing. He made a cut, threw it in there, and he made second place. <laughs> can, wait, can I play this? <laughs> yeah. Such a crazy thing. This is before the, like, you know, two-week allotment right. you know, period or whatever. I guess maybe promos are legal instantly as soon as they're released, something like that. They were back. Yeah. yeah. Th it was the Wild West back then. The rules were not the same as they are now. <laughs> in 2011, I think. Yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So this is a really powerful card in Gym Leader Challenge format. You can play World Championship cards, which are not legal for standard play, um, but it just helps make some cards like Tropical Beach more accessible until the Pokemon Company International decides to throw us a bone and reprint this thing. That's never going to happen, bro. <laughs> well, maybe if we keep asking the Pokemon Company International to do something about this card that's impossible to get, maybe they will throw us a bone. Well, we've been asking for 10 years and it hadn't happened yet, so... <laughs> yeah, well, you know, maybe if we just keep asking the Pokemon <laughs> Company International and anybody who works at the Pokemon Company International to please do something and reprint this card, then maybe they will. <laughs> <laughs> Travis just kind of going through the deck here setting up getting the bird keeper gets to switch the Aerodactyl goes into the Snorlax does get to draw three cards as well does find capture energy 
And with this attachment for Tarn, it's likely we are just going to see a collect from the Snorlax. I actually really like this card a lot for this deck. It's a solid consistency option, just a colorless attack to get you a couple more cards. And then Collapse can deal a really high amount of damage. 120 for three energy cards, really solid. Yes, yeah, so we got two different colorless decks with two different strategies. Travis is trying to take six prizes to win the game. Grant is trying to... Remove all of Travis's cards from the deck in order to win the game. Both players opting to play a different Snorlax. The Gormandai Snorlax is great for churning through the deck and Ooh. getting to the bottom of the deck. We see those new shoes in yes. Grant's deck as well. There are some really cool turbo cards in the Astral Radiance set. Kind of a painful Hapu, though. Has to get rid of Lusamine and the Robo Substitute. Both very good cards. Grant also did find, I think, Chip Chip Ice Axe and Reset Stamp were in there, which are key pieces to Grant's lock turn. Now, you don't really mind... Look how big this hand yeah, is. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. <laughs> you, you don't really mind discarding some of these key pieces that you need later on, like the Lusamine. You have access to them, of course, with something like Del Caddy. You can get any of your supporters back with the Del Caddy. And you, of course, are going to try to be shuffling some of these cards back with the Rototiller from Bunnelby. And speaking of who, we see him hit the field. Finally, Bunnelby comes into play. Munchlax as well could go for that Snack Search. A pretty solid option on turns when you're not able to tropical beach whenever you've got more than seven cards in hand snack search gives you a chance to get a good card back on top of your deck yeah munch lags you flip a coin if heads put a card from your discard pile on type your deck any sort of card that recovers a card from the discard pile is going to be a card that a control deck likes to use yeah 100 percent and grant actually just passes didn't use the snack search Maybe doesn't want anything yet. Maybe there's a card in the deck that he yeah. would prefer to be on the top. Grant, yeah, Grant makes very few, if any, mistakes. So I expect he's got a reason for this. There's definitely a chance he just forgot, though. <laughs> I think he forgot. <laughs> yeah. I think that that there's no way you don't want like shoes on top at the at, at the very minimum, right? Sure. <laughs> Yeah, but. and Scoop Up Net is a really important card for this deck because that's what lets you recycle Del Caddy over and over again. Yeah. And it's a card in the discard pile. So he's yeah, going to have to get that back at some point. Right. There's no way you don't, like, maybe just go a 50% chance to try and get one of those back. Yeah. Right. Exactly. So a little bit of a missed opportunity there. But uh, maybe he'll just pretend he flipped tails, you know, in his <laughs> mind. You just, yeah, just put it out of his mind. Is, we'll get him next turn. Uh, we are getting word that he actually used Tropical Beach. So oh, he Grant beached. just moves, moves so quickly, we kind of missed it. <laughs> I assumed that he was not going to be able to beach. Got it. Yes. Yeah, he did have a lot of cards. So mm -hmm. Travis does get double t uh, colorless energy on the active Snorlax and Welder attaching a fire energy, uh, two fire energies to the Aerodactyl. Now, Snorlax cannot get this KO. I believe the Arceus has 130 hit points, Collapse only dealing 120, and the Fighting Fury Belt is hiding in the prize cards right now, we can see from the town map. Yeah, both of these players have extremely large hands right now. This is just uh, kind of hilarious. You know, they're, they're both just have their entire decks in their hands, basically. Yeah. And they're kind of uh, just jockeying for position, just saying, like, all right, I'm going to try and, uh, you know, soften up your Pokemon, you know, work towards getting some knockouts. Got five prizes left to take. These rounds are 40 minutes long. It is 40 minutes, best of three. That is like a control player's dream. Uh, single round Swiss, 40 yep. minutes. Uh, you could not craft a better experience for a control player that's a tournament. Yeah, and as a control player, the last thing you want to see is your opponent be really aggressive and start putting on the pressure, taking a lot of quick knockouts. And Travis took one really fast KO, but that was pretty much it. it has not done too much else since then. And that is, I mean, Grant does not mind how long Travis is taking because the more time Travis takes, the more set up Grant will be able to get. Yeah, now things that could go poorly for uh, Grant's deck, I mean... The you have different stadium op, stadium options, parallel city, Avery, you know, any way you can kind of attack the board, slow, try to slow Grant down. If you can disrupt the hand at all, it's tough to disrupt a control player's hand because usually it is uh, it's a situation where they're not taking any prizes. So you know you can't rock sand them; they're never going to take any prizes. You can't end them to anything less than six because they're not going to take any prizes. So like an early Marnie. Uh, is you know could be good with like uh, if they haven't quite gotten into the depths of their deck yet. Right. But 
uh, there's not really a lot of ways to stop the control deck from doing what it needs to do. And Grant is now here uh, advancing on the bottom of his deck. And Travis hasn't really taken a lot of prizes to you know give himself a substantial lead, giving Grant plenty of time to work with to set up. Grant plays Gladian that turn, doesn't even spread the prizes back out, and uh, goes and gets Delcaddy out of the prizes. So that's a very key card, something Grant, I know, really wanted to get access to because it's a very important piece. And you can see here why Fire Energy is the choice of basic energy to play for situations like this. You don't have a way to specifically interact with it, but if your opponent has like a Giant Hearth in play, a Scorched Earth, any of those things you can interact with the fire energy that you play in your deck. Yep, in. so that stadium just allowed Grant to go get the one of fire energy, which is a really heads-up play, allowing him to uh, you know, to just go search the deck and also discard a card from his hand if he wants it. The recycle energy was able to get retreated off of the Chinchino, and when recycle energy hits the discard pile, comes back to the hand, and now we are going to start seeing some Roto-Tiller action. Looks like Grant just shuffles two cards from the discard pile back into the deck one being the scoop up net one being escape rope scoop up net a very important card because it lets you reset del caddy which is a key piece now one thing that's different from grant's list from previous glc control decks he does not play that ditto from boundaries cross which allowed mm. you to transform into skitty so that you could chain them back to back turns but it still kind of works it's a little bit tougher though because you're only getting back two cards as opposed to three which you would get with the orangaroo but you can still make all of those things happen with the Rototiller putting back the scoop up net, the chip chip ice axe, the reset stamp, whatever control pieces, whatever lock pieces you may need. Yeah. Now, there are definitely ways to combat the control deck. There's a lot of different neat things that you could use. Spread strategies are really good against the control deck if you can uh, actually utilize them. That's why Grant is playing the Arceus, right? The Shining Arceus, because he realizes this is one of the weaknesses of the strategy. If you can place damage all over my board and take multiple knockouts at once, this can be something that's tough for me to deal with. But um, but I, I don't know that there's a lot of players who have really respected control with their deck choice for today. No, I'm not sure that they have. Grant has a couple different recovery cards in hand, the Rescue Stretcher and Rescue Carrier. Travis is at four prizes so i don't expect grant to go for the lock this turn but next turn is kind of the ideal situation because that's when you can pull off delinquent and uh, uh, reset stamp delinquent chip chip all of those things at the same time plus of course counter catcher probably going to bring up that kangaskhan which is pretty useless there on the bench yeah if you're playing against a control deck you want to have plenty of switch cards available to you so, lots of switching as travis this is the turn that he wants to use a hand disruption card, wants to use Marnie, Marnie. or N, something like that. Because Grant has like 20 cards in hand. Yeah. So you <laughs> know that a control that player happen. having yeah. that many cards is going to lead to not good things for you, <laughs> <laughs> to say it lightly. Yes, uh, when, the, when the hand is far bigger than the deck, you are having problems. <laughs> so did Grant evolve? Yeah, I think he's... Oh, maybe didn't mean to evolve the Del Caddy just yet. Yeah, it was like, I think, because his opponent was reading the card, oh. picked it up. Yeah, Grant wasn't trying to evolve here. He's not locking till next turn, so he doesn't quite want to evolve yet. And does get the recycle onto that Bunnelby, that resource that never goes to the discard pile. It will always be available. Grant does choose to search for some friends. Looks like Lieutenant Surge's strategy and Hex Maniac are decent options. And that's something Grant's going to have to do every single turn. He needs to hex every turn in the end of the game because Bibarel can just draw Travis out of the hand lock. Yeah, and we see that there's Bibarel, there's Pidgeotto, and there's Chinchino. Right. I mean, there, Travis has got infinite draw power. And I think that Travis is probably thinking like, okay, you know, I can draw out of whatever situation this control deck tries to put me into. So bring it on. But that's the power of Hex Maniac. Yeah. And that's what Grant is going to be relying on to craft the win condition, shutting off those abilities using reset stamp to put Travis to a low hand size, chip chip ice axe and delinquents, all these different cards to remove the hands completely and then control the top deck. It is a really gnarly hand lock 
that occurs. So this is the turn. Travis has got to do something here because Grant is kind of crafting Exodia right now, crafting the the perfect board state, the perfect hand, everything that Grant needs. He's got available to him, and Travis has not disrupted Grant one bit. And I don't think Travis even has the option to play an in or a Marnie here. Does use boss's orders, and I think Skitty is probably the best thing to target. It's a key piece of the lock. Grant already has a low deck size, so getting rid of Pidgey or Chinchino is not going to do too much. So I think that's a good decision from Travis, though Grant has plenty of ways to reestablish Skitty. Oh, yes. Right. Because Grant is assuming that he's going to lose a Pokemon every turn. He's got the Rescue Carrier. Yeah, in just his uses hands. Make Do, discards a card, draws two, and then the Air Mail from Pidgeotto can draw the last card. Yep. There we go. Rescue Stretcher, getting the Skitty back from the discard pile and into the hand. And this, this is, the is turn. when things really start to go down. Reset stamp and that big hand that Travis has been working for the entire game. Ooh, it's gone. Yep, and this is the combo here. Step one, reset stamp. Step two, Lieutenant Surge. Step three, Delinquent. Step four, Hex Maniac. And then step five, Rototiller. Or step five, Chip Chip Ice Axe. Can't forget that key piece. Yeah. And then we get to Rototiller a couple of cards back into the deck. Yes, Lieutenant Surge and Delinquent. There we go. Discard the stadium and the hand while you're at it. Not something that you'll love to see yeah, when you only have three cards in your hand. Travis reading the card, and that is not a fun one to read. <laughs> no, no. I uh, was playing against Jimmy Pendarvis in the finals of the 2016 Regional Championship, and he asked me how many cards were in my hand. And you knew what that meant. I had three. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get to keep your hand, Andrew? I did not. No, <laughs> I was set to a zero-card hand, and he proceeded to win that series. <laughs> L eliminating the hand, a pretty strong effect. There's a reason this card is banned in the expanded format. It is still, uh, you know, it's a little harder to utilize in GLC since you can only play one copy of any card in your deck, so getting to any one of is a little bit tougher, but Grant's deck has found a way to make excellent use of it. Yeah, so, and that's the thing is, like, the the control deck, I mean, you've seen oh, this. Oh, wait. Did Grant play Hex? Did a Hex get played? Uh, he must have played it just really, really quickly. Grant does move so fast. Right. We'll see. I mean, if Travis <laughs> does anything. I'm sure he played it. I'm sure yeah. he played it. I'm, I must have just looked away for a split second there. Yes. Playing really quickly. He was able to play two supporters, of course, thanks to Lieutenant Surge's strategy. If you are behind on prizes, if your opponent has more prizes remaining than you, you get to play two supporters in that turn. So that's why Grant was able to play Surge, Delinquent, and Hex Maniac all at once. And that is the lock, right? Now my opponent's hand is gone. I and drag up a Pokemon they don't want to have in the active. That's another key strategy and it looks against like control. You don't, do not overbench. Yeah. Do not, you want, you want like two Pokemon tops. Right, and you want them to both be filled with energy, like so that they can they have options. Right, this board is way too wide. There are way too many liabilities in play. Bibarel can get gusted. Kangaskhan can get gusted. Yep. I mean, this is just kind of disastrous, really. Search for friends gets back two supporter cards. Chip Chip Ice Axe leaving a bad card. Grant can just play Hex Maniac. Scoop up net resets the Del Caddy, and that's what Grant's going to be trying to do every single turn. It seems like Travis there was taking a moment to just kind of process exactly it's what, is, what is happening to him right now in this instance because if you've never experienced this before – it's kind of a shock that, like, wow, that just happened. I can't do anything. Yeah, it's a very, uh, it's a very sobering reality when your opponent is, you know, you were cruising, you yep. were, you were cool. You're like, this control deck not really doing a lot. I've taken three prizes. They haven't done seemingly anything. And here comes the Belelba and Bryson man. This is how Grant accelerates the game and discards useful cards from Travis's deck. Getting rid of Recycle Energy, that's good. Getting rid of Colrus, that is good as well. Now Chip Chip Isaac's looking at the top three, hoping to leave Travis with a bad hand. Now Travis can theoretically draw out of this. It is possible. The way it has to happen though is that Travis needs to have three good cards on top of his deck at once. Three yep. supporters, three switching cards, something like that. And then if Grant uses Chip Chip Ice Axe and sees three good cards, he's going to be in trouble. Yes, yeah, so we see Grant putting two cards back into the deck with Bunnelby's Roto-Tiller attack. Is it Roto-Tiller? Yes, it puts yes, the, yes, yes. It's Burrow and Roto-Tiller, yep. yes. 
with Bunnelby's Roto Tiller attack. Uh, Roto Tiller puts one card from the discard pile back into the deck, but with Bunnelby's Theta Barrage. Omega, I believe. Omega Barrage, yes. Omega Barrage. Yeah, there's Omega Barrage and Omega Barrier. There you go. Omega Barrage trait allows Bunnelby to attack twice, which then allows you to Roto Tiller twice. So Grant's playing very, very quickly here. Knows that his deck, the only way it's going to lose at this point is if time runs out. So he's moving very concisely, very quickly, making quick actions. Doesn't have to play Surge on the turns. He's only playing one supporter. And he's going to have kind of this every other turn phase here where one turn he's going to just Hex, and then one turn he's going to Surge, Belloba, and then Hex. Yeah. Now, Control is an archetype that has been around since day one. If you read the cards that were printed in base set. Yes. Energy removal. Yep. Super energy removal. Yep. Yep. Gust of wind. Various cards that uh, last, you know, can remove cards from your opponent's hand. Disruption has been around since the beginning in the Pokemon TCG. And all of these things can be played around. It just so happens that I think Travis kind of just... Walked into the danger zone here. Didn't really know what Grant was going to be cooking up yeah. or didn't really play around it. Travis was going about this game uh, as he would any other match. The right. Bieberl on the bench doesn't need to be there. It's got a fat two retreat cost. The Kangaskhan, completely useless because it's got a revenge attack that'll never get activated because Grant's not taking a prize card, right? So maybe if Travis can watch this back and think, okay, well, like, what, what ought to I have done? to maybe give myself a higher chance in this game. At this point, it is like watching Grant just, just play because he gets to loop and loop and loop and do his thing, but he earned this spot in the match by getting his board and his deck to this perfect state and is punishing Travis for overbenching. It is very satisfying to watch Grant play this deck, though. He knows it so well. He's moving so quickly, does everything almost instantly it feels like it's almost like you know watching a dancer right just kind of flowing through the deck going through the motions he's making it all happen and travis can do nothing but pass it is incredibly satisfying to watch grant manley play his control deck grant manley is a player who loves a control deck had played various control decks and expanded format for some time and now you know, expanded format is pretty degenerate, uh, but a lot of the control cards are, are banned from expanded format. So in Gym Leader Challenge format, control actually exists. It has never won one of our Gym Leader Challenge championships, actually. That's right. And Mike Gibbs was able to beat two of the best players in the world, both Grant Manley and Azul Garcia Griego, piloting a very similar, if not the same, 60 yeah. control deck at the fusion strike gym leader challenge championship event so the control deck is very real it's a great deck but it is not invincible as we have seen so all grant has to do is get travis to six cards remaining in deck if travis only has six cards left Actually, it needs to get him to eight cards <laughs> because of burrow with the bunnelby so what grant has to do is once travis is at eight cards he can go surge Beloba Bryson Man, Del Caddy Beloba Bryson Man, and then Burrow two cards. And I think this is the turn. Grant counting it out. Is there eight cards remaining? Is this the turn that Grant can win the game? Lieutenant Surge's strategy, step number one. There we go, Lieutenant Surge. And then you have to double Beloba and then Burrow twice. And that's a wrap. <clears throat> There's the Surge and Beloba. There's Beloba number one. Does Grant have Versus Seeker in hand? Yes, yes. he does. So Easy. Travis. Getting rid of three cards. One, two, three. Grant can play versus Seeker. Beloba, Beloba Bryson again. Again. one three more time. More. Oh my gosh. There it is. One, two, and three. And then Bunnelby's Burrow attacks there two it is. times, milling the last two cards. One, two, and, and Travis Brooks decks out. Grant Manley controlled him out of the game. Yep, to a 4 Oh, record so far. Grant Manley making another run for top eight. Seven rounds during today's Gym Leader Challenge event. Can Grant Manley be the first player to ever win both the Standard and the Gym Leader Challenge event? He's definitely going to be trying. He's going <laughs> to be trying. That is for sure. I know Grant would be thrilled to win two events back-to-back, -back, as any Pokemon player, of course, would be. 
That deck is hard to play. Don't let that fool you. No. Grant yeah. is a master of this deck. He knows it inside and out, knows every situation that could come up and exactly what to do, how to respond, and how to optimally get to the lock turn. And once you set up the lock, it's just kind of cruising from there. Grant has earned this spot. It has earned a spot. And it's something that you see with Gym Leader Challenge players and their decks is that the better you know your deck, the more successful you will be. Mm -hmm. It is a pile of 50 to 60 unique cards. And the better you know how those cards interact together and how they interact against your opponent's various strategies that they might be able to put into play, it's going to lead you to success. Grant could be piloting any deck that he's put this many hours into cultivating, and he'd be 4-0 right now. Definitely. Really. But it is really a joy watching him play this control deck. Uh, he, what, Lost in the finals or was it top four? Lost in top four. I think so, yeah. Yep, earlier during one of our Gym Leader Challenge events. So I'm sure he's hungry for that win. I know he wants it, and I'm excited to hear how he's feeling, being at 4-0, and oh, needing one more win, and then can probably just ID two times. So let's get Grant back here and see how he's feeling being 4-0 and oh right now at the Gym Leader Challenge Tournament. Grant Manley. 4-0. You were 4-0 yesterday. Yeah. You're 4-0 today. Feels good. Yeah. You just won a thousand dollars last, you know, last night. Thousand five hundred dollars for first. I think you and your opponent uh split the prize pool in the finals and then you played and you were yesterday's victor. A thousand three hundred dollars up for grabs today. If you make it to the finals, are you splitting today's prize? Um, it probably depends on the player and the matchup. Uh, the last the last one I didn't actually like I didn't know what he was playing, um, so I ended up winning. But he had Roxanne Path, which is a very scary win or a very scary lose condition from you. So I, I don't really regret that. Roxanne Path is pretty scary. Um, but as far as today, it, it really just depends again on the matchup and the player. So uh, who knows? Hopefully, hopefully I get there. Still a little bit to go. Yes, you do. So you're four zero. You're not guaranteed top eight yet. Things could really go off the rails, I guess, if as they sometimes do in the Pokemon TCG, but. You've gotten here now, and you only need one more win to probably secure it. You have finished a in the top four with Control at one of our Gym Leader Challenge events, but Control does not have a win here in the Gym Leader Challenge format yet. Do you think that today is the day? Uh, I'm very confident in the deck. I'm confident in that it is the best deck and in my ability to play it. The rest kind of up to luck. Sometimes you get some bad chip chips. Um, but yeah, I, I think it's like, I have a pretty good shot, but again, still, still a little bit to go. We'll see what happens. Um, yeah, control is like, it's very interesting. All of its matchups I think are pretty good. Um, and even like if you play perfectly against it, like if you're, if your opponent is not experienced in the matchup, it's like handing you a free win. Um, but right. if they are experienced, it's still like you're favored, but they, they just like increase their percent basically. Um, so that's like. Uh, that's like how I lost the last time. Um, if your opponent plays well, they still have to get a little lucky. But um, yeah, the deck's like it's pretty crazy. It's very, very good. Uh, yes, so I'm, I'm as we it. as we've seen. Yes, yeah. you got a lot of options. You got some new cards from Astral Radiance yeah. added to the control deck. Talk to us about those. Okay, yeah. So actually, I had a hard time making space uh, for these cards. But Hisui and Heavy Ball is pretty crazy. I didn't really get a lot of. I don't think I got value out of it that game. Uh, but it's really, really good. Uh, so just an item card that can search your prizes, get Bunnelby, Skitty, Machino, whatever. And uh, not having to use a supporter for that is is really awesome. Like, it's really cool. And you yeah. can get it with Ball Guy. So Ball Guy's like, oh, no, my Mancino's prize. Okay, I'll just get the Heavy Ball and heavy I ball, get it anyway. Go. It's yep, like exactly. actually really, really good. So that was yeah. the, the instant include. Trekking Shoes I wasn't too sure about. I had Tag called Guzma Hala Engine before. Um, but I felt that to be, it's pretty good, but it's a little underwhelming, especially if you Guzma Hala and either Capture Energy or Beach's prize, you just wasted your entire turn. Right. Um, so I, I just put Trekking Shoes in. Um, so those were the two cuts there, Tag Call and Guzma Hala for Guzma. and Heavy Ball and Trekking Shoes just to dig through the deck faster. And then I also put Gloria in, which is from the last set, but for some reason it wasn't in the deck before, so I put that in. This is a really good card. Yeah, yeah for sure. Now, Mike Gibbs is here again with his Grass deck. I've heard that Grass is a very popular choice for today is that something you're worried about at all i mean you seemed to be pretty confident here you said control all of controls matchups are favored yes yes including grass uh i'm trying to think of something that would be not favored 
it's it, yeah it's it's uh, maybe some like random cards back when trump card was legal it was like item lock trump card beats you but uh, <laughs> yeah yeah i don't know i think grass is still favored but like a good grass player probably has the best shot out of anybody of beating the deck so that's fair i mean you do get to accelerate from the deck you can flood your board with energy uh of course you know strategies that really help pairing the bench down not over benching you don't want to just like give your opponents a, a fat two energy retreater you know right things like that uh, and, and a really interesting part of the matchup is with the captivating pokepuff and the target whistle slash echoing horn whichever one um they have to keep if they notice you haven't used those cards yet and you only get one shot unless you rototiller for them which is kind of hard to do sometimes um because you need to get other cards yeah. but you only have one shot with each of them so they have to keep pokemon out of the discard pile and their hand um, so Almost it's really impossible. it's really interesting trying to time that um, trying to time those those cards both on both ends really. yeah for sure so that's some you know interesting nuance that we we could see come into play later on in the events well congratulations right. Grants 4 oh so you. far with the control deck I know we got some control fans in the chat that are excited to see the formats where control still lives on very much a real threat here in the gym leader challenge formats uh, good luck in the rest of your rounds thank you We are underway here in round five of the Full Grip Games Astral Radiance Legal, Legal Gym Leader Challenge Tournament. On the left, Matthew Cecil piloting a darkness type deck. And on the right, Ethan Hegster Heggy, official Pokemon TCG commentator, sitting at 4 0 with the Lightning deck. We saw Lightning round one from Michael Zeely. Now Ethan Heggie at 4-0 and o with the same deck. And Andrew, I know you were giving him quite a few pointers yesterday. Uh, Ethan is not really a GLC aficionado. He doesn't know the format that well, wasn't super familiar with everything. But it seems like he's picked it up quickly now being at 4-0. and o. And it seems like your uh, pointers probably helped him get to this point. <laughs> uh, Gym Leader Challenge is a format that really rewards good fundamentals. Sure. If you know how to play Pokemon cards... And you're, you know, familiar with good sequencing, uh, good, um, good in-game routing as far as mapping your six prize cards, and you have, you know, attention to detail and playing the match. You're going to have a lot of opportunities to outplay your opponents because there are six whole prizes. You cannot just sack into. Uh, you cannot, I would say, very often sack into an explosive turn two and take a third oh, of the game's prizes. Right? There's a chance this game. Could end right here. Hoopa on the bench. If Matthew has a way to retreat this Sneasel into energy, that could be game here just a few seconds in. That is always a threat when you're playing against either a Darkness deck or a Lightning deck, since Lightning has Zapdos that can do the exact same thing. Yes. Um, Doesn't look like he's with quite the peers, got it. yeah. It's not quite there, which is so anguishing, right? It's like, oh, man. So close to getting this turn one KO. Yes, and with Ethan grabbing the Zeb Strike out of the deck with the Evolution Incense, thinning the deck a little bit, saying, all right, I need to get something good off the top. We see, I think, um, potentially uh, some draw outs in Ethan's hand, but nothing for the turn one right. going first. But yes, Gym Leader Challenge is a format that does reward tight gameplay, good sequencing, good in-game routing, and Ethan's been playing the game for a long time, so understands a lot of uh, the core basics going to be able to take to this Gym Leader Challenge format well. Uh, Ethan's been popping in to tell me that he thinks the Lightning deck is totally busted uh, <laughs> throughout the day. There Let's are a go. lot of really cool options and a lot of really cool plays you can make with the Lightning deck, and I think that this is a quintessential match up in the gym leader challenge formats the dark deck versus the lightning deck the lightning deck's my personal favorite and i like that it's it feels like you're in any any game that you're playing you have options for anything that you're playing against it's a low to the ground fast speedy nimble deck that uh can take some quick knockouts on um, pokemon can also set up some sweeping turns where you take multiple knockouts all at the same time of course the uh, darkness deck as well did win the last gym leader challenge tournament oh, yeah. so honestly these two decks are some of the most powerful in the format yes lightning has earned itself a finals appearance yep. with uh jw creewall the very first gym leader challenge uh event that we had here at full grip games but has not won one yet so i would definitely love to see lightning take a championship title 
if uh, if it's in the cards for one of the Lightning players today, it's definitely the deck that I'm always rooting for, as Lightning are my favorite type of Pokemon in the Pokemon TCG, with Zapdos being my favorite Pokemon ever. <laughs> Ethan, playing the Marnie, both players will shuffle their hand and put it onto the bottom of the deck. He does have the Zeb Striker, grabbed that off the Evolution Incense last turn with the excellent Sprint ability. And Zeb Striker can actually also get in there with the Head Bolt attack. It deals 60 damage, and Matthew is choosing to play a 60 HP Sneasel. Yep, yeah, and I am not going to lie. I have often head bolted. Yeah. You head bolt quite a bit. It's actually. good. Yeah. Uh, it's just, it gets in there. Turn two, <laughs> 60 damage when you're going first, especially is often going to really be aggressive after your opponents set up Pokemon. Yeah. So there's a lot of things you could do with head bolt. I mean, head bolt with an electro power, you're hitting 90 damage with the muscle band and electro power, you're hitting 110 damage. Yeah. Usually head bolt is a situation where, you know, maybe in the middle of the game, you need to just on a tempo turn, finish something off that you may mm -hmm. have, uh, you know, you may have softened up already. Maybe you spread 40 damage with Reggie Lecky's, um, uh, you know, Terra Spark attack, and you need to finish off something with Headbolt. It's just always there. If you're out of an attacker, you can Dynamo to the Zeb Striker, who's probably just chilling <laughs> on the bench, right? right? And it's just an attachment away from being able to deal a respectable amount of damage. Ethan plays Ultra Ball, discards Ball Guy and Muscle Band. Ethan would love to play a Ball Guy in one of the coming turns or some other setup card because that's really what's important in GLC is getting set up, but I think Ethan is gonna eye up using Sprint here, get through the deck a little bit more, which makes a ton of sense. Last two cards in hand are a Lightning Energy and a Float Stone. So can throw the Float Stone down maybe on something like the Mareep that's here on the bench, attached to the active, and go with Sprint C4, new cards. Yeah, I really like the start from Ethan, the double energy on the Zeb Strikes, uh on the Zeb Strika. So saying maybe I will actually take this knockout on the Sneasel with the Zeb Strika. Floatstone on the Mareep, which is one of the strongest pre-evolutions, I think, in Gym Leader Challenge format with its fluffy pillow ability. Yeah, put you right to sleep. Once during your turn, if this Pokemon is active, you may leave your opponent's active Pokemon asleep. Incredibly strong and can really just buy you a turn out of nowhere. And you can also go with the fluffy pillow, retreat into something else, attack for a little bit of damage to try to set up two hit KOs and buy yourself some time. And this is really cool. The Hisuian Heavy Ball. We've seen this card multiple times on stream. What a great card for Gym Leader Challenge format. A singleton format where you can only play one of each card except basic energy in your deck. Great for searching out any sort of basic you might have in the prizes. Ethan using it as kind of a easy way to just prize check. Yeah. yeah. And is just taking some notes. These are my prizes. Uh, I can actually just flip those over. I don't think there are any basic Pokemon in these prizes. Yeah, he's not even concealing it from Matthew. <laughs> no. Nope. Matthew yep. just <laughs> can very easily probably see what Ethan's writing down right now. Oh, yeah. Yep, yep. Here are the prizes, and uh, this is what they are, and I know that they're all there. So if I need to wonder if anything's prized, it is here in my little notepad. So Hisuian Heavy Ball, I don't even know if there, is there a basic Pokemon here? Doesn't look like it, so Hisuian Heavy Ball will just get discarded and the prizes will now be shuffled. There you go. And the Hisuian Heavy Ball to the discard pile since it did fail to search. And Zeb Strika poised to take this knockout. I do love that the Floatstone has been found for the Mareep. Putting a free retreat tool card onto the Mareep is really big because it's going to allow it to, to Dynamotor. However, Ethan's four-card hand is quite bad. Oh, takes the Gloria off yes. of the prizes. That is pretty good because you can Gloria next turn, go get Electabuzz. He's got a lightning, uh, a uh, special energy in hand, got the rainbow energy in hand. And then you can just dump the hand with Sprint and move on from there. I think that's the hope. You got to hope that the Zeb Striker does not go down. The that Hoopa is true. has a darkness energy on it, does base 90 damage. If Matthew is able to find either the Dark Claw or a Muscle Band, yep. then the Zeb Striker goes down, and that would leave Ethan kind of up the river without a paddle. Yeah, we would be yes. in a tough spot. That, relying on the top deck. That would not be very good at all. And Matthew's going to try to set up his consistency engine. Ethan got the Zip Striker set up. Now Matthew's setting up his own stage one Pokemon to draw cards. Lipard with the trade ability. You must discard a card from your hand in order to use this ability. And then once during your turn, you may draw two cards. Not a fantastic hand no. here, actually, from Matthew taking a look. Really relying on these two. Let's see what we get. Discarding the Tool Scrapper, drawing two cards. Coughing, 
and Dark Patch. Okay, Coughing's not bad. And that actually would really slow Ethan down a good bit in this spot. But I don't think Matthew can retreat this active without attaching energy so he can't see an ascension. Yeah, it is kind of stuck there right now. Unless there's, is there's a darkness energy in the discard pile, you could dark patch and yeah, retreat. Yeah, I don't think so, though. Could no. have traded away the darkness energy, but Matthew had no way to know that he was going to draw dark patch. I think I like just retreating into the Hoopa Taking and then potentially dark patch. You need to you need to save the Lipard. The Lipard is the Definitely. only thing you've got to help you draw out of this really dud-looking hand right now. So you got to keep that. Actually, with the Devoured Field, only 10 damage shy of a potential knockout on this Zeb Stryka. Ethan draws a card for turn. Was that a Sycamore? I couldn't quite Let's tell. See. It looked like maybe a supporter. Going to attach a rainbow to the Reggie Alecki. So maybe it wasn't a Gloria off the prizes, or Ethan doesn't want to go with it for this turn. Yeah, just going to sprint it away. Look for a better supporter. There we go. Big sprints. Oh, well, it was a research. And actually, it's a research. Okay. Yes, yeah, so research to draw seven cards. He, like, kind of tapped the Zebstrike, so it was a little confusing. But, yeah, it looks like it was a research. It sycamore was. There. Sycamore. Excuse us. You know, there's so many discard draw sevens here. <laughs> sycamore. Yes. Sycamore. Uh -huh. Yes, Ethan opting for the Sycamore choice, the holographic one. Nice little promo art. And finds a grass energy. The grass energy is played in this deck to help power up the amazing Raikou with its amazing shot attack. The Thunder Mountain. Uh, the, that's what it's called, right? That I always Stormy think, Mountain? That's it. Stormy Mountain. Thunder Mountain Prism Star. <laughs> yeah, my, yeah. I still, my brain, bro, is programmed. This peeker on player over I, here. <laughs> is pro, it is programmed. The Stormy Mountain can search out a basic lightning Pokemon and Ethan going to grab the Tynamo. As soon as these Dynamotor pals get evolved, Ethan's going to be able to start accelerating energy from the discard pile onto his bench Pokemon. And really smart from Ethan to try to set up these evolution Pokemon over getting something like Amazing Raikou in play. It doesn't do you any good to put Raikou down right no. now. You've already attached energy for turn, so that wouldn't be helpful at all. Get these evolution Pokemon in place so that you can start to Dynamotor in the future turns. Fluffy Pillow will put the Hoopa to sleep. Not paralyzed, but to sleep. And it's just a pass. Yeah, I actually really like this turn from Ethan. You don't really want to use the Zeb Strikers. And it's a Tails on the flip as well, so stays asleep. Yeah, you don't really want to use this Zeb Strikers head bolt again. I mean, what, to do 60 damage to a Hoopa with 120 hit points? Right. It's not really any point in doing that. In fact, the Zeb Strika is the lifeblood of this deck. You really want to keep that Zeb Strika alive and well so it can continue to sprint through the deck and draw you more cards. It helps to accelerate those lightning energy to the discard pile too, so that you can dynamotor them into play. You can't team it. Oh, he's oh, trading. Trail. I was gonna say, hold up. Yeah, no, no, no it's cool. All right. Yeah, it's sometimes hard to hard to tell. Yeah, we don't get the, to hear what the players are saying. Right? With the gestures, yep. Yeah, like, oh, not a teammates. Bridget is actually a fantastic card for really Matthew good. to find. Matthew's going to be able to go into his deck and find three basic Pokemon. Looks like we're grabbing Guzzlord and Spiritomb. Maybe like Zerua or something like that here would be solid. I do love Zerua. Zorark is such is prized. a <laughs> good card. Yeah, nope. there it is. Just yes, kidding. actually. Sorry. Uh, the Zerua. We've got the Paralyzing Gaze Zerua, not the Ascension Zerua. Those are both quality Zeruas to choose from. The Paralyzing Gaze Zerua at one point has made itself up to like a 10 to $20 card. It was quite expensive at one point, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> because it was uh, used in every single expanded uh, Zorark GX deck. Yes. That's right. It did eventually get reprinted in like a league battle deck or something like that. Uh -huh. So it drove the price down just a little bit. But even still, I mean, it's probably a little up there because it is one of the Zeruas people do go for in GLC. There is, of course, two great options between this one and Ascension, like you mentioned. And Matthew able to fill up the board. That is huge for Matthew. And both of these players just being able to take a turn to kind of establish their boards and wrestle for position in this match. It's not just a total uh, slugfest out here. And that's sure. something that I really appreciate about the format is the pace of the games. You have these tempo turns where it is, it doesn't just mean that if you're passing that you've lost. 
Yeah, not even close. Yeah. Matthew didn't attach an energy for turn. I'm pretty sure there's a twin energy in hand, and getting that down on Guzzlord is pretty good. If you can threaten a red banquet next turn by attaching Dark Patch and then next turn Dark Patch, uh, attach for turn, I should say. Yeah. That's pretty strong. Ethan is going to attach a grass energy to the Tapu Koko and go with a big Colrus, and this is why I think Colrus is the best draw supporter in the format. All of these decks love to have large bench sizes. They need so many support Pokemon. They need to be establishing multiple different attackers, and so in this instance, Colrus is going to yield Ethan Heggie nine cards yeah listen chip you're preaching to the choir here i am a huge colrus <laughs> stan i think the colrus is absolutely disgusting one of my favorite supporters of all time from the plasma storm set yeah i'm kind of surprised draw up to the amount of pokemon in play uh on the benches so that's a shuffle draw nine from yeah. ethan this turn pretty nuts Matthew did flip tails on the Hoopa once again, so it is still snoozing over there. And Ethan is grabbing the electric, and he's got a grass energy that he attached for turn to the Tapu Koko. Are we going to see a flying flip here? That's a blast from the past. Yes, flying flip is a really good attack in this lightning deck. Tapu Koko can do 20 damage to all of the opponent's Pokemon, and then you can easily finish off Pokemon that you've softened up with the Reggie Lecky's Terra Spark attack, which does 40 damage to two of your opponent's bench Pokemon. So the Lightning deck is, for the most part, really low to the ground. You are going to be softening things up. You're going to be setting up KOs. There is only one attacker in the deck that does... A significant amount of damage straight up and it's the electivire we do see ethan kind of prepping that electabuzz on the bench so that he can threaten an electrified bolt if he has to. oh and hoopa is snoozing here taking another turn of sleep hoopa really kind of slacking in this one it seems matthew does top deck the town map flip those prize cards face up Nothing too bad here. The Dark Claw, Double Colorless Energy, Cynthia, all cards you don't mind grabbing at very specific times, which is why Town Map has become so solid in GLC recently. Oh, yeah. I love this card. It is one of my favorite cards in the format. You just get to play with your prize cards face up for the rest of the game. Who doesn't love that? I mean, I'm a, I'm a man who loves taking a peek, bro. Let's just, uh, you know, if we're playing a casual tabletop game, me and my buddies. Take a little peek. See. And, uh, you know, I'm dead drawn. I might take a little peek at my top deck and see about conceding, you know, in, in, in a casual setting. Of course, sure. a casual setting. Sure. Uh, but taking a little peek at your prize cards, man, feels good. And Tau Map allows you to do it legally <laughs> <laughs> so what ethan's done with the flying flip here as well is if matthew does not find some evolutions here if he doesn't find zoark wheezing or even um you know that spear tomb's already got 30 damage on it what ethan is able to do next turn is potentially terra spark with the regieleki on the bench which deals 40 damage to two benched pokemon so we could see ethan take a three prize turn next turn matthew off of this in is really hoping to find some evolutions yes needs to get these low hp pokemon out of harm's way and that's just something the lightning deck does so well i mean it's scary the spear tomb now has three damage counters on it right, right. But if it puts more damage counters on it, it is even more in range for another flying flip to come back and finish it off. So this is something that Matthew needs to be thinking about. You know, what are the HP totals on my Pokemon? I have fully filled my bench. That is, you know, something that's pretty neat about uh, the Bridget's. But also that's really good for Ethan. Stand in Zoark. Saving the day here. Finally gonna wake up that Hoopa. <laughs> And Tapu Koko does go down. Ethan, right away using the fluffy pillow, it looks like, takes a prize card, uh, or Matthew takes a prize card, but looks like it was the float stone was the choice. And fluffy pillow will put the Zoark to sleep. And Ethan evolves the Electabuzz into the Electivire, has that character rare Flaffy ready to get some energies back. And the Electivire ready to go here can take a KO on Zoark pretty easily. Yeah, this is a really nicely developed board from Ethan. He's got the Terra Spark. I love 
the Terra Spark here, Speed Lightning Energy onto the Regilecki. You've got a basic Lightning Energy in the discard pile. You can Dynamotor and Energy onto the Regilecki and swing for that 120 damage and 40 damage to two of your opponent's benched Pokemon. That Spirit Tomb is a goner. And the coughing might go too. Yeah, Ethan can take three prizes this turn and go down to just two remaining. Two prizes versus five. Definitely going to favor one player over the other. And Ethan's board wouldn't even be that bad by any means because he's still got Substrike is set up. He's still got Electivire ready to get some energy cards potentially from a Dynamotor. I don't know that Ethan has that many Lightnings in the discard pile. Does have Zipstrika with our energy kind of locked up on it, which is a little annoying. I wonder if Ethan could have like maybe sent that up this turn, try to get that energy in the discard pile. I think that that actually would have been uh, would have been the optimal yeah, pivot here to retreat the Zipstrika, get that Lightning energy into the discard pile, to just have the option to Dynamoter it later on in the match. He's Ethan sprinting. Is gonna sprint. We find the Professor's letter and a Guzma. Ooh, and Guzma could be really nice here. Ethan, if he had, like, a damage modifier like Muscle Band or Fury Belt, could KO Guzzlord, potentially, with the Reggie Alecki. And Guzzlord is one of the biggest threats in the format and one of the biggest threats in Matthew's deck in general. Also, something else I didn't even—we hadn't even talked about this yet— Ethan, if he takes three prizes this turn, he's going to skip B-String. All together. So actually, I'm not, I'm not even worried about the Yeah, Guzzlord that's true. That's true. Because Ethan can completely play around that B-String turn. B-String has two turns that it can be played. The three prize turn and the four prize turn if your opponent is taking just one prize card at a time. But if your opponent is taking three prizes, this is a huge swing from Ethan. And Matthew is getting really punished for putting the Spear Tomb down, really punished for putting the Coughing down, and not finding evolution an evolution for that Coughing instantly. Terra Spark discarding all of those energies, and Ethan will take three prizes. And now Guzzlord is pretty much gonna be useless it can still be powered up with dark patch plus raihan plus twin energy that is a lot more to set up though than just playing the b string that was a brutal turn from ethan using the tapu coco promo in combination with reggie lecky to math some things out perfectly on matthew's side of the board to take a sweeping Board states demolishing three prizes with the Regilecki. Now, Matthew is left to try and figure out how to start picking up the pieces. Does go with trade. Guzma was the draw, so a Hoopa can get in there. Target down maybe something like the Zebstrika, maybe something like one of the Dynamotor Pokemon. Take that pivot of the Floatstone out of play. Has those options available. But Matthew's board is just nowhere near as established as Ethan's is. Ethan is at minimum going to get one Dynamoter next turn, probably two, unless Matthew targets one of those Pokemon down. Ethan is in a great spot. He's got the Floatstone for the active and an energy for the Guzzlord. I mean, earlier we had, a, I think, a missed opportunity to to drop the twin energy onto the Guzzlord. I think so. And I think that Matthew is actually paying the price for that. With a Dark Patch in the hand and an energy attachment from turn, this Guzzlord could get powered up regardless, right? If that twin energy had maybe just made its way onto the Guzzlord that turn. I think the twin energy did end up going for the Zoroark and powered right. up that Mind Jack that one turn. But... It is, uh, it's really tough because the Guzzlord is nearly, you know, capable of getting powered up this turn. Just one card short. And Matthew is going to come up a little short of the damage necessary to get this KO here. Dealing 100 damage with Assault Gate thanks to that Fighting Fury Belt. The Reggie Lucky had 10 on it from a Rainbow earlier on. And Ethan is hanging on with just 10 HP remaining on the active timer ball. We see one flip of a heads. Second coin is a heads as well. Feels good to be Ethan Heggy right now. Definitely. Double heads on timer ball. Timer ball is definitely a divisive card in the gym leader challenge community with some players saying that it is a blank card and never flips heads. And then other players swearing by, you know, 75% of the time it's going to net you an evolution Pokemon for no cost, right? So you don't have to discard anything or anything like that. I personally am a big timer ball stand. I mean, you miss all the shots you don't take, right? <laughs> 
Yes, it is. Uh, I mean, search cards are good. Yep. So even though it's a flip, it's really powerful in certain situations. Obviously, in this instance, I think Ethan probably feels a little sad to have wasted a double heads. Yes. <laughs> Has all his evolution set up, isn't playing an Electros or an Ampharos in the deck, so none of those guys coming into play. Special Charge can put two special energies back, one of those being Speed Lightning, one of my favorite energy cards, since, you, you know, you get to attach one energy card for turn, and when it's Speed Lightning, you just get to do a little extra with the draw of two I cards. do like this from Ethan. Finally, uh, utilizing the switch to get the uh, Zeb Striker into the active to get that Lightning Energy off of the Zeb Striker. Really no reason for it to be there anymore. Once you get it to the discard pile, you can start using your Dynamotor abilities to accelerate the Lightning Energy from the discard pile to your bench Pokemon to charge up various other attackers. And Ethan has to figure out how he's going to continue to put pressure on to take these final two prizes. Uh, the Regulecki is incredibly powerful, but it does require that you discard all Lightning Energy attached to it in order to use its Terra Spark attack. So it is now completely reset and Ethan's going to need to charge it back up. But fortunately, with both Electric and the Flaffy in play, it is possible to do so. Ethan will... And this is a little bit of an interesting thing from Ethan, right? Because since Ethan didn't actually retreat oh. that basic Lightning the turn previous, he is now having to waste a bunch of supporter cards with that sprint in order to get the Lightning into the discard pile to double Dynamotor onto the Regulecki again. Ethan drew the Raihan. I really thought that's what we were going to see here. Raihan on to the Raikou and go for the amazing shot, but is going with the Cynthia and you Caitlyn instead. You cannot Raihan this turn because no knockout was taken. Oh, that's right. Yeah, I did one, 100, not quite. Did not yes. take out the Regielecki. Yep, so we've got Cynthia and Caitlyn can Drawing recover three. a supporter from the discard pile, which is nice to help and recoup those supporters that we just we just ditched with the sprint ability. Dynamotor actually getting the two lightning energy onto the Electivire, and then with the Aurora energy in oh, hand, Ethan is going to be able to power up a fully powered electrified bolt. This is my favorite attacker in the lightning deck. When I say I am a fan of the lightning deck, it is because of this guy right here. 100 and 80 damage for just three energy. Electivire is one of the strongest attackers as a stage one in the format. It feels like every type kind of has that one Pokemon that's their main heavy beat stick Pokemon as the stage one attacker. And for Lightning, it is without a doubt Electivire. Matthew Cecil here left with very little options. If he can power up Guzzlord and find a Muscle Band, he can take a KO on Electivire, taking two prizes. But Ethan is really setting up here to win this game. Only one prize card remaining. Yeah, it's a very dominant board state from Ethan. He was able to set up perfectly, rely on Zeb Stryka's sprint ability to churn through the deck, had the Hisuian heavy ball to check the prizes early on. There was nothing prized, had every, well, nothing of vast importance early on prized, was able to get this board uh, really looking super clean. We have got all the major players here, both Dynamotor users, the Electric or the Electros and the Flaffy. What's really funny uh, about these two Pokemon, I mean, not only are they kind of twins in that they both have Dynamotor, they both have the same exact stats, right? 90 hit points, the Electro Ball attack, which does 50 damage, the Fighting Weakness, the Retreat cost of two. They're both stage ones, but then one step further, they are not only both stage ones, they are both evolving stage ones that uh, evolve into stage two Pokemon That's right. that are also not featured in this deck. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, Flaffy and... Flaffy and Electric, kind of like, a, you know, brother from another mother. Different breeds of Pokemon, but very similar, and uh, you could call them twins almost. Look at these guys, back to back. Yeah, love these cards. Electric was the first deck that I played in the Pokemon TCG when I started playing 10 years ago, and getting to see these strategies live on in Gym Leader Challenge format is incredibly satisfying for me as a longtime player. Oh, and this feels really unfortunate for Matthew. It's the only play he's got available. It's going to be a Guzma and a hope that it sticks. Bring up the Raikou Mountain Munch. Does discard a counter energy, 
but does Ethan have a way to switch? It is the escape rope, and Electivire comes back to the active and takes an easy KO on Lipard. Ethan winning in dominating fashion and moves to 5-0. and I love nothing more than seeing my lightning deck at 5-0 and here at the Gym Leader Challenge Tournament. Man, I love lightning. It is my favorite type in the Pokemon at TCG by far. And I think that the deck is so fun to watch in action. Something about Gym Leader Challenge format, you really get to kind of root for your favorite team because of the the kind of allegiance to various types that you have to follow when playing a deck in the format. Absolutely. That's what I mean, that's why it's the gym leader challenge. You're trying to become the leader of that gym. You're taking on other players, proving that your type is the dominant one and that you are the best player with it. And Ethan put on a pretty dang good show with the lightning deck. Definitely impressive in Ethan's hands. I look forward to getting Ethan back here to talk about his routes to 5-0. I've kind of heard him uh heard him talking to me between rounds saying that the deck was working like a dream and was totally busted so look forward to hearing a little bit more about uh ethan's tournament performance so far we'll be right back with ethan heggy in just a moment I'm joined here by Ethan Hegster Heggy. This is a it's kind of weird, man. We're like we're not casting a regionals together. You're out here playing. What's going on, man? How you feel being five and zero? It's weird. This is my uh, first time playing GLC, so I'm <laughs> uh, I'm enjoying the ride. I'm enjoying the lightning ride. Uh, I'm, it's it's great. It's a different experience. The uh, Andrew Andrew described it really well yesterday. That there's so many micro decisions, and the route is a lot more complex than you see with a lot of stuff in standard. You're making micro decisions every turn. You're figuring out what line is best. And I'm liking it a lot about GLC and uh, pretty comfortable now, right? 5 0 should be locked, so I'm feeling good. Yeah, feeling good. Two more rounds remaining. Should be able to try to ID twice. I would imagine 5 0 2 definitely going to be locked for top eight. So you chose to play Lightning. Obviously, you were talking about how Andrew helped you out. We talked about that a little bit during your game as well. What gravitated you towards Lightning as someone who had not really played much of the format? Why is this the deck you chose of all the different types? So I was on control to play for a while, and then I uh, kind of had the realization that it would be pretty hard to play control in a field that you're not as familiar with, whatever the cards do. And uh, I kind of just went back to the drawing board last night of what do I want to play. And uh, someone gave me an opportunity and said, hey, I've got an extra lightning deck. I've got an opportunity for you to play that. Uh, and as I was looking through it more, I went back and uh, saw that Andrew played this lightning deck to uh, win a side event at a regional championships. Uh, to be able to take that down, and specifically the fact that you utilize so many of the different special energy, which are so powerful, more so in a singleton format, where it's just a one-of card, uh, just allows you to make these these routes and these plays where you're either going for spread plays, or you're going for heavy hitting, or you're hitting with Electrovire. Right. I think just the fact that I, I read Electrovire, I sat down, I looked at this card, and I was like, okay, this card's broken, I have to play it this weekend. Yeah, Electrovire, so, so good. We are talking about how so many of these types have just like a big beat stick stage one that you get a couple energies on it, and it's gonna swing for a bunch, and your opponent's gotta deal with it really quickly. Uh, we saw a really cool play from you in that game. Your opponent had an Ultra Beast on the bench, the Guzzlord, and you were able to spread damage with Tapu Koko, and then Terra Spark to take Take three prizes in one turn, totally skipping the B string. Is that something you were setting up from the beginning, or is it? Did it kind of just work out like that? Uh, when Spirit Tomb came down, I felt like a lot more confident at that point. I didn't know if the I'm trying to remember. I didn't know if it was going to be able to get out of play or evolve at right. that point. So I was kind of banking off the fact that um, the the sleep flips definitely helped to slow things down a lot. Sure, I was able to just sure. make that route. Uh, but getting, Beast Ring is like one of those cards that's like so scary. The fact that I also had knowledge that I think Town Map in a sense actually helped me in that case because knowing that Double Cullis was prized made me go to the board saying, okay, if he's playing Double Cullis, maybe there's Double Turbo there too or uh, Twin Energy at that right, point. Right. Uh, but even then, I'm like, I feel pretty confident that if I skip Beast Ring, I shouldn't have to worry about Guzzlord. Plus Dark Claw as well was prized. Right. So there'd be another damage mod to be able to knock out the Electrovire. But uh, I mean, we've seen this, like, I, I, I'm fond memories of playing Buzzwool GX and skipping B-String turns or Sledgehammer turns, so uh, kind of getting a, an old uh, splash of those memories is great. <laughs> I enjoyed it. So you've got a bunch of different attackers in this deck, obviously. You talked about the Electivire. Amazing Raikou is obviously super strong. We saw you utilizing the Reggie Alecki. You've got so much going on here. So far, being at 5-0, and who's been the star of the show for you today? Who do you think's taking the most prizes for you, or who's been the, the guy you've leaned on the most so far? Electrovirus hard carried so far. That <laughs> card is that card is ridiculous. Um, Coco is very very good. 
uh, at setting into plays, which which ties into another mod that I've used a lot, which is Zapdos. Zapdos just has a lot of really strong burst potential coming out on turn one. Uh, and even in a position where you're starting the game off, Tapu mm -hmm. Koko, most people, oh, if you're going second, Tapu Koko is good. But in most cases, like going first, Koko is a lot better into your second turn. Because even if your hand is not viable, like you saw there, turn one, by like attaching lightning to Blitzel or a Pokemon with one retreat, I give myself the option next turn that, oh, I can play a, a draw supporter, dig through the deck, and one of my like five outs that I have to find Zapdos is a knockout on pretty much most Pokemon that are not fully evolved at a ba or at a basic form at that point. So it's just it's just strong. Zapdos is good, and then having two having access to two Dynamotor Pokemon For is sure. really what like sets those plays apart. Uh, and then like uh, I mean, trainer wise as well, like there's so many good cards, but the fact that like teammates can just grab you specific pieces every time. Like my my popular combo I have is to go teammates for. If I have the energy, a way to discard the energy and a special energy. Dynamotor, discard the energy, special energy on, and then you find Electrovire, and it just it all goes hand in hand. And he's there. He's all set up, ready to there go, swinging go. for 180. Really tough to stop, and it might be tough to stop Ethan Hegster Heggy today. I think the other 5-0 player at this point, Grant Manley. How do you feel about that control matchup? You got any game plan going into that? Uh, that matchup is very bad. Uh, control, <laughs> control is one of those decks that... If you're Grant Manley or Azul or someone who's very, very solid, has experience, I mean, I mean, Grant got second place at a regional championship playing Pidgey. He's experienced, knows how to play pretty much every deck, but Control is a forte for sure. Yeah. You kind of run into a situation where the only way Control really loses games from lock is two ways. Either one, if they do not set up their board, and two, if they drop the combo somehow. The second option doesn't seem very likely because it's Grant we're talking about. He's going to have everything on down pat, locked, and perfect. Um, but the first one is a it's possible having a uh, going second and getting Zapdos is potential but it's really going to come down to like the first three turns so uh, the only reason real re way I can do is like pop off get every single Dynamotor Pokemon in play and then try to go for a Raikou attack or a Regieleki attack uh, the only problem is there is the Shining Arceus in the deck and yep. Shining Arceus prevents things so he could also have a crazy start where he gets the, the capture energy to find the Shining Arceus and just retreat into it and my deck is not really built to dig for Lysander. It can dig for Lysander. You have such like you have Electrode, but the, the main thing is just like pick your three turns to set up and then start swinging. So it's scary, but... Uh... Yeah, I'm, I'm hoping to hoping to dodge Grant. Like to be completely frank, like that. It just, <laughs> no, I, I know, totally get it. Yeah, it does seem like it'll be a tough matchup, but you, I'm sure, can find a way to make it happen. Sounds like you've already been thinking about it. So, congratulations on getting to five zero, Ethan. Really cool to you know after we've worked together so much yeah, at EUIC yeah. at the past couple of regionals, you know now getting to cast one of your games, super cool. And we're looking forward to seeing more from you in top eight. Congratulations, and don't go anywhere, guys. We'll be back very soon with round number six. Just two rounds remaining. Players really fighting to lock up a top eight spot don't go anywhere we'll be back very soon welcome back to round six of the full grip games 2.5k gym leader challenge astral radiance event trainer chip richie here joined as always by andrew mahone the leader of the tricky gym himself and we're getting things underway with Benjamin Peacock on the left, playing a water spread deck. Little different from the normal water deck we are used to seeing. It's got Amazing Kyogre, the Shining Volcanian. We see that Articuno from Roaring Skies with its Delta Plus Ancient Trait drawing extra prizes. And then over on the right, we've got Trevor Tankman Redding, who's decided to change things up a little bit. Trevor did get second place at the last GLC tournament with his attacking colorless deck. Has kind of been known as the colorless gym leader when it comes to attacking colorless, that is. But is mixing it up here. As we can see with the Shining Genesect active, he is playing a grass deck. Now, I talked to Trevor before this event, and Trevor said, yeah, I'm just going to go with grass. Grass is... One of the most powerful decks. He's like, yeah, I'm just going to net deck Mike Gibbs is what he said. Yeah, Mike <laughs> Gibbs uh, was able to win the Fusion Strike Gym Leader Challenge event with Grass. Bubbled out of the Brilliant Stars Gym Leader Challenge event with Grass. And now, uh, yeah, now is... Uh, is still playing grass for today's event. Mike Gibbs loves the grass deck. Trevor also knows the power of the grass deck and has been one of the early adopters of Gym Leader Challenge formats. Trevor has uh, has top cut 
many of our Gym Leader Challenge yes. events that we have held here at Full Grip and actually is probably the winningest player across either of the events, having won one of our standard events and has finished in the finals of one of our Gym Leader Challenge events. So definitely a player to look out for on the stage. Yeah, Trevor has maybe played more GLC than anyone, maybe even more than you, Andrew. He plays this format a bunch. Yes, when it comes to Gym Leader Challenge format, Trevor is a player whose opinion I respect very, very highly because of how much time he has put into this format, and he's got a great mind for it as well because of his deck building skills. He is somebody who is able to take the attacking colorless archetype from a deck that not a lot of players were looking at to a deck that is very well respected in the Gym Leader Challenge community. And he was able to make some really, uh, I think some really creative deck decisions to be able to get that deck to work well. I mean, the Snorlax that everybody plays, the not the mm -hmm. Gormandize one, but the Collapse one. Yes. That's all because of Trevor. Right? Yeah. And it's literally a lot of uh, the attacking colorless deck lists. If they're playing Fire Energy and like a Welder, it's probably because of Trevor. <laughs> right. He has pioneered that archetype from the ground up and has, uh, and has really created something special with that attacking colorless archetype. Now, with Grass... He said that he likes this grass deck because he feels like it has a good shot against control. He knew Grant Manley was going to be here. <laughs> he knows that if he needs to win, he needs to be able to beat Grant. Yeah, Grant, without a doubt, was going to be playing control at this event. We saw just how dominant that deck was in round number four. I was actually sitting next to Grant at dinner last night, and I just asked him just to confirm, like, hey, Grant, are you playing? I assume you're playing control tomorrow, right? And he looked at me, and he gave a big, happy grin. He said, <laughs> yes, I am, and everyone knows it, and there's nothing they can do to stop it. <laughs> there's no nothing they can do to stop it. <laughs> oh, so we know gosh. Grant is confident in his play for this tournament. Benjamin playing one of the new cards from Astro Radiance in the deck right now. Obviously has that Hisuian Basculin on the bench, but is right now playing that Irida, which we saw quite a few times yesterday from the Mike Gibbs deck with the Palkia V-Star. Pretty solid in a water deck for GLC, though. Yeah, there are some really powerful options for water decks from Astral Radiance. The new Hisuian Basculin. I think I heard Mike Pramawat say it while we were cubing the other night. Uh, playing some cards that this might be the best call for family Pokemon ever printed. It has to be, right? Yes. It uses it for free. It is a free attack, and you can just retreat anybody into the Hisuian Basculin yep. and go get two Pokemon straight to the bench. And this is something that water decks, you know, it's unique to water decks in Gym Leader Challenge is that they have not just one, but two incredible set up Pokemon that attack for free. Both the Hisuian Basculin with its gather the crew attack and Alolan Vulpix with its beacon attack. And this is really solid for Benjamin. Has two energies ready to go on the Articuno. Can start going for some KOs. Uses the Whirlpool Suction from the Fione, forcing a Pokemon to the active spot, and now gets to gather the crew, try to set this board up a little bit more. Yeah, what kind of crew you think we're going to gather here? That is not a good angle of the deck right there. <laughs> <laughs> what Can't see much there. No, no, yeah, not. Benjamin could definitely try to eye up some of the support Pokemon here. Does play Frostmoth from Shining Fates, of course, with the energy acceleration option there. Also playing Sobble, Drizzile, and Intellion to absolutely no one's surprise. And also plays another stage two in this deck, something we haven't seen that much of in GLC, and that is Greninja. Yo. And there are many strong Greninja cards from over the last few years. The one that Benjamin is choosing to play is the Greninja from X and Y base set kind of complementing the spread package that he's going for with this Water Shuriken ability, allowing you to discard a Water Energy and then place three damage counters on one of your opponent's Pokemon. Water is one of the Gym Leader Challenge archetypes where it feels like 
There are like 150 really good cards that you could play in this deck. There are so many different ways to play it. We saw a water deck already on stream, and it was focusing on using big hydro pump attacks from Chris from Iceland. And now we've got a totally different style of water deck with various spread attackers the amazing kyogre and holy moly we have got an explosive turn from trevor there's wow. a rare candy rillaboom and grottle in the active position the torterra line was a huge boost for this grass type deck with the release of torterra and grottle from brilliant stars that sun drenched shell ability allowing you to search your deck for a grass pokemon and put it into your hand we saw this similar type of ability in round one kevin baxter playing the dragon deck with the dragon call gabite talked about how useful those types of abilities are and grass actually has several different pokemon that can use an ability like this and razor leaf is actually getting in there hisuian basculin's only got 50 hp Razor Leaf takes a KO. Okay, Grottle. I didn't know you had it in you. <laughs> you know, I have. Uh, I don't know that I've ever seen a KO taken with a Grottle. So that's exciting. And something that you see all the time in Gym Leader Challenge format, it was, what, last round that we saw Ethan take a knockout with Zeb Stryka with its head bolt attack. And now Grottle getting in there with Razor Leaf. You know, Pokemon that might have... Uh, been just understood as support pokemon can also deal some damage in a pinch and when you're playing gym leader challenge formats you need to be able to fully realize all of the different options that your deck has available to you with the grottle having a retreat cost of three it was not going to be easily moving from the active spots and Trevor saw the line, took an easy knockout on the Hisui and Basculin. This must be a pretty awkward hand from Benjamin. I assume that Rimmeraid must be in the prizes because Octillery just got grabbed off Evolution Incense. And Gather the Crew did not get Rimmeraid as a member of the crew. And also, Evolution Incense could have gone and grabbed Frogadier. And that is not what Benjamin grabbed. So, is Frogadier in the prizes as well here? Yeah, could have some... Pretty gnarly prizes. This Articuno is getting built up, though. And you know what? If Benjamin is able to flip some amount of heads, yeah. two, you know, two heads, and uh, yeah. we could have some really explosive action. There we go. Try Edge. Here's flip number one. It's a Tails. Needs, Needs both of two. these to be heads. Is a heads. heads. One more. That's a head. Wow. Try Edge takes the KO. Delta Plus will award Benjamin one extra prize card. What a flip right there. And all of a sudden, Benjamin is way out in front, and Tankman doesn't have anything. Wow. With the game on the line, Articuno coming in clutch. It does 20 damage plus 40 more damage for each heads you flip. You get to flip three coins, and it's Delta Plus traits giving you that extra prize card whenever you take a prize card peonia is a really interesting card for this grass deck to play i don't think that i've seen a lot of peonia seeing play in the grass type decks and trevor's got a little bit of like a you know an awkward hand it's not actually drawing a lot of cards right now uh just has rillaboom set up and genesect to deal some damage but if my math is correct i think that this shining genesect is only dealing 120 damage with it or 110 damage yeah. with its gaia blaster attack so not actually threatening a knockout on this articuno which kind of leaves the door open for benjamin to be able to take another significant double prize knockout did trevor attach yet this turn he is not. I don't know that there's an energy in his yeah, hand. Yeah, I think he does have energy. I think he must have seen Ah, him. thank and you. And also the Fighting Fury Belt will boost the damage by 10, there so Gaia go. Blaster is getting there. There we go. Did not see that Fury Belt under those grass energy. Very good. So, yes, taking out the Articuno will be fantastic for Trevor. And he is selecting what three cards. Peony is a really hard card to play. It if is you have very a, hard. If you have a low hand size. Yes. Because you're like, I don't have, like, garbage to throw back, and maybe I want all of these, you right. know? 
So very awkward to have to play out of that small hand, but does find the Roselia off the prizes. And Roselia is huge because of how strong Roserade is with its La Parfum ability, allowing you to search your deck for any card and put it in your hand. Trevor, thankfully for him, was able to piece together a KO here, tie the game back up, and Benjamin does not have really that much set up. We see an Aqua Patch in hand. That can bring an energy back. Maybe if Benjamin has like a Raihan, could pull off an attack with the Shining Volcanian here. Yes, Aqua Patch. It's funny, you know, Dark Patch, Metal Saucer, two of the most powerful item cards in the history of the Pokemon TCG. Aqua Patch? Didn't really see a lot of love. Yeah, it was kind of okay. Played in a couple of decks back when it was standard legal. And then even here in GLC, it's not a card that most water decks choose to play <laughs> just because you have so much other energy acceleration. You've got Frostmoth and Blastoise usually. Yes, it's hilarious because the metal deck, oh, it's it's definitely oh. playing Metal Saucer. Yeah, are we in uh, are we in bubble territory here? Uh, there is a research in that hand now. Okay. I, I see a research in Benjamin's hand, definitely. So he's got, yeah, that, that's a research. And Verse Seeker and Quick Ball. I mean, there's there's stuff going on. Yeah, Quick Ball. Okay, yeah, yeah, we're, we're cruising. So Quick Ball is going to be played, looking through the deck for a basic Pokemon. I'm getting word in the chat that maybe, uh, maybe Trevor did not fully shuffle the deck after Rillaboom, so... Um, yeah, let's make sure that Trevor got a good deck shuffle in there. His deck should be random right now, so an extra deck shuffle shouldn't Can't hurt anything, yeah. Shouldn't really matter. Uh let's just make sure let's just make sure the deck is randomized. Just another extra shuffle or two. Yep, there's been no additional stuff. So that could have just, you know, escaped Trevor's mind. Uh so let's just make sure that that deck gets a good shuffle. I'm sure that that was unintentional as Trevor was getting ready to play uh Peonia. Yeah. Definitely. Just trying to move quickly so, here. Thank you, chat, for helping to keep the game state preserved. Wonderful. And then uh, can offer a cut to Benjamin if he would like. So it looks like Fione being grabbed. Research being played. Seven fresh cards coming for Benjamin. Really hoping to establish this board a little bit further. Still kind of in a little bit of a precarious situation, just doesn't have quite the setup that Trevor's got right now. Even though Trevor's setup is not that great, he's at least putting on pressure with Genesect. Yes, and I mean, Rillaboom is kind of the, uh, it's just the gift that keeps on giving, right? It's the voltage beat ability going to allow you to continue pacing through the game and accelerating energy onto your attackers. It's something that is really nice about this grass type deck is that it's relatively low maintenance in that once you get Rillaboom into play, you can just put that energy into play to continue attacking. And it's one of the reasons that Trevor really likes the grass deck heading into this tournament and potentially to play against control because Rillaboom's voltage beat ability helps you to just flood the board with energy to the point that yeah. a control deck can't bring up an irrelevant Pokemon. Right. It is a close matchup without a doubt, and definitely one. I mean, we saw Mike Gibbs defeat both Grant Manley and Azul, two of the best players in the world. So it's definitely one that Grass can win, and maybe is even maybe uh, favored for Grass. Favored, I know. I don't, Grant won't admit it, but I think that <laughs> I think that it might be favored. Yeah. Uh huh. So Trevor, only sitting on a couple cards in hand. I'm not quite sure if he's got anything good to follow up. The Fione on Benjamin's side did use the Whirlpool Suction ability, pops itself to the bottom of the deck, and Trevor forced to send something active. Chose to send up the Rillaboom, which does have a pretty hefty three retreat cost, and it is bubble territory, but that is a Tails. Yeah, unfortunately, Benjamin not able to get anything really under his feet right now. I'm taking a look at the list. Are there... Yeah, there are Pokemon that accelerate energy into play. There is the Frostmoth, but the Frostmoth is just not online right now. It does look like this list is opting not to play Blastoise. So just the Frostmoth line. It's a thinner energy acceleration line, Frostmoth, with, with its Ice Dance ability. That's why we're seeing cards like Rhyhon and the Aqua, Aqua Patch, Patch yeah. to try and recoup energy in other ways. So Benjamin in a little bit of a tough spot. Trevor probably doesn't 
terribly mind having a kind of sparse board considering that there is an amazing rare Kyogre on the other side of the field. So Voltage B throws two energies on to Rillaboom. I think Trevor top decked a Gloria this turn, so that at minimum isn't a bad option. Has Bird Keeper, which can get an attack off with the Genesect, and this will be really nice. Three more cards here. Looking for a little bit more setup. And finds Turfield. Turfield. So Turfield can get Roserade and search for whatever card Trevor wants out of the deck with its La Parfum ability, Le Parfum. There we go, Turfield, and I expect Trevor to use it, search the deck. We'll see which Pokemon Trevor decides to find. We see that Tisuian Heavy Ball in the, the, the deck, also a way to access the prize cards, though Trevor has knowledge of what three of those prize cards are as he put them there with the effect of Peonia. So just that last card up at the top, which he kind of has denoted at a different angle, yep. uh, just kind of a mental thing for him because he knows what those three are. But uh, that last one, he he does not. Uh, he probably knows what it is yeah, by checking his deck. Yes, now, yes, right? yes. Yeah. But uh, he has not revealed that last card to himself. But if with knowledge of his deck, he probably knows what that last card is too. So here is Roserade. Just getting a quick little reference here. It is that a Japanese nice Roserade. Japanese Roserade. Yes, yep. love it. Yeah, big fan of the silver borders over the uh, the yellow ones that we get over here. I know the Japanese cards look beautiful, Chip. Man, uh, they really look nice. <laughs> There's some beautiful reverse hollow patterns that, yeah, we just don't get here, man. And, uh, you know, the Pokemon Company International, they just bought the Millennium Print Group. So maybe, maybe they can invest into some advanced techniques. You know, I think that the yellow borders are likely here to stay since that will, that's what we've seen for years and years. But The yellow border is fine. I just, I'm talking about the reverse hollow mm, patterns. Yes, yes, if, yes. Have you seen the, the discrepancy between a Radiant... Pokemon in Japan and a Radiant Pokemon here. I have indeed. Yes, they are not is, the same. They, nope, <laughs> surely not. Surely not. Trevor is in an excellent spot here. Gets to put one card in hand and isn't even going to play it. So Benjamin should know Trevor's sitting on something really nice over there. Yeah. And Trevor will take one of the prizes he placed back with Peonia. And that's what's really cool about this card is that you can interact with your prizes in a very specific way. You can take the prize you put there earlier on in the game at a point where it'll be stronger later. Yes, it's like he's uh, just keeping these things here for later. Uh, we've got a teammates from Benjamin, and Benjamin is behind on prizes. But Trevor, you know, whether it's because of poor draws or because of uh, some heads-up play, Trevor has not actually flooded the board with weak Pokemon, yeah. right? There is nothing really here for the amazing Kyogre to be able to capitalize on. And since Benjamin does not have Frostmoth in play and has already used the Aqua Patch, there's not really a route to power up this amazing Kyogre out of nowhere right now. There is that potential in the deck, but just not left in the deck. The If Benjamin were to get a Raihan, right, to accelerate an energy from the discard pile, find counter energy and attach it to the Kyogre, and then Aqua Patch all in the same turn, it'd be possible to amazing surge. But that is not going to be in the cards. We do see counter energy coming, though. So maybe it's going to be a Shining Volcanium play. And seems like that is the case. I think it's like Dual Splash, something like that. Deals 50 damage to two Pokemon. Might not be the right name, but yeah, 50 damage to two Pokes. So can try to set up for a KO later on. Oh, dual Pump. I was so close. Yeah, let me tell you about Dual Pump, all right? <laughs> I've played this card quite a bit. Uh, there was a season where every expanded regionals I went to, I played Archies. That was it. There was never a question about what deck I was playing. I was playing Archies, and uh, there was a... <laughs> There was a, a tournament where I was playing two shiny Volcanion in my Archie's two list. Two of them. So that you could dual pump, uh, so you could dual pump uh, little Trevenant guys, whoever the little baby Trevenant was. <laughs> Phantoms. Phantoms, yes. And you could dual pump uh, the Zeruas as well with the Garatina. You put it into the discard pile and then uh, do the Garatina ping, and then yeah. boom, there you How'd go. How'd that one work out for you? Uh, you know, top 128, I think. Hey, there you go. Not bad. Not yes, bad. Championship yes. points are points. There we go. So Shining Volcanion can dual pump. Benjamin has to determine where the 50 damage should go, which two Pokemon. And Roserade will get 50 as well. So this is trying to set that Pokemon up to 
be knocked out by another dual pump, but unfortunately for Benjamin, Shining Volcanion is likely going down to an opposing shiny Pokemon, that Shining Genesis. Yeah, these Shining Pokemon are so neat, honestly. And what's really cool is that if you want to, since uh, Shining Volcanion and Volcanion have different names, right. you can play them both in the same deck. Same with Shining Genesect and Genesect. The singleton card rule applies to the name of the card. And technically, Shining Volcanion and Volcanion are two different Pokemon. Yeah, same thing with something like Cynthia and Caitlyn and Cynthia, yep. right? Two different cards. So even though they've got the same character on there, you can play both copies. Yes, definitely. Now, Trevor has got a much stronger hand now. There's a lot going on here, obviously, with the Rosa Raids Le Parfum ability, able to search out a bailout card for Trevor, and now Trevor can start setting up the board. A new card from Astral Radiance that I have heard talk about in these Grass-type Gym Leader Challenge decks but I have not seen yet is the Cricketoon. The new Cricketoon with its swelling tune ability increases the hit points of the grass Pokemon you have in play by 40. But the real story <laughs> is not the Cricketoon, but the Cricket Tots. Yeah, honestly, this Cricket Tot has no business having an attack as good as it does. <laughs> Bug Hunch. You get to search your deck for three grass Pokemon, reveal them, and put them in your hand. Andrew, you and I have been gushing over this card for the grass deck. Kind of crazy that just this random basic from Breakpoint years and years ago just so happens to be the optimal basic for the Cricketune now. Why is he so good? <laughs> He's got 60 hit points. Look at him. Look how brave he is standing on the edge of the cliff. Thunder in the background. He's not scared of heights. He is not <laughs> scared of anything. This is the bravest Cricketot that ever was and is literally better than Zarude with its <laughs> one energy attack. The newest hollow rare Zarude uh, from what, Chilling Rain or something? Uh, cannot hold a candle to this Cricketot. Nope. Cricketox, Bug Hunch. Just gets three grass Pokemon out of the deck. I was play I was talking to Michael Zeely earlier. He said that uh, his opponent went turn one Gloria to fill his bench with the turn one Bug Hunch to go get three evolutions, and Insane. he promptly lost. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what do you do? That setup is just going to be way too strong. Yes. Yeah, so I really like the new Cricketune, and I think that a lot of players are going to be including the Cricketune Cricketot combo in their decks. The grass type deck has some of the strongest, I don't know what to call them, little baby Pokemon. Some of the strongest little guys. Yeah, evolving out of basics. Any of the decks. Yes, almost all of the evolving basics are pretty cracked. Yeah, very solid. Trevor here moving to just two prizes remaining. Something else the Cricket Tune is really nice for. Uh, it's like this matchup specifically, right? Because yeah. Amazing Kyogre wants to spread a bunch of damage. And if you give all your guys more hit points, make them harder to KO it's going to be much harder for Benjamin to pull off one-hit knockouts. I do like this strategy from Trevor, just fully loading up two Pokemon and saying, I'm not going to give you any outs to take multiple sweeping prizes with that amazing Kyogre. Trevor, definitely with some heads-up play, for playing sure. around the potential of amazing Kyogre's amazing surge attack. And with the Cape of Toughness on the Shining Genesect. I mean, think about that, okay? Cape of Toughness plus 50 hit points to your basic Pokemon. Cricketune with its Swelling Tune plus 40 hit points to your Grass-type Pokemon. That's plus 90 hit points to your Shining Genesect with a base hit points of 130. You are talking about a 220 Hit point single prize Pokemon. That's a basic. Insane. Super strong. I don't know that we'll see the Cricket Tune come into play this game. It's, it's kind of seeming like this is coming down to the wire here. Benjamin, I don't think, is going to be able to piece together a KO this turn. And if that's the case, Trevor can just try to take a knockout with Genesect and then Rillaboom can clean up that Kiram on the bench. Yeah, just has to retreat into the Manaphy. This is not ideal for Benjamin in a really tough spot. Trevor having a dominant board state. Uh, with the Raihan, there's an extra energy onto the Kyogre now, but then the secondary energy going on to Kurum. I mean, these attackers are getting built up, but it's a little bit too little, too late with no Frostmoth ever hitting the board. Trevor can take one of his Behemoth 
attackers that is built up and just go swing swing and should be able to take these final two prizes that he needs for the match trevor is going to cover all his bases though and check the opponent's discard pile see what sort of resources are left but i gotta say that trevor's probably feeling pretty good about this game with no water energy acceleration on board there's really not too much that benjamin can do to respond right now yeah not much at all i mean the curum and maybe if you get like a fighting fury belt it can tank a hit it does have the outrage attack so if it can hang around for a little while but there's just too many grass energy in play i think genesect is probably going to be able to clean this up pretty quickly yes definitely and the genesect is hitting for uh more than enough damage to knock out anything that may come across his path i mean i guess 130 so just enough damage to knock out anything the rillaboom is doing base 140 damage and with the guzma on the kyogre yeah. trevor really just shuring this one up with the rillaboom swinging for 140 damage with its hammer in attack and can even get another energy onto the Genesect so that Genesect can KO just about anything. It's going to be difficult for Benjamin to put anything up there that doesn't get knocked out, even with something like Fury Belt or Cape of Toughness. It's unlikely Kyogre's hanging on. Trevor with just one prize remaining, oh. and Benjamin with the final turn of the game, oh, revealing man. some gnarly prizes. And, yep, shaking the hands, saying, what can I do? There's the Snom. Oh, no. Snom, Sobble, and also the Frogadier. We saw that one turn where Evolution Instance got played that Frogadier did not get grabbed. Yeah, just an outrage and a pass, and Trevor just has to announce Hammer in, take the last prize. And Trevor Redding moves to 5-1. and one. Really unfortunate game there for Benjamin. Definitely. Trevor, 5-1 and one now, and has potentially secured his spot in top eight of the event. What a game for Trevor. Grass versus water. When you played your first Pokemon game, Chip, what type did you choose? I chose Charmander. Charmander, so yes. neither grass or water. Nope, nope. I is... played through Pokemon Blue, though, and then when I did that, I was like, ooh, Blastoise is on the front. I'm going to pick him. So. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I was always Team Water myself, but I uh, feel like that's a that's a matchup that is as old as time. Yes, you absolutely. Know, back to 1996. <laughs> <laughs> Been around forever. Yeah. Yes, forever. Yeah. But it was really exciting to see that matchup play out. Unfortunately for Benjamin, not a great setup there on his side. But Trevor potentially punching his, tip, his ticket to top eight with a record of five and one now if he can ID him. Thinking the five, one, and one will probably be good enough to finish in the top eights. Trevor is a very consistent Top eights finisher here at the Full Grip Games Doubleheader Weekend. So I'm really looking forward to hearing about Trevor's tournament experience so far and uh, and what we can expect from him going forward. Yeah, looking forward to hearing what Trevor's feeling. If he's uh, likely going to be trying to ID that next round, why exactly he chose to switch off of the deck he knows so well in the attacking colorless. So let's get Trevor Tankman back here for an interview. We'll be right back. I am here with Trevor Tankman Redding. How you doing, Trevor? I'm doing pretty good. Um, it's been a kind of a stressful couple of last couple of matches. I opened a dead hand last time, and I went against uh, the round before that. I went to, went against my sa same sixty from the last one uh, k, and it was incredibly grindy. And I like, I didn't realize I prized Rillaboom. I checked and everything, so things were getting really rough. It went to turn three, and thankfully I was able to take my last prize, and it, it was wow. dangerously close because they only had one prize left. Yeah. Awesome. Well, you're five and one. You're probably secured for top eight. I think five, one, and one, and probably mm -hmm. get you there if you can intentionally draw your last match. You switched off the deck that you finished second place with at the last Gym Leader Challenge event here at Full Grip Games. You have a standard title under <laughs> your belt. Yeah. I think you're probably the most winningest player out of everybody who's participated at the Full Grip Games series so far mm -hmm. and a pioneer in the Gym Leader Challenge format. Mm -hmm. What made you want to go with Grass today over your tried and true colorless deck? Um, so I think a couple months ago, Azul and Grant said they were both going to be here and I knew um, <laughs> they were both going to just play Control. And there was yes. like, no question about it. Azul didn't end up showing up, but I know Grant's here. Um, so I instantly started testing Grass because I was like, 
Um, my my attacking colorless list could not be like uh, control. I tried like a bunch of different things, and it just wasn't happening consistently. But you know, Mike in the it was the Evolving Skies one. It was. Yeah, he won against Control of Grass like multiple times. Fusion Strike. Yeah, but yes, Fusion Strike. I think. And then I on yeah. one of the Friday night GLC tournaments online, I went against Grant who was playing Control, and okay. I, I was able to secure. I got real. I, you have to get lucky. So okay. I got I got lucky and was able to squeak it out with like, uh, um, Grass. So cool. I was like, well, I'll just play grass because it probably has the best odds of like being control in terms of like decks that not aren't taking anything. So if right, I, yeah. So that's why I went with grass. It's also like pretty unfair. <laughs> it's a really unfair deck once you get set up because you get all your you're weldering for like four energy from deck every turn. It's pretty uh, absurd. And you also have like Cricket Tune and like you, tor you can give your Torterra like 230 HP. You can. Did I you get a, to Cricket yet? Not yet, but I've started Zerud like two or three times. Okay, <laughs> yeah, good. so it's yeah. the same difference. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, we were looking at the cricket tot. It's, it's incredibly good. <laughs> yeah, so this is Mike's list. I didn't make this grass list. I was just like, whatever, I'll just net deck Mike and then like worry about making a, a new deck maybe for the next uh, sure. tournament or something. And um, he was like, he was talking about the cricket tot. He really, he was actually thinking about playing it just before Cricket Tune came out because it was like such a good starting attack. Yeah. Um, and then he, he, we were laughing about it because he was saying that it was like, crazy odds that of all the, all the stage ones that could have been printed it, it evolved from like the cricket tot and they were like he was like instantly put it into the deck and yeah just another piece of consistency into the into your start is really useful definitely there are so many good uh pre-evolutions in the grass deck there's bulbasaur finds mm -hmm. a, a pokemon there's the trico finds a pokemon there's the Cricketots now finds a Pokemon. There's the the Turtwig that accelerates an right. energy. There's <laughs> I, they're, they're so good. Uh, it's really, really cool to see. And uh, it's awesome to see you back here. Record mm -hmm. of five and one. Yes. I saw that you've got the Peonia and the Hisui and oh, Heavy yeah. Ball in your deck. Talk to us a little bit about that deck building decision. Um, so Hisuvia and Heavy Ball is kind of an auto-include in this deck. You can Usually you can afford to prize like one or two evolution Pokemon as long as you can get the basic down pretty quick. Um, you, you know, you can like, usually you, if you prize like Rillaboom, you can lean into Torterra or in Venusaur or something like that and then hopefully get the Rillaboom later. Yeah. There's like all these different lines of play. Um, and also it's searchable by Ball Guy. Yes. So if you did prize something important, instead of like Roselia or Roserating for Bridget or something, you can Roserade for Ball Guy, and then you can instantly get something out or one of the, your prize guys out of the prizes, and the whole shape of the game, the rest of the game, is d totally different than it was before. Yeah. Um, I think the Hisui and Heavy Ball Ball Guy combo is something that's really starting to <laughs> yeah. to take shape here mm -hmm. at this event because Ball Guy was like pretty hype early on in the format right. and then it kind of started to get cut from lists mm -hmm. in favor of uh, Gloria you yeah. know whatever <laughs> and then but now with like yeah. the option to go get you're telling me I can basically Gloria for a guy out of my prizes? <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah, it's it's insane. Well, that's pretty broken. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that uh, it's been really cool to see. Mm -hmm. And the Peonia, is that a card that you've used a lot in your uh, tournament so far? Um, uh, yeah, I, I used Peonia to get Rillaboom off the prize in my previous game, but I had to get lucky because I think it was like a 50-50 shot if I hit yeah. Rillaboom or not, and thankfully I hit it. Um, and yeah, it's it's been pretty useful. Obviously, I wish I like drew into like a draw supporter this time, but yeah. that was the thing was like, Talking to Mike, he had like Gladian in the list originally, okay. and then this is at least like kind of a shuffle draw three ish. It's like slightly <laughs> better. Than, yeah, it's like not great, but it's like maybe better than Gladian. I, I don't know. You're t you are taking a bit of a risk sometimes, yeah. but sometimes you can like set up some like put some supporters in for later or something in case you get in because you, you don't have like a draw engine. True. Um. So yeah, it, it could be a Gladian, uh, and you know that like town map doesn't uh work well with a Suian heavy ball. So that was another reason we had Makes to sense. Like, get off of it. Yeah. Awesome. Well, congratulations. Record of five and one so far. Look mm -hmm. forward to seeing how you end up today, Trevor. Yep. And thanks again for coming out. <laughs> Thank you. Here we are. Round seven. The win and in round. These players are both sitting at a record of four, one, and one. A win this round sends them into the top eight. And a loss is going to send them home empty-handed. Joe DiMatteo on the left with the metal deck. And Andrew Wisniewski on the right with the amazing rare Kyogre. Quite a bit different from the amazing Kyogre deck 
that we saw in the last round. This deck is really focused entirely on Amazing Rare Kyogre. And that is the strategy. Try to get to the Kyogre, set that up, and go from there using the Melodic from Flash Fire, which can KO itself and throw a bunch of energies into play. You put yourself behind on prizes, and then cards like Counter Catcher, cards like Ace Trainer, cards like Counter Energy are activated and now doing a lot for your deck. Yeah, the Hasui and Heavy Ball is a great addition for this amazing Kyogre deck because one of the major weaknesses of the amazing Kyogre deck is, of course, prizing yes. the star of the deck. Yeah, Amazing absolutely. Kyogre. And the Hasui and Heavy Ball is another out to go get that amazing Kyogre out of the prizes. Joe has got a really unique metal deck. I love the look of this deck deck we've got the dialga from celebrations leading the charge out in the active spots with its temporal backflow attack can get cards back from the discard pile which is quite good mm -hmm. and there are a lot of damage reduction options in joe's metal deck of course there are tool cards like the metal core barrier metal frying pan but we've also got a pretty unique inclusion the aegislash with its big shield ability aegislash from rebel clash yeah this big shield ability means that all of your pokemon will take 30 less damage from your opponent's attacks. And Amazing Kyogre deals 80 damage to everything. And the way Big Shield works is it will reduce the damage done to all Pokemon, not just the active. So Amazing Kyogre, instead of doing spread 80, if Aegislash is set up, it's only going to be spread 50. And then if you have any of those tool cards that's right. attached, that's minus 60. It's possible with an Aegislash in play and a whatever the special metal shield energy yep. right? if you have aegislash set up and shield energy and metal core barrier you can take minus 110 damage <laughs> during a turn i don't think andrew can even do 110 damage uh, probably <laughs> not but you could Just, yes uh, you know the possibility is there so Andrew does have Battle Compressor. This is a great card for his deck. It can get the energy cards in the discard pile necessary so that you can pop that Milotic eventually and get those energies that you're discarding now back into play. And it might seem counterintuitive. Why would you want to knock out one of your own Pokemon? And it's so you can activate powerful effects like getting those energies in play and then also the Ace Trainer. This Milotic, not that one. <laughs> <laughs> that one yeah the energy grace my <laughs> there you go here i am about to show off sparkling ripples <laughs> <laughs> energy grace once during your turn you can knock out this pokemon if you do attach three basic energy cards from your discard pile to one of your no get that out of here <laughs> <laughs> It's a lot, lot of, of really Pokemon. nice melodics, you know? Yes. Yeah, that other melodic was actually played for a while back in I Night know. March. I remember at like a city I championships, know. people were like, you can get back double colorless energy. <laughs> it was the optimal way to play Night March after special, uh, not special charge. Before special charge. Before special charge, but after Mew EX rotated. Okay, yeah. yeah. So it was like that weird time where you couldn't, or is Dimension Valley. One of the key pieces was not available anymore. It was the Mew. It was the Mew. Yes, it was the Mew. So you couldn't actually, you know, just do the whole seven energy thing like you used to. Andrew getting some dice ready for the timer ball. Two flips incoming. First one is a tails, not the double tails. No! no! That is uh, unfortunate. Tough, a dream crusher. We do got that Hisui and Basculin in the active, though, and Hisui and Basculin is a great new card from Astral Radiance for the Gym Leader Challenge format. Gathering the crew, getting some fellas out of the deck and allowing you to put them straight onto the bench can really expedite your <clears throat> game plan. This amazing Kyogre deck is built to do one thing and one thing only. It is built to fire off amazing surge attacks until the opponent opponent's board is wiped and this is now 
the third way we've seen uh, a third different style of water deck that we've seen at the gym leader challenge yep. event we saw a traditional hydro pump variant we saw a more spread oriented variant with like uh different kinds of spread attackers like shining Vulcanian. and now this one is just the truly degenerate, uh, amazing Surge Kyogre deck. It's all in on Kyogre. There is no backup plan. No, <laughs> I mean, I guess the backup plan is like Aqua Bullet or something yeah, like that. There are two potential attackers. It's Aqua Bullet or it's Amazing Surge, and that's it. And when, uh, you're, not, not, when you're not using Amazing Surge, you're using Aqua Bullet. Hey, listen, I've used Hug before in GLC on <laughs> on, uh, <laughs> on the Octillery. So listen, anything can happen in a, in a pinch. Yeah, but... If you're hugging, you're probably not winning. I did tie that game, so okay. <laughs> it was oh, at, at the Indy Region uh, Friday Ooh. side event. But okay, so Joe is playing a versus Seeker, grabs back the Colrus. This isn't the strongest of Colrus, but getting six cards is still pretty decent. Can also play this Floatstone down, and we'll just temporal back flow. Maybe grabbing back versus Seeker, making sure we get that deck shuffled. I think Joe maybe thought he was going to go back in with the. Colrus and then chose not to. Not sure if a different supporter was played this turn or not. Got the Metal Lynx Bronzong set up on the bench. Great for accelerating metal energy out of the discard pile. Into play has 90 hit points, so will survive a single amazing surge. Joe does need to be careful not to over bench against the amazing surge deck, but what's tough is that yeah, how much can you really plan for the amazing surge i mean you can right you can limit your bench you can stagger the way you bench cards so yeah. that you're not just getting everything knocked out all at the same time but you also on the other side of the coin you need to play cards into play in order to get set up so you have to kind of uh walk that uh you know walk that line and just find the sweet middle ground where you're benching just enough pokemon but not too many in order to prevail against the amazing Kyogre deck. And we did see Andrew play Battle Compressor last turn. Battle Compressor is a really interesting card, one of the strongest cards in the history of the Pokemon that trading card game, allowing you to discard three cards from your deck, and that might not seem particularly powerful uh, in that it doesn't actively do anything for you, it only gets cards from deck to discard pile, but there are so many cards and effects that play from the discard pile that Battle Compressor can really help with those kinds of strategies. In this deck, we're going to see Andrew accelerate energy to the discard pile to then flood into play with Melodic. I think we are about to see an amazing surge. Irida gets to search the deck for a water Pokemon and an item card, and Melodic is the grab. Energy Grace can KO itself. Throw the energies onto Kyogre. Already got the Lightning for turn. It's even got Fighting Fury Belt. It's going to be difficult for Joe to do anything. And a key thing here as well, this amazing surge is actually going to knock out the Honage on the bench. So that makes it even more difficult for Joe to get to the Aegislash, which would be so good in this matchup. Yeah, that is going to be tough. I mean, think about it. Joe is going to have a heavily damaged Dialga with one energy on it. Joe's going to have a heavily damaged Bronzong. Uh, really a little bit slow to get established this game. Joe would love to have the Aegislash out right now to help weather this first, uh, this first amazing surge. There is the energy grace. So Andrew will give up a prize to Joe. We see Joe snag that bottom right prize card. And now Andrew will retreat into amazing Kyogre with the energy accelerated from Melodic's ability and will do 80 damage to everything. Arguably the most powerful attack in Gym Leader Challenge format. This is the most devastating yeah. board wiping attack that there is in the format, but it comes at a cost. It definitely does. It's very expensive to get this Pokemon powered up. And so players have found the best way to do it really is this Melodic, it feels like. There are other options as well. We kind of saw last round the, um, you know, the Aqua Patch, the Frost Lass, or the Frost Moth, I should say, all of those things trying to accelerate energies. Joe's going to throw the Metal Goggles down. That's going to make it a little harder for this Dialga, but I don't even know if that's taking it out of range. Dialga, does it have 120 or 130? It's got 80 on it right now, so we're doing minus 30 
130 hit yeah. points. And I think that even with metal goggles, that's uh, an, another 80 damage swing. It's plus, plus 50. Yeah, it would that's, need to be uh, like that's 130. Crystal Cave, too, mm -hmm. to heal a little bit. But it doesn't feel good because we've got teammates coming down from Joe. Joe can grab two cards out of the deck. But are there any two grabs that can save Joe? Metal Core Barrier, there's already a tool attached. Metal Core Barrier doesn't even save the Bronzong on the bench. One yeah. of the few Pokemon that Joe could actually bench this turn that can hang on from a hit is actually this Galarian Stunfisk, so is eyeing that up. Probably wants to get at least one Metal Lynx before this Bronzong goes down, right? To try yeah, and yeah, get yeah. some energy into play. The... Is that Stunfisk's attack two or three energy? I don't remember. I know it was played like a little bit in ADP. Yeah, this uh, Gym Leader Challenge can... Really test your card knowledge. Yeah. That's for sure. You find yourself, a lot of readers, you know, <laughs> when you're talking about a card pool that's 10 years old and a lot of cards that maybe haven't seen play in standard format ever, you're going to want to take a look and make sure that you're not missing anything. So the damage rush here could uh, theoretically get in there, but no, Andrew just passes it over. Yeah, I don't know, Joe. I don't know if there's a metal in the discard pile. Metal links plus retreat, and then put that coronet in play. Going with the damage rush, maybe something like that could have been decent. The Articuno does hit the field. That is weak to. I can't remember if that one's weak to metal or lightning. Some of the Articunos are weak to to different types. Uh, but that's a very good card to hide behind while you are setting up, because while it is in the active spot, your opponent cannot play boss's orders uh, to target your little bench guys. Things like the Phoebus that you're trying to set up to become a melodic. Yeah, the Articuno is really good. It is weak to lighting. It's got it's got the Blizzard Veil ability, which prevents all supporter based gusts to your benched water Pokemon. And conveniently, in Gym Leader Challenge, all of your bench Pokemon will be water in the deck that Articuno is included in because nice. it is a mono type format. So a great bench protector and a cool energy accelerator as well it kind of passes the energy from it to the bench with the cold cyclone attack you can cold cyclone if you just happen to attach a water and then attach another water and do 70 and then swing those energy back to a kyogre then the kyogre cannot get gusted right and you have these options with counter energy you can potentially then just drop a counter energy onto kyogre and you're in swinging for the amazing surge attack Andrew setting up excellently here, gets the Octillery, uses Scoop Up Net to reset that entire Intellion line, which, I mean, we've seen plenty of Scoop Up Nets to reset Shady Dealings in Standard. It's just as powerful here in GLC. Yeah, Scoop Up Net is an incredible card. It's basically, uh, it's almost on the power level of supporters in this format. I mean, yeah. we're talking AZ effectively does what scoop up net does right yeah uh, a, a scoop up net is just an item based az <laughs> in right. this format so i'm pretty sure this active is still going to be ko'd and that is the case it's exact math the metal goggles could not quite save it should be dealing there's 80 damage on it and then plus 80 more is 160 minus 30 of course for the metal goggles that is still 130 damage yes i do believe that yes it should be 80 uh yep and then, yep, that's a knockout. And that's so we, two prizes. Yep. Are and Joe has just a Stunfisk. Not great. <laughs> no, no energies on it. Yeah, and it's like every Pokemon that goes to the bench, this, in theory, should be a great matchup for Metal. If you could just kind of get those tools down and get the Crystal Cave in play, you know, maybe set up the Aegis Slash on paper, this Metal deck should be better poised to withstand these amazing surges than any other deck. Metal is the tank and heal archetype. Right. It looks like Joe has actually prized the Q font this game. I see Copperage in there, but I do not see Q font. And Q font has 100 HP, so it would be able to survive a hit. But uh, unfortunately, I think it's chilling in those last five prizes. I'm feeling like, ugh, I, at this point, it's so tough. The, the best option, if there was a Revenge Blast Cobalion in here would be to get that thing up with like a Metal Core Barrier and just go. Yeah. You could even Quick you know? Guard for a turn with That's that as well. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That would be like the Bale <laughs> card, like to, the card that would uh, <laughs> that would help Joe to make a comeback in this game. But I'm not really seeing that Cobalion. There is the, yeah, you got the, the Stadium. You've got the Metal Core Barrier. Okay. 
and can heal a little bit and then prevent the stun fisk from going down. Right. Stun fisk gets to hang on, but there's not even an energy yeah, drop for turn. There's though. no energy. Where are we going from here? Right. You know, maybe. I wonder if Andrew has field blower. Field blower. Oh yeah. If it's field blower, it's game over. Yeah. And there it is. Field blower. Yep. Remove both of these, and then that's amazing surge for double knockout wow. and game. What GGs. a showing from the amazing Kyogre deck. Andrew showing the consistency, how solid it is. Oh look, Aegis Slash was prized. His Heatran was prized. The cop, the uh, the baby, the the Q font was prized as well. Man, that is brutal from Joe. You know, they don't call it the mediocre surge, Chip. <laughs> it is amazing. <laughs> the amazing surge. And boy, was it amazing to watch. 80 damage to all of your opponent's Pokemon. At the same time, taking multiple knockouts. That Kyogre went completely unchecked in that last game. And Andrew was able to reap the benefits of it. I think Andrew was able to make top eight at one of the he previous was, events. Yes. We saw his, he played this deck as well. Made top eight with amazing Kyogre. And in that game, he just did not set up. It was yeah. like really just an unfortunate series of draws. It's best two out of three in top eight in both of the games. He was on stream and just did not get set up. So I know he is excited to be playing this deck. He loves this deck. This is his go-to GLC deck, which is, we've talked about this again and again, how yeah. that's one of our favorite things about GLC is people love perfecting their craft. Everyone kind of has the deck that they enjoy and Andrews is the amazing Surge Kyogre. Right, and you can see the repetitions and the practice with this deck has really paid off with Andrew entering another top eight with his amazing Kyogre deck. We're going to get Andrew back here for an interview in just a moment, so don't go anywhere. Hang tight. We'll be right back. I am live with Andrew. Hot off his round eight, round seven, round seven win to a record of 5-1-1, I believe. Yeah, that's right. That's yes. Right. That's with correct. the amazing Kyogre, this is going to be your second appearance with the deck yes. in top eight. And I think that the deck has gotten a lot stronger since last we saw you with it. So tell us a little bit about the changes and how this deck has evolved over the last few months and with yeah. the newest set. Yeah, the three main new cards are the Hisuian, Basculin, and Bascu Legion. Yeah. Uh, you saw I used the first one's attack to help set up. Yes. It's like you already had Vulpix to use Beacon. Got but this one goes clue. straight to the bench. Yes. So you can evolve it next turn. And then the uh, Iridia uh, supporter is just like easy to get your battle compressor or get like whatever you need, especially off of Shady Dealings. So just like a little consistency. Yeah. The the bigger fish guy is, you know, a good attacker to revenge. If you, you know, your Kyogre gets knocked out, you have like a really easy 120 and confuse on the next turn for That's one water. super so, good. Yeah. It's now possible. that I'm just like thinking about it because previously... It was like Intellion and Kyogre. Yep. Those were like the only yep. two. And if Kyogre went down, it was real, you know, Intellion hours. And then uh, you were hoping by the time Intellion went down that Kyogre was back and ready to go. Yeah. But now you've got that other option with the Hisuian Basculin able to evolve into Hisuian Bascule Legion. A nice one energy pop. Very efficient as well. Yeah, it's more efficient. And then you can scoop up the Inteleon and use it to get your Kyogre back instead of having to use it as a second attacker. Or right. you could be a third attacker. To clean exactly, up too, so. exactly. So, so many more options. The Hisuian Basculin. And uh, you still playing the, the Vulpix then too? Yeah, yeah. Yes, it's just the like Hisuian some, Basculin, yeah. that combo of cards. Yeah. And then Hisuian Heavy Ball. Yes, that's another one I should have mentioned. Yes. Because, um, you know, obviously if the Kyogre is prized, my deck does not function, so <laughs> <laughs> so it's nice to be able to guarantee that a little more easily without having to use like Gladian or something like that. And I think I saw Ball Guy in the deck too. Yes. So you not only have the Hisuian Heavy Ball, but you also have the Ball Guy to go get the yep. Hisuian Heavy Ball. So lots of search outs, and you can Arita yep. for the Hisuian Heavy Ball. So we can see Drizzile for the. There are so many different ways to go get that Kyogre and make sure that he's online and available yeah and that's kind of what makes the deck fun is every every hand is kind of a puzzle to how can i get to kyogre the fastest and it's way easier now so that's pretty sick awesome to see you kind of working to pioneer this deck list and your commitment to the deck it's obvious that you believe in this in this deck's power to be a real contender in the format now what do you think about the other decks that are rising to the top in today's gym leader challenge tournament how do you feel against the field going into top eight 
Yeah, I think I have the best chance against Grant. Okay. Um, because, you know, I can get the Kyogre on turn two if things go really well. And, you know, I might just win there. Oh, not, yeah. Not give him any time to set up. So I think the way for that matchup is just to try to go really, really fast. Because, um, you know, he has the Shining Arceus, but you can turn that off with Silent Lab or Hex Maniac or whatever. There you go. Uh, I don't you know got what answers. Else. Yeah, I don't know what else is in top eight, but, but yeah, sure it'll be the, fine. the question yeah. is, can you beat Grant? Yes. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm most worried about for sure. Yeah. <laughs> yes, that is the yeah. that is the real question. Can you beat Grant's colorless control deck? Grant was up here during the interview and said that he has a favorable matchup against every deck. Yeah, that's, yes. that's probably true. But he says that about every deck he plays. He does. So, <laughs> yes, true. you have to take that with a grain of salt. But that was his claim. Yeah. That was that was his claim. So I really look forward to seeing how your amazing Kyogre deck performs in top eight. Last top eight was a little bit of a heartbreaker with things not yeah. really getting moving. Yeah, that one went bad. But this time is going to go better. I think so. I think, so. I think yeah. so. Well, congrats again, Andrew, on a top eight appearance. You're in for at least $100 of prize money. But, of course, that $1,300 at the top got to be looking pretty good yeah it sounds it sounds nice yeah. excellent yeah. well good luck andrew we look okay. forward to seeing you in top eight okay sweet thank you players are ready to get top eight started andrew wisniewski on the left ethan hegster heggy on the right we've seen both of these players during swiss andrew we saw in that last round playing the amazing rare Kyogre deck. And on the other side, Ethan Heggy playing the Lightning deck. We saw him get a victory to move to 5-0 and oh with this. And it's going to definitely be an interesting matchup. Amazing rare Kyogre is one of the most powerful attackers in the entire format. But there is one problem, Andrew. It's, uh, it's weak to Lightning. It is weak to lightning, but I think if Andrew has it his way, he's going to be wiping out all of Ethan's attackers anyways. That's I mean, true, yes. When you're playing the amazing Kyogre deck, you're not necessarily worried about the Kyogre surviving multiple hits. It's possible, but the main idea is to just swing for 80 damage to everything. The Kyogre can go down and then do it again and then you win right. because pretty much no Pokemon have yeah, have more than 160 hit points. Very few. Yes. There are ways for this deck to kind of finish off un, unfinished business, like with Intellion's Aqua Bullet attack, which does 20 damage to a target on the bench. So there are some ways. Also, uh, after talking with Andrew, found out that he is also playing the Hisuian Basket Legion, yes, yeah. which does 120 damage and confuse it and confuses with its revenge style attack. So there are some neat attacking options outside of Amazing Kyogre, but the real question is going to be: Can Andrew withstand the early pressure? from this lightning deck. Yeah, that's definitely gonna be something to look out for. Ethan can put on so much pressure with something like a quick Electivire. Of course, Zapdos, one of the best early game attackers with its thunderous assault attack. A key thing in this matchup as well will be that mana fee on Andrew's side of the field, since one of the things Ethan can do to sway pretty much any game in his favor is attack with amazing shot Raikou. The amazing rare Raikou doing 120 damage to the active and to the bench so taking two prizes in one turn not really something ethan is going to have available to him so as ethan when you're coming into a matchup like this your opponent is playing a spread deck ethan and andrew are actually staying together this weekend so they definitely know what each other's playing they're familiar with you know the archetypes maybe have thought about the matchup a little bit so as ethan when you're coming into this you know your opponent's playing a spread deck do you have to approach things differently than you would in a normal matchup I think that Ethan is certainly going to want to really consider his board carefully. You don't have any sort of protection against the amazing Kyogre. The only thing you can do is plan appropriately. So you're not going to want to evolve unnecessary Pokemon into play. When you're choosing your support Pokemon, I think Zebstrika is the correct one. Maybe you're not going for the Electrode right now. You're just uh, just setting up the Zebstrika. Maybe you're going for just one Dynamotor Pokemon instead of two. You're trying to pair back and play carefully and allow yourself the opportunity to 
just take pointed knockouts throughout the match. There are some roadblocks that Andrew can put in your way as the lightning player. Uh, that Manaphy is going to be a big card with its water availability that protects all bench Pokemon from damage from attacks. This Phoebus also has a built-in Submerge. Yes, bench barrier style ability, Submerge. Yeah, it's protected while it is on the bench, which is really nice when you've only got 30 hit points because little Phoebus can get targeted pretty easily otherwise. So it's going to get to be protected from any flying flips, any amazing shots, whatever it may be. And on Andrew's side, he will likely attack with Melodic at least twice. That's kind of what you do in these games that go a little bit longer uh, is you kind of need to try to set up Melodic a couple of times. Now, one thing that Ethan will have to be very cognizant of is is Andrew's ability to play counter energy. Yes. I think that counter energy, in my opinion, is one of the strongest cards in Gym Leader Challenge format because it allows you a crazy swing in momentum. If your opponent starts kind of taking the lead, you can instantly snap back with a counter energy and you're performing an attack that was probably more powerful than your opponent thought your board was capable of right. that last turn. It allows you to essentially skip ahead an energy attachment because I'm attaching a double rainbow energy from my hand. Raihan with counter energy is an extraordinarily powerful combination because it allows you a swing of three energy attachments, one from the discard pile and a double rainbow energy to unlock just about Ooh. any attack. Andrew's hand is pretty bad here. Fighting Fury Belt, Field Blower, How Hex can it Maniac. Be bad? He's about to beacon. Right. Well, his hand is bad. So he's going. <laughs> what I'm getting to is he's going to have to make sure. <laughs> that he eyes up getting Octillery here off of this beacon from the Alolan uh, Vulpix. And Alolan Vulpix, <laughs> one of the best cards to start in this matchup, especially right now since Andrew is going second. So he gets to attack on his first turn of the game and search his deck for two Pokemon and put them into his hands. Yeah, that's perfect. Beacon and the Hisuian Basculin. Yes. This makes this combo, the kind of tag team duo of Alolan Vulpix and Hisuian Basculin allows you to do whatever you want, essentially, yeah. with your board state. You can use Alolan Vulpix to search for evolutions for free, or you could use Hisuian Basculin to search for basics for free. And that's incredibly powerful in this deck in particular, since the amazing Kyogre takes four energy in order to get rolling. So you can actually conserve your energy attachments and make sure that they go where you want them to go and not to your setup Pokemon. So Ethan plays Evo Soda right away. Could either get the Zebstrika or the Electivire. I don't think he's got a great hand right now though, so really will most likely prioritize getting that support Pokemon to try and draw through the deck a little bit and try and find more pieces to work with. Andrew did bench the Hisuian Basculin. Even though he's not using Gather the Crew, he's trying to prep for a potential Bascule Legion attack if this active Vulpix was to go down. A brand new card from Astral Radiance with the Grudge Dive attack. For just one single water energy, it deals 30 damage, but if any of your Pokemon were knocked out by damage, from your opponent's attack last turn, you get to deal 90 more damage, and your opponent's active Pokemon is now confused. So for one energy, dealing 120 damage and confusing your opponent's active, really not too bad. It's an extremely good attack for this deck that doesn't play any of the Rain Dance style energy accelerators. Yes. This is a different kind of water deck. We're going about our energy attachments differently. The Hisuian Basque Legion is an incredible card because of its low maintenance attack. 120 damage for one energy is great energy to damage output value. And the fact that it evolves from one of the best setup Pokemon that the game has ever seen, it makes it a mainstay in this deck. So as opposed to going for Bridget, Ethan is just going to sprint, maybe looking for a little bit stronger of a supporter, finds a Floatstone, Hisuian Heavy Ball, and I think that's Tayton Liza in hand as well, in addition to the Guzma. Yes. The Hisuian Level Ball, or Hisuian Heavy Ball, can allow Ethan to go into his prizes, finds the Voltorb, there's a Raihan there, and Zapdos. Okay. All right. Oh, the and Electivire. And, and Raikou. Wow. Whoa. Yes. Uh, Ethan knew that this is what he was going to be looking at. He's been taking notes. He knows what's in his prizes. Yeah. So this is a surprise to us, but not to him. He is... 
probably happy to find that uh, Hisui and Heavy Ball because of the amount of options that he has to take off of it. So he's got, uh, what are the options here? Voltorb or Raikou, pretty much, or Zapdos. Which of those three powerful basic Pokemon does he go with? I don't think Voltorb, right? Because you were talking about how that doesn't seem like a good Pokemon to bench in this matchup. No. So It's Raikou or Zapdos. Zap yeah, so between these two, which one? Uh, I like the grab of Raikou. I feel like it's a game-losing situation if the Raikou is, like, last prized. You just... You you want to get this thing out and into the into the deck as soon as possible, right? Even if it's in the discard pile or where, wherever, you want to not have it prized. The amazing Raikou is the strongest attacker in the Lightning deck with its amazing shot attack. Of course, Andrew does have the option to use Manaphy's water availability to protect from the oh my gosh and the Guzma and has the free retreat on the Coco and can go in with the Electabuzz, which has the ever classic Haymaker attack. Yeah, Electabuzz can get in there. It is a significant attacker. I think it does base 30 damage. Which is enough to knock out little Phoebus. Yes, the Haymaker attack, a callback to the very first Electabuzz card ever printed in base set was part of that Haymaker deck which featured Scyther and Electabuzz and Hitmonchan, just a bunch of fast and low-maintenance attackers. Haymaker just doing enough to knock out the lowly 30 hit points Phoebus. So Andrew has a rainbow energy in hand. Those special energies are very valuable because you have so many different energy types required for the amazing Raikou. So it feels bad to use one on the... Hasui and Basculin, if you're looking for the Basculin. And it looks like he top decked Cynthia, which okay. is an amazing draw because now he'll get to shuffle the hand and draw six, looking for a way to evolve into Basculin here to take a prize. Yeah, the Basculin would be a huge grab if he can find that. Just uh, making it so that he can neutralize the threat of the Electivire. Of course, we know that the Electivire is prized. I'm not sure if Ethan drew that card off of the prizes. Uh, there are so many good cards in the prizes that I think that uh, Ethan's going to be probably pretty satisfied with the cards that he does end up finding. Electivire is nice in this matchup because it does have a significant amount of hit points at 140 HP. What do we see here? I don't see Basque Legion. If the Sobble was... Is the Sobble down last turn? I think... He just benched it because he beaconed that's for right, it. That's right, that's right. So I don't know if he can thin this hand out either to draw cards with Abyssal Hands. Has a level ball, has Fighting Fury Belt, but there's nothing that can really use it. And we could just be gathering the crew here. Could be another gather the crew situation, which one of the things terrible. Yeah, and one of the things that's so unfortunate, though, is that the Phoebus is in the discard pile, and that's Oof. Andrew's best way to power up r amazing... Kyogre, he can power it up in other ways. He's got Raihan, he has got Aqua Patch, Counter Energy, of course, is active right now. So all of these things are ways that Andrew can pull off an attack. But for now, it will just be gathering the crew, and here comes Articuno and Manaphy. Yeah, just getting the getting the board set up feels good. You have, you know, a turn or two. You have to be careful. Ethan is going to be able to start marching towards victory and get this board to a place where it's difficult to come back from but the mana fee being established is quite good gonna stop the tapu coco from spreading damage wherever it wants and let's see what did ethan find it it's looks zapdos. like it's zapdos yeah so zapdos is great uh, zapdos can take a nice low maintenance knockout there is the professor's letter in his hand which he can use to search out an energy, potentially sprint some more basic energy into the discard pile so that he can accelerate it into play. If he's able to get himself a Flaffy, he can start using that Dynamotor ability to flood the board with energy and get some answers set up so that he has some attackers for when Andrew eventually gets Kyogre online. Yeah, getting those energies in the discard pile, super strong synergy. A lot of new players to the game would look at this and be like, why would I want want to discard cards? Yes. And, I mean, they, people used to always say that about Battle Compressor, right? Yeah. <laughs> and Andrew, that's a card that he's playing in his deck. So it's just solid is the truth. And thinning is good. You get a card out of the deck, 
and you also can interact with it through so many different ways, one of them being Dynamiter, of course. So Zapdos getting that energy and Zapdos, man, I love Zapdos. <laughs> I know I said that the Electivire is my favorite card in the Lightning type deck, but Zapdos, I do, I love Zapdos too. I love this deck when it was legal. There was a Zapdos Jirachi deck that was standard relevant for some time before yes, very uh, good deck. the later Sun and Moon sets were released. And seeing the Zapdos, you know, kind of have a new lease on life in the Gym Leader Challenge format is really satisfying for me. Love this card. It is such a cool card. I mean, it just 80 damage with Thunderous Assault. It's not overpowered, but it is a potent and low maintenance attacker. And that's what I love about the Lightning deck. It's got plenty of low maintenance attacking options. Very consistent, very fast. It gets out the gates quick and it really puts your opponent in some compromising situations with the amount of pressure it puts on. That was a pretty painful sprint. It got rid of some very good cards. It looked like Colrus, Professor Sycamore, Rescue Stretcher, all cards Ethan would love to hang on to, but he really wanted to dig and did end up getting the Flaffy, so Dynamotor can start getting some energies. Maybe we'll retreat the Electabuzz and put an extra energy on there, hoping to take the, uh, the Electivire off the prizes. Also... Could attach to the Coco, which is what he has chosen to do. Its second attack does deal 100 damage, so it can get in there and uh, start swinging. And it can one hit KO Kyogre if That's Kyogre right. ever, you know, comes into the active spot. Since Kyogre is weak to lightning, that uh, Electro Ball, I believe, attack mm -hmm. is going to be Electric Ball is going to be enough to knock out the amazing Kyogre. Ethan going down to just four prizes remaining. Zapdos swinging in with its thunderous assault and that beautiful Wizards of the Coast promo energy from cool. back in the day is probably, not probably, is older than Ethan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Ethan using cards that are older than he is. Pretty wild. Love it. Andrew does play level ball. Gets the uh, Drizzile out of the deck. Now can quick ball. Gets rid of an energy card here. I don't know that he can get to Amazing Kyogre this turn, but he's guaranteed at least a turn behind the Articuno. Uh, that is unless Ethan can find Escape Rope. Escape Rope boss can push the Articuno out of the way and then allow you to gust freely. So the Articuno's Blizzard Veil ability is like a soft lock. It makes it less convenient for your opponent to be able to gust up a target that you're powering up, which is very good if you're Andrew and you're trying to get this amazing Kyogre going. With the Splash Energy coming down very on good. the amazing Kyogre, it's gonna have an opportunity to bounce right back from the discard pile when it gets knocked out inevitably it's kind of like a a rescue scarf i mean yes. i guess rescue scarf is so old that nobody probably knows what that card is i but think yes. people are more likely to know splash energy than uh, <laughs> than rescue scarf it's kind of like one of these uh one of these cards that just allows it to bounce back as soon as it goes to the discard pile which is really nice splash energy is very good in the water decks especially on you know your kind of prime attackers like the amazing kyogre Andrew kind of has a decision here. There's a Colrus in hand. There's a teammate, and I believe Intellian as well. So you could Colrus for nine cards here or just teammates to find specific things and try to set up for future turns. I think before he does anything, though, we'll see an Abyssal hand drawing a couple more cards. Is that the Intellian? It is, yes. Yeah, so he's got options for sure. Colrus just going to shuffle into the deck. Gets nine cards here. Shoo! It's a big shuffle draw. Yeah, I would have probably liked to see Andrew just use the uh, artillery. First. I, I'm, I don't think I'm trying to think if he used it already or not. I don't think he did. It's pretty unlikely after this Colrus, you're just gonna have so many cards in hand. It's unlikely you're gonna ever get below five. So would have been nice to maybe use it before. See if you can find like a rescue stretcher or something like that. Shuffle the Phoebus back into the deck and then go with the Colrus after that. Yes. So the the. The Colrus is going to net Andrew nine cards. What are we looking for here? I think that this is not going to be a turn where we see an attack from Kyogre. This is a turn where we're trying to maybe buy our time yeah. and yeah. go for like a Raihan counter energy play next turn. Yeah, I think that's exactly what, what Andrew wants to do next turn. You're just looking to increase the hand size here. 
and then go from there. Does get Rescue Stretcher, so that could grab back the Phoebus potentially on the next turn, assuming a bench space gets cleared if the Articuno gets KO'd. Is going to play Ordinary Rod, and this will put just that card back into the deck, actually. The Phoebus, yes. The Phoebus getting knocked out early on is definitely tough for Andrew because the Melodic's Energy Grace ability is one of the primary ways of powering up the amazing Kyogre. If Andrew's going to have a shot in this match, he's going to need to get that Melodic online. Right. But he can't give up too many prize cards because the Melodic requires at least one prize card to sack in order to use its Energy Grace ability. Yeah, we're getting to the point in the game where Andrew's probably only going to be able to Melodic once, if at all. Yeah. If you Melodic too many times and give up too many prizes, that is just not good. So it will be a pass. And this is a big turn. If Ethan can find Escape Rope plus Boss's Orders, it's a pretty decent combo, but you have a lot of dig through the deck with Sprint. Yeah, so there's a lot of dig. There's Marnie and Cynthia and Caitlin are both draw support options in Ethan's hand. And with Sprint, you can discard the hand and draw four cards. Sprint is always, it's a double-edged sword. Obviously, pushing through the deck is very good. But you have to ask yourself, is it worth it sacking these resources that I have in my hand? In this case, it's the Cynthia and Caitlin. Because the Cynthia and Caitlin is basically a supporter retrieval card right uh so you're potentially getting rid of a supporter retrieval card to go for something else i do like this marnie from ethan just valuing that cynthia and caitlin understanding that that is one of the best recovery cards in the deck ethan will find five cards off the top and sees electro power the articuno has got 110 hit points dynamotor can accelerate an energy onto Oh, Andrew drew too many cards. Oh, man. He drew a fifth card. He that drew five cards off the Marnie. Is unfortunate. It shouldn't change anything because he'll be able to, like, it's the card he would be drawing for turn this turn. Yes. So, uh, but it probably will be a penalty because he's drawn too many cards here. And this is, you know, I mean, we're, we're it's at a, money a match, yeah. uh, 2.5K event. We're taking things serious here. Definitely. And that a lot is of money game on the line. changing for sure. Yeah. There's a lot of money on the line here. If it's a double prize penalty, then Ethan only has to take two prizes, in which case, if it's a double prize penalty for me, uh, I'm probably just scooping up my cards and going to game two. I think one of the cards Andrew did get, though, is the Raihan, so he'll be able to Raihan, go get Counter Energy, and pull off the Amazing Surge, but with a double prize penalty, it's probably just going to be too late. That's tough. Yeah, that's real tough. And it I would have loved to have seen how this would have played out, because I don't know that Andrew is out of this, necessarily. No. Okay, so instead of the, I know the old ruling used to be reveal and, and replace. You accidentally reveal the top card. Uh, if, you're, if you know what that last card is, you just reveal it, you replace, and then you get the penalty or whatever. Uh, that has been changed to yeah. shuffle, uh, I believe, is the, new, is the new judge practice for uh, an accidentally revealed top deck. So Andrew is going to shuffle that card into the deck, and we'll have to wait and see from uh, judge if there's going to be a penalty um, instituted or if it's just going to be a shuffle up and play ball situation yeah we'll see I would imagine it'll probably be well, yeah well we'll just get word here soon regardless Ethan will dynamotor to this Tapu Koko and electric ball will take a knockout and only deals 100 damage but Articuno is weak to lightning so that is a big KO and now Ethan goes down to three prizes left and we've gotten confirmation it will be a two prize penalty so now Ethan only needs to take one more knockout to win the game, and this is just devastating for Andrew. Yeah, this is tough. Andrew made top eight of one of our other Gym Leader Challenge events with his amazing Kyogre deck. He says he's got the best chance of taking down Grant Manley with his does, control yeah. deck, but he has to make it through Ethan's aggressive lightning deck first. It has been a long weekend of Pokemon fanfare here at Full Grip Games, and I know that uh, nerves are probably very high right now with these money matches on the line, uh, so mistakes do happen. But unfortunately for Andrew, he's going to have to pay the price for that with a double prize penalty, making it so that Ethan only has to take one more prize, and with that, like I said, yeah, if I get a double prize penalty that late in the game, yeah, we're scooping it up. Let's let's put this behind us and start with a fresh slate going into game two. Really unfortunate for Andrew. One small mistake really did cost him there. The game wasn't looking the best for him. Ethan was definitely ahead, but Andrew was still 
had a fighting chance, I feel like, in that one. So we'll shuffle up and we'll go to game number two here. And I think the big story of that game was the turn that Ethan got the Guzma KO on the Phoebus. Yeah. Because that really limited anything Andrew was going to be able to do. And he wasn't able to replace the Phoebus right away. Didn't get a rescue stretcher or an ordinary rod or something like that to recycle it until a couple of turns later. And at that point, it was just a little too late. Yeah, that was a big turn for Ethan. Just kind of putting a speed bump out there for Andrew to have to drive over. And... Andrew's deck kind of stalled out a little bit without having very, you know, a very explosive turn. Andrew said he's capable of getting the turn to Amazing Surge with this deck. I imagine that with a record of 5-1-1, one, and one, he's probably done that at yes. least once in this event. So going first, Andrew is going to be looking for a more explosive start. He's going to want to try and get that Kyogre's Amazing Surge attack up and rolling much faster this time around. And it's certainly possible, but the consistency with which the Amazing Kyogre is able to use that Amazing Surge attack, this is one of the reasons why there aren't a ton of players flocking to play this deck. It is right. a little bit finicky. It's tough to navigate. It is uh, a really gnarly combination when you are able to pull it off, but getting to that point where you're able to consistently use Amazing Surge is tough, and you have to dedicate a lot of deck space to doing it. So these players are shuffling up. Yeah, I was just looking at that, that, that Andrew. Andrew just pointed to the dashboard here. Only one follower away from 30,000, so if you're quick right now in the Twitch chat and click that follow button if you haven't yet, you could be follower number 30,000 here on the Tricky Gym. Congratulations to you, Andrew, man. That is incredible, assuming that we're going to get that follow here pretty yeah, soon, I would imagine. Sick. Quick, unfollow. Quick, <laughs> quick, quick, quick. Yes, ruin it. <laughs> uh, thank you guys so much for the continued support here on the channel and Chip for joining us and Absolutely. for everybody who is tuned in this weekend. It's been an incredible time here at the channel and uh it has been an awesome awesome weekend with the double header production from astral radiance ethan gonna kick things off Ooh. with the tynamo and a speed lightning energy so andrew's chosen to go second here which i think makes sense with his deck he's got a lot of setup supporters he can play and then also has the <laughs> someone unfollowed he's got twenty nine thousand nine ninety eight now <laughs> <laughs> Told you, bro. <laughs> it's cool. We'll get there. So a Andrew, Andrew's got the beacon as well. He started the Volpix once again, but Ethan, I don't think has anything. Just had to attach Speed Lightning Energy to the Tynamo, which only has forty hit points. Yeah, that's fine though. Ethan's hand is loaded. Um, he's got the Stormy Mountain comes in play. Yeah. Stormy Mountain, so he can go search out a Lightning uh, Pokemon from the deck. Usually the Blitzel. I mean, when you're Taking a look through that opening search, right? You're looking for the Zeb Strike. It's one of the first things I look for when I'm checking my prizes as the Lightning player. Is my Zeb Strike in the deck? Am I grabbing Blitzel? Because Blitzel really gets the party started. It involves into Zeb Strike. You can start sprinting and really fix some poor starts if you happen to have an unfortunate opening hand. We know that. Ethan is going to take a good look at this deck. He's got some time. You really want to check your prizes and figure out who to bench, especially, I mean, in Gym Leader Challenge formats, it's especially important to check your prizes and figure out which Pokemon you actually have access to right. as far as, like, the evolution lines go. I mean, but even more important against a deck like Andrews, where every Pokemon you put into play is a potential liability because it could get knocked out by an amazing Kyogre's amazing surge. So definitely mindful of the HP that the Pokemon he'll be evolving to have. Things like Electric and Flaffy both have 90 hit points. They can survive amazing surge. We've got things like the Zebstrika, 110 hit points. It can survive the amazing surge. Oh, and Andrew is just attaching a water to the active, and I think it's going to be, is it a Cynthia? It has a dive ball as well. And Dive Ball can search the deck now. We actually see a pretty funny card there at the bottom of his deck. I didn't realize he played the Rotom Phone. Not Rotom Phone. What is that thing? Rotom Map? I think that's Rotom Map. Something like that, right? What? <laughs> Old school card. I remember when people played this card in Gyarados. Ancient Origins. Back whenever that was a deck. You get to 
take your prize cards, count how many you have, shuffle them into your deck, and then count that many cards off the top of your deck and place them as your new prize cards. It's Rotom Dex. Yes, there we go. Is the name of the card. There have been so many of these Rotom cards at this point, man, you know? <laughs> Pretty cool. Yeah. I mean, so Andrew's playing a bunch of ways to interact with the prizes. If you happen to have some really unfortunate prizes you could always just spin the wheel with rotom decks and okay. see what happens right i actually have a really funny rotom deck story i was I will, i'll just share this really quick while andrew's playing this cynthia i was playing in a league cup top eight against one of my friends eddie he was playing gyarados ancient origins playing the rotom decks and i was playing mega rayquaza which is a not great matchup for rayquaza <laughs> because gyarados is a one prizer that can uh, do a lot of damage but the problem came whenever Eddie played Rotom Dex because he prized two of his Magikarps, needed to get them out of the prizes. And after he played Rotom Dex, he searched his deck and put all four of his double colorless energy into the prize cards off of the Rotom Dex oh as his new prizes gosh. and instantly lost the game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sometimes you get punished for spinning the wheel like that. Yes. You know, leave it up to chance and chance comes back to bite you. So off of these six cards, Andrew does have a little bit more to work with. Ultra Ball puts a couple of energies in the discard pile, which will be great for the the Milotic later on. And this can also search out something like either Rimmeraid or Sobble potentially. And then can Andrew will be able to grab the uh, the evolution of whichever basic he gets here off of the beacon this turn. Yeah, Sobble is always a great grab early on because you can use Vulpix and it's beacon attack to go search out the Drizzile. So you're basically turning your search cards into, you're turning your like Pokemon search cards into trainer search cards, right. which is really strong. And it's one of the reasons that Intellion is so good in standard format right now, but it's also why it's so good in Gym Leader Challenge. We've got a similar thing going on with the Roserade in the Grass deck. It's La Parfum ability. You're capable of turning your Pokemon search into anything search. And anytime you can turn a ball card search into a trainer card search, you're just increasing the consistency of your deck. You're increasing the potency of each card in your deck because you're basically creating some wild card situations where it's like, okay, I could fix my hand by turning this into this or fetching this with this, which is really good in the Pokemon TCG. So we'll see a beacon here. Andrew gets to search the deck for two Pokemon to put them into the hand. Octillery seems like a pretty quick and easy grab. Also, there's the Sobble there. We see Amazing Kyogre could be one of the choices. I do believe Andrew already has Milotic in hand. So he's ready to go. Ethan is trying to map out what his turn is going to look like now that he's going to have the opportunity to play his second turn. This is a very strong opening from Andrew, though. I mean, about as much as you could possibly hope for out of the first turn of the game. Ethan has got the Tynamo and the Blitzel and a pretty substantial hand size. Let's take a look at what he's got going on. The Electivire and Ooh. I think a Cynthia, but we'll check the deck first with the Stormy Mountains. Yeah, we didn't really play much on the last turn, but it was his first turn. So if there's a supporter hiding in there, he'll be able to play that here. Looks like Zapdos is the target potentially, and Ethan might just want to be aggressive. Has the pivot option already with the Tynamo. And against a deck like Amazing Kyogre, the last thing you want to do is give it time. You do no, not yeah. want to let it accrue energy in play, get more setup, get more evolutions. So being aggressive with something like Zapdos here, which can attack for just one energy on the second turn of the game and take you a prize card is definitely very good. Yeah, Zapdos is super good. And this is why, this is why I love the Lightning deck. It just allows you to be responsive and it, makes a lot of decks just fold under the pressure of the lightning deck because we're not giving you the time. I mean, right. the one thing that a lot of these decks want is just the time to set up their strategy. The grass deck wants its time to evolve into the Pokemon it needs to start getting those really powerful attacks all up and running. But the lightning deck is capable of knocking out low HP targets like the Alolan Vulpix, even the Phoebus, like what we saw out of last game, and does... Ethan have another Gus. I think I see a ball guy. Yeah, I think it's ball guy. Okay. His, his supporters in hand are teammates and ball guy, All it right. looks like. So he can play the ball guy, get a little bit more set up, but he's probably at this point, after Andrew just beaconed for the Kyogre, he's going to be really mindful about how many Pokemon get benched this turn. Yeah. 
Yeah, I do like the ball guy, though, just to evolve the Tynamo up into electric. That yeah. puts it out of range of an amazing surge. So you're kind of guaranteeing that Tynamo's survival. You can retreat the Tynamo for just the one energy cost and then evolve it up on the bench. There aren't any basic lightning energy in the discard pile no. yet, so that is a little bit unfortunate. Yeah, he's going to have a one-card discard pile here. <laughs> yes, but having the electric setup is definitely good. And Ethan could decide to just let it rip with the sprint to just start moving through the deck. Ethan going straight for the Hisui and Heavy Ball. And this is a combo that we have seen from multiple players this weekend, which I really like. The Ball Guy for the Hisui and Heavy Ball. Ball Guy is a real funny card in Gym Leader Challenge formats because... It allows you to search your deck for three cards with the word ball in their name. And in most decks, that is not very good. No. But in Gym Leader Challenge decks, it is quite good. Yes. Because you have all of the different balls in your deck because you can't play two of them. So you have Timer Ball, Level Ball, Nest Ball, Quick Ball, Ultra Ball, Hisuian Heavy Ball. Yep. Uh, and the list goes on and on. There are quite a few balls that exist. <laughs> and you are going to be playing probably like, you know, one of each of most of them in your Gym Leader Challenge deck to set up consistently. So Ethan can get either Tapu Coco or Voltorb off of the prizes here. I probably would expect to see the it's Tapu the Coco. Coco. Yeah. And also something I would love to see from Ethan is not benching it here. You don't need to bench it right now. It's not really going to yeah. do anything for you. And this is a common strategy you'll see against spread decks like Andrew that just do a flat amount of damage to everything, is you stagger when you bench your Pokemon so that after everything takes an 80 hit, then you bench a new wave of Pokemon that have no damage counters on them. So if Andrew gets off another amazing surge, all the Pokemon that already got hit once are going to be KO'd. But the rest of the Pokemon are going to be taking their first hit. So this is really smart from Ethan, as long as he decides not to bench this here, which it doesn't look like he's planning to. There we go. Retreats the Tynamo into the Zapdos. Electric getting evolved. And we'll see if there's any other cards played. There's a Nest Ball in hand. But again, yeah. that Pokemon has to go straight to the bench. So you probably want to see if you can't weather one amazing Surge before you play it. Something kind of interesting I even could have done. I don't know if this would have been correct necessarily. And he could still do it here off the Nest Ball. He could put a low HP Pokemon in play because he has teammates in hand. Huh. And he could say, all right, Andrew, I'm fine with you taking this KO because then I'll get to play teammates and I can set up some ridiculous combo. It's true. Yeah, the Manaphy is on the bench, so I'm trying to think, like, as far as ridiculous combos go, there aren't That's true. many. I mean, the ridiculous combo in this deck is certainly the amazing Raikou and its amazing shot attack. It's funny, these are both decks that feature the amazing Pokemon, right? I right. mean, what, there's probably only, like, maybe six to eight of them that exist. So I feel like I think six, there's eight, yeah. Eight, yeah. There's not many, but no. they certainly are, well, you know, mostly pretty bad. But <laughs> there are two. I thought that you were going to say they were amazing. Amazing. <laughs> yeah. There are two that are downright amazing, and that is, uh, those are the two that are featured in these two decks. So Ethan does bench the Electabuzz. It does only have 80 hit points, so it will be KO'd to an amazing search. He has the Electivire in hand. Ooh, are we fully committing? Ooh, okay. This he, is dangerous. It is definitely dangerous. He's debating it. So he'll hold off now. Yeah. I like that decision. And Thunderous Assault picks up the KO on Vulpix. Andrew can send up the Phoebus because Melodic KOs itself, so it will go to the discard pile even from the active position. There we go. Phoebus with its energy grace ability the melodic and i say phoebus anyways melodic with its energy grace <laughs> ability was so broken in expanded formats that it got banned it did because it's as it was originally designed was not supposed to accelerate to pokemon that gave up multiple prizes like pokemon ex but the design of the cards is not really intended for the expanded formats to exist and thus Melodic started interacting with cards like Tag Team Pokemon GX and now Pokemon V and VMAX and all of that, you know, stuff that was probably never intended to occur. 
So Andrew, I believe, has two lightnings in the discard pile and one water energy. All he needs is to find a way to provide for the metal energy requirement of Amazing Surge. So Colrus will be played. It's only going to see seven cards. He's already used Abyssal Hand, so it's going to come down to these seven. He needs one of the many ways that he plays to provide for that energy. A blend energy, Aurora... Even counter energy would allow it to work here, even though it would not be the best use of counter energy. It might be all he can do. So he's got two lightning energy in the discard pile. Yeah, he ultra balled two away earlier yeah. on in this game. So he does so. need maybe battle compressor. Yeah, know? that would work as well. Well, he's, then he would need to attach some other energy for turn because it does require four. Yeah. And he has the Sobble, right? In... That just got benched this turn. Oh, did it? Yes. yes. Okay. So he needs to either find counter energy or... It. Unit, and, maybe. And a way to discard an energy, because he needs to be able to get... There's the Battle Compressor, and if he finds an energy, he has it, but... I don't see an energy. No, oh, I don't see it either. What? This might be a whiff what? on the energy front. This is pretty devastating. He's got Battle Compressor to send another energy to the discard pile. He can accelerate three with Melodic's Energy Grace. And the tough thing is you absolutely have to use the Energy Grace ability this turn, because if you don't then your opponent might just knock it out regardless right. without you getting to use it. So you can see Andrew kind of reeling from this. He's going to play Battle Compressor, can put the metal in the discard pile, so he has all three different types of, uh, you know, different types of energy required for the Amazing Surge. There's a decent amount of energy in this deck, so that is really unfortunate. Two metals, there's the rainbow, a water... Yeah, just Man. an unfortunate miss. I mean, the benches weren't maxed. Professor's the letter, letter would have worked, yeah. too. The benches I, weren't maxed. You know, it's not a huge draw of chorus. Seven is, like, kind of in the middle range. You're like, uh, could hit it, I could whiff here. Yeah, Andrew had a Gladian in his hand before he played Colrus, and I wonder if he knew whether or not there were energy cards prized. Because if he knows that there's a specific energy prized, mm. Gladian would have just guaranteed it. It's true. Yeah, it's tough because he needed... He with two energy in the discard pile. No, he has three in the discard pile. Oh, he has three. He has two lightning and the water because the Vulpix had a water attached. Oh, yeah, my yeah, yeah. gosh. So he really just, he literally needed. Just a, needed the metal. A yeah. metal energy card. Or yes. a metal out. So the Gladian could have guaranteed it. Yes. If, if, assuming. If there's one prize. Right. So Ethan yeah. will take two prizes. Andrew's going to go ahead and pop the Kyogre. Throw these energies in play. There is a chance that Ethan doesn't get off an attack this turn because Zapdos' Thunderous Assault only works while it moves from the bench to the active during your turn. But Ethan plays so many ways to, to get this guy to the bench. Yeah, there are a lot of pivot cards in this deck. There's an air balloon. There's a float stone. There's an escape rope. There's a, an actual copy of Switch. Yeah, it's there's, just a pass. Yep. There's a uh, Guzma. There's... Tate and Liza, which in a pinch can get it done. Wow. And, and the fact this that is a Ethan. Big hand. Yeah. And the fact that he chose to bring out the Electabuzz last turn pays off because he can get Electivire, yeah. which is the best attacker in the deck. Yeah, definitely. Did not get punished whatsoever for the benching of the Electabuzz. And that risk is now completely. Uh, has completely paid off with the Electivire hitting the board, having a nice hefty 140 hit points, the largest HP total in the Lightning deck. Lightning yeah, yeah. is definitely more low to the ground. 140 is not really a lot of HP as far as some of the tankier decks go. You know, Water has access to Whale Lord, 200 HP, Torterra, 190, Copperage, 190, but Electivire... Uh, 140 is not too bad. It's outside that kind of magic 120, 130 range, right. which is what a lot of attackers aim to hit. Yes, exactly. So it's pretty beefy. And, of course, it will be able to survive an 80 damage Amazing Surge and can pretty easily return KO. Andrew did get the Cape of Toughness or the Giant... Yeah, the Cape of Toughness. I always get the Cape of Toughness and Giant Cape <laughs> confused. Too but many capes. Yeah, there are a bunch of them. And, uh, yeah, so that... Kyogre has a little bit more HP, but I don't know that it really matters when you're weak to lightning, unfortunately. Yeah, you're... That's the wrong cape. You're a real one if you've ever played oh, this okay. card, for <laughs> sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've uh, watched some old school, like, regionals videos and stuff like that over the years, and whenever Garboder first came out, this was the tool people put on Garboder, because Floatstone didn't exist. I remember. <laughs> uh, I was at those regionals. Yes. <laughs> yes, it used to just be giant cape, and then it was Rescue Scarf. That mm -hmm. was, like, the big one. Before and then Floatstone, and it was never looked back. It never looked back. <laughs> so, Electro Power gets played, and it looks like just a sprint finds the air balloons that can get the Zapdos out of the active. 
but there's no Pokemon with energies on them on the bench. Kate and Liza. He's good. Oh, he can do it, yeah. So long as he didn't play a supporter before the sprint. I don't think so. Also, something he could do is go for the first attack of Electivire. Is it like a Thunder Punch, something like that? Uh, because he's played Electropower. So is hitting for enough damage. It's Thunder Shock. So is hitting enough damage here with that in yeah. order to uh, to take a knockout now. Yeah, and weakness. this is one of the reasons I love Tate and Liza. Having that extra switch out is really good. Because when you're playing a deck that has these Dynamotor abilities, you really like to be able to switch in and out yeah. of the active spot, especially when you're playing cards like Zapdos that have their attack powered up if you are able to switch it into the active. And then in a pinch, you know, Tate and Liza is also a draw card. So having that dual ability basically makes it so that you have one card that's like a wild card in your deck. This is both a switch and a draw card. And when you have those cards that could be two things in one you're really maximizing the space in your deck because that not only is contributing to your consistency in your opening hands it is also contributing to the consistency with which you are able to switch your pokemon in and out of the active spot which is really important for this deck so andrew here definitely reeling a little bit has a couple of cards to put back with the ordinary rod ethan with only three prizes left I think Andrew did have the Lieutenant Surge's strategy in his hand. Really cool card in a deck like this where you're actively knocking out your own Pokemon. You can kind of control sometimes when you're going to turn this card on and make it so you can play multiple supporters. And it's specifically nice in this instance or in one of the many instances of this deck where you are just behind on prizes early on. And you can just play a bunch of supporters this turn and potentially see a ton of cards. Yeah, this is going to be the first amazing surge that we've seen from Andrew during this top eight series. But Ethan has a really stable board. Yeah. Uh, this amazing surge will not take any knockouts. That being said, if Andrew is able to amazing surge again, yeah. uh, then everything is gone. <laughs> yes, yes. So uh, and, uh, there's no scoop Ooh. up net or way to heal in this list. There is a surge and a hex maniac plus a Colrus. So Ethan is not going to have access to Dynamotor. He's not going to have access to Sprint. And Andrew gets to see eight new cards here. That's a huge turn. These are the kind of powerful pop off plays that Lieutenant Surge's strategy enables and with the hex maniac i mean what a gnarly turn saying okay i'm gonna play two supporters this turn first of all i'm gonna stop you from using your abilities yep. and then i'm gonna see eight new cards that is the dream and it is a really strong turn from andrew presuming that he hits the energy he does actually need uh, an energy. Oh, don't jinx him like uh, that. Come on. Come you on, know, Mahone. He hits it every time here, right? Oh, that's what I thought the first time. Okay. Uh, there's a letter. Yeah, we're chilling. We're chilling. We're chilling. Chillin'. The only other thing he would have loved here is a way to bench Phoebus again to try an Amazing Surge next turn. Does have Trainer's Mail, so he can look for maybe the Brooklet Hill, maybe the Nest Ball, something like that. A way to get that Pokemon out of the deck. He's not going to do it, though. It looks like he's just going with the Amazing Surge. We'll deal 80 damage to every Pokemon in play from Ethan Hegster Heggy. Yeah, no prizes taken, but the Kyogre is setting up for a full board sweep. You got to imagine at this point, if the Kyogre can use Amazing Surge one more time, then that will be a one, two, three, four, five, a five prize take. And with Hex being played, Ethan can't even just like slap down a new Pokemon Dynamotor to it and get it ready to go to like finish off the game. Yeah, Ethan might not be able to attack this turn for a KO. There is an energy on Electivire, it's but- got it's... Lysander and what, Sycamore? Okay, but if you, yeah, so we could Lysander take a knockout on like the Basculin or the Sobble or something. And if you do that, Kyogre just attacks you and lose. wins. You yeah. literally lose. So, so. He, he's got to find another Pokemon to put down that can withstand another Amazing Surge or find a way to KO this Kyogre. And I don't think KOing Kyogre is going to happen. No, you absolutely have to research here for the Muscle Band. Uh, Does he have research? Muscle Band Tool Scrapper. I'm pretty sure he's got Sycamore in the hand. I thought it was Lysander Sycamore. But we'll see. He's using his... Yeah, Storming Mountains. Storming Mountains. Take a look through the deck. 
Alecky can withstand a hit, so that's a good Pokemon to grab. He can grab the Regilecki. Yep. And there is the Muscle Band in the deck. And if he finds Muscle Band Field Blower, it's a knockout. Yeah. So I think that there's a Sycamore in his hand. But this is looking real bad if if he... I mean, you could go for the Paralysis and hope that Andrew doesn't have a way to switch. Yeah, and that's that might another, be his only play. I, if, it's if, the bare minimum. That's what he's right, doing. Right, 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 yeah. right. Is like a 50% shot of Paralysis and say, I hope you don't move this thing. Yeah, that's definitely better than bossing and taking a prize here. Yeah. So let's see what that last card is in hand. It's a Lysander, and it is a Sycamore. Yes, so he's got it. Discard draw seven. If it's Field Blower, Muscle Band, this thing is gone. Not seeing him, though. So Muscle, muscle band, band, Field Blower? No way. No, oh, he's got the gosh. one. So 140 damage. I still think it's correct to swing into the Kyogre with the Muscle Band for 140. So if you find the Field Blower yeah. next turn, then you knock it out. Take another prize card. Ethan sees it. Goes for the Muscle Banded Thundershock with the Electivire. And this paralysis could potentially be huge if Ethan can flip a heads. Yeah, the Cape of Toughness is huge here, allowing this Kyogre to withstand this hit. And it, I mean, this flip is going to be massive. Andrew, I think, has some of these switching cards in deck. Does have the Titan Liza. I don't think he has, like, Bird Keeper or anything like that. So He's it, got the Sobble in play. Yeah, so if there's a Drizzile, right? He could go search out. We've got Evolution Incense just grabbing the Flaffy out of the deck. I think just thinning the deck at this point. Yeah, and Evo he Soda. could use Evo Soda to look for Electros, which is not in the deck. Nope. Yep. <laughs> but funny, though. I do like that. Evo Soda is such a funny card. And the fact that it could get played even if there are no you know, targets in the deck. If you know there are no targets in the deck, but if the game doesn't know that, you can go. So... So was unable to use any of his abilities this turn, thanks to the Hex, and was left with this flip. This is a big one, and it is a Tails. Ooh, that is really tough. So Andrew's going to be able to attack once again, and only Regielecki will be left in play, and it has no energy cards on it. Now, the thing about the Regielecki, <laughs> let me tell you about the Regielecki. Let's hear about the Alecki. It's got a static shock attack, you know, so it could take... A knockout oh, on the Kyogre. Is Ethan setting or Andrew setting up a kind of checkmate scenario here? If Ethan goes Oof. in and takes the knockout with Alecky, even with a static shock or something like a field blower. We can wait, see. no, field blower wouldn't work. Field field blower would mean that the Basque Legion doesn't get to attack. Is, because is it says true. damage. It says damage if it was knocked out by damage from an attack during the last turn. This is true. But if Andrew evolves into Drizzile, then he will have Intellion as a potential option. That's so right. he could evolve into the Drizzle just to give himself another potential attacking option the following turn if the Kyogre goes down. But this is the power of Amazing Surge. And this is how Andrew was able to get to 5-1-1 one, and, one and in top eight with this deck. Because if you can pull off the attack with the Amazing Kyogre back-to-back -back turns, you are talking five prizes all at the same time. Yep. I mean, Ethan was pretty careful trying not to overbench, but the Kyogre swinging twice, it's 160 damage to every Pokemon in play. He really gets in there. I do think Ethan prized the Drizzile this game. Or sorry, Andrew prized the Drizzile this game. Evolution Incense finds the Intellion, and I didn't notice Drizzile in there. I don't think it's in his hand either. So it looks like that is prized, but he's got a pretty good shot to take it off the prizes here. <laughs> I'm not terribly concerned about his likelihood of finding it off the prizes. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty good. Five out of six chances. And the one thing about that is that it does not allow him to potentially attack with Intellion next turn, assuming there's probably no rare candy in this deck. No. So there is just the Basque Legion. The Basque Legion does do some amount of damage. I mean, it does 30, uh, 30 base damage with Grudge Dive. If he's hitting the Regilecki for 80 damage this turn, it will have 40 hit points left, which means that it'll just be 10 damage shy of taking the knockout on the Regilecki. I mean, my goodness, right? What a turn, though. Amazing oh, look at all surge. these Pokemon going down. Five prizes in one turn. Jeez. With Amazing Surge and Andrew 
takes the lead with just a single prize left to take. This is absolute <laughs> insanity. Ethan does have the lightning energy in hand to at least static shock. The only thing left on Ethan's board is damage counters. And Ethan doesn't scoops. have anything concedes the match. The game that is... Oh, shows the field blower. Was that in the prize cards? I think so. Oh, that is quite unfortunate. And we're going to a game three here in top eight. Yeah, these players have about 21 minutes to wrap up the set. It's not a lot of time. It's a decent amount of time. Then they have plus three turns. Andrew's got to be feeling great about that win and giving him help. Him himself a shot at a hundred more dollars if he's able to get himself into top four top eight gets a hundred dollars a piece top four is good for two hundred dollars cash a piece and then the finalist gets four hundred dollars and the grand prize for the winner of the gym leader challenge event is one thousand three hundred dollars so a lot to chase in this game three situation so we're getting word that our timer on the mm. screen is actually a little off here. We've got about 20 minutes remaining on ours, but uh, the judge at the table has given us word that they have 35 minutes, which is uh, plenty of time for probably a full doing, game. They're yeah. probably doing 90 minutes then. I thought they were doing 75. I thought 75 is what we yes. had th talked about as well. So I guess it is a 90 minute. Yes, 90 cut. minute best of three. I was not informed of that. So good to know. These players have more time than I had thought. So let's uh, let's go ahead and just cut the timer then. And, you know, they got about 35 minutes left. So they should have plenty of time to finish this. Uh, I had originally thought that it was going to be 75 minutes because I had talked to Sean. So you can blame him for that. <laughs> <laughs> and it looks like Ethan does have Zapdos. Not the best starter. Yes. Uh, but... It's a, a Pokemon you like to get in play early, but you have to find a way to get it to the bench and then back active in order to get the boosted damage. And I'm curious, does Ethan choose first or second here? I think if I'm Ethan, I'm choosing second. Yeah. Every time. And that's really kind of what I see from a lot of Gym Leader Challenge decks. It feels like players love going second because it allows you to play Gloria, Ball Guy, Bridget, whatever other search cards you may have, and try to establish your board. So Andrew, we'll see if he's got a decent opening. Yeah, he's got an Ultra Ball, trying to figure out how to play it. I mean, sacking the two energy certainly seems pretty good, but it would be nice to be able to attach one of those energy to the active. What's crazy is that it's possible for Ethan's deck to get the turn one knockout on this Kyogre, even though Zapdos doesn't hit it for weakness. The 80 damage from Thunder Assault plus an Electro Power, certainly possible. Not incredibly likely there's only two proper switch cards in the deck there's the escape yeah. rope and the switch and he need muscle band or fighting fury belt too as well right no uh, 30 plus uh that's 110 is 110 and that's how much hit points the kyogre is mm, i bet you it? five bucks it doesn't you're right it's 120 <laughs> all right it's the amazing you're right it's okay fine okay fine 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 uh it's the amazing raikou has 110 that yeah, is, yeah i'm yeah. getting my amazing pokemon mixed up i also think amazing raikou has 120 for what it's worth no shots <laughs> Yeah. No, there's no <laughs> chance. Yeah, you're bodied for okay, sure. Okay, yeah. All right. Oh, right. yeah, you're definitely bodied. Right. It's, it's one one. I'll see you in round three. All right, then. we'll see you in round three. Okay, okay. Yeah, one of them has one dead. <laughs> I promise. <laughs> I played with this card enough. He's a squishy fella. I know. So uh, that Ultra Ball is going to find a Pokemon for Andrew to help set up the board. Taking time to check the prizes, it is definitely important. Andrew's hand didn't look the strongest, doesn't have like a draw supporter, but he did have ball guy in hand. So next turn he can go get something like dive ball to go get Octillery. So because of that, he's going to set up Remoraid here this turn. Yeah, getting the Remoraid set up is going to allow Andrew to start moving through the deck as early as turn two. But what's crazy is if, like, Ethan has an escape rope, Thunderous Assault play, that Remoraid's done. This is why the Lightning deck chooses to go second. There's a lot of options. I see the Speed Lightning energy in Ethan's hand. Let's see what he's got available to him. Speed Lightning energy, Floatstone. I'm seeing a lot of good stuff. Yeah, there's Bridget. Bridget. Yep. If there's a buff in this hand, I mean, we could see a pretty serious turn one attack. With the Floatstone in the hand, you are capable of just 
retreating into any attacker that you want and announcing an attack on turn one. I mean, listen, Haymaker's doing 60 damage That's here. what I'm saying. Yeah. So if it's Electro Power, then that's a knockout, that right? That would do it. So if you find Electro Power with the Haymaker, you can make some magic happen with the Electabuzz. It's kind of like Zapdos Light. I mean, <laughs> after playing the deck you know, quite a bit, I could say Electabuzz is like your other Zapdos. He's got he's got donk potential. If you can find some buffs, you the Electro Power sixty is is a reachable uh, is like a, a HP total that a lot of little, little guys have. Right. So you can get that sixty damage with the Electro Power. You can get up to eighty if you have the Muscle Band and the Electro Power, which is a lot to ask, but it certainly happens. I do think that Electro Power is there in the deck. So Ethan doesn't have access to it. And I don't know that he'll be able to see any more cards. I guess could get pretty lucky speed lightning. off the Speed Lightning. Okay, you're saying it like it's a guarantee, bro. Listen, this we're he's, talking about a 40-something card deck, and he's drawing two. Bro, <laughs> he's got it. He's got the gnar, man. He's got the gnar. Uh, we'll see who he goes for. I think eyeing up the Electabuzz is correct. If you find that Electro Power in the deck, you're just cruising and i like the tynamo grab too saying all right i can get the elect uh the electric next turn yes yes and zapdos probably going to uh, zapdos maybe with the float stone uh, yeah. think about it I it's think not we... too bad on the zapdos because you can do plays later where you go retreat and then switch yeah. back into the zapdos yeah. or retreat then tate and liza retreat then escape rope all those things so yeah it's honestly not a bad place for the float stone to be I do, yeah, I think we're going to go back into the deck. We're going back in with the Professor's Letter. Okay. Thin the deck, two yeah. lightning energy. I mean, I'm just what I'm saying. You know, you really want to see that, you really want to see that Electro Power. You got to give yourself as much shot as possible. If you find it, that's like a game-winning find. If you just bop the Kyogre here, leave it to just a Remoraid. So certainly a really really powerful play if Ethan can pull it off. Obviously, uh, would also be, well, I guess it doesn't really matter if the Zapdos had not been started. You could go find it with Bridget, but it's also not taking a knockout on the Kyogre. Yeah, doesn't hit for weakness. But something big is that if Ethan's able to find the rope too, both of these are big finds because the rope pushes up the Remoraid, which yep. would then allow the Electabuzz to take a knockout and the Electro Power allows Ethan to take a knockout. So both Rope and Electro Power are big finds that could potentially uh, be seen off of the Speed Lightning Energy. Speed Lightning Energy going to give a draw of two. The deck is shuffled up. Let's see what does Ethan find. I'm imagining the energy going to the Electabuzz since it is the option. Yep, Electabuzz and there's two. I think we saw Eel and potentially Mareep, something like that. Yep, no ropes, no E powers. Is still going to commit a full bench here. One, I guess one open bench slot at this yeah. point. We'll still choose to go for the Haymaker, and this can lead to a two-hit KO if you find the Electivire next turn plus one more energy. Yeah. Ethan did something to note here. Uh, Professor's Letter for just one Lightning Energy, and I didn't see any others in the deck. He plays four Lightning Energies, so... I mean, there could be three prized. There could be three prized here, which is that's a lot of energies, and that makes your Dynamotor much, much weaker. I really like Ethan's decision to go in with the Electabuzz, regardless, like you said, the potential to evolve into yes. Electivire yes. and just kind of naturally tempo into the Thundershock, doing 100 damage, even if the Kyogre gets a cape. I guess a cape could potentially save it, putting it at 170 hit points, be 10 damage shy, like, Ooh. all right, but the option is there. Fighting Fury Belt doesn't save it, right? It would have to be the cape. The cape would put it 10 damage out of range of a Thundershock. So something to think about. Ball Guy is going to fetch three ball cards out of the deck. And the Hisuian Heavy Ball is one of the first cards that is found. Let's, let's see, see what these prizes are looking like for Andrew. I see a Vulpix in there. Is that Sobble? It Sobble, is. yes. Young Sobbington hitting the field. And that Sobble will be able to evolve into Drizzile and help Andrew find the cards that he needs to pull off his amazing Kyogre combo coming down the line and uh, I guess offering to shuffle cut the prizes. Sure. Yep. And let's spread those back out. 
And now Sobble can become Drizzile next turn, allowing Andrew to dig for more combo pieces. Shady Dealing's just as powerful in GLC as it is in Standard. <laughs> That's for sure. We've got Nest Ball and Dive Ball. So Andrew's going to search out a basic Pokemon to put onto the bench. I have to imagine that Phoebus has got to be a target that Andrew would like to search out. And there it is, the Phoebus coming to the front of the deck. And then Dive Ball, searching out the Octillery. Gonna allow Andrew to draw more cards, filling the hand to five. It's kind of like ye olden Bieberel. If you like <laughs> Bieberel and yeah. its industrious incisor's ability, let me tell you what, you may also like Octillery with its abyssal hand ability. They're very similar. Yes, uh, the same, in fact. <laughs> <laughs> filling your hand up to seven cards. Octillery having a little less HP. 90, but that means you can grab it with something like level ball. Level ball. ball. Which is I actually, actually very nice. I think that every single, every single deck, I would, Bieber would be better if it had 90 hit points. <laughs> oh, level yeah. ball, level ball is legal and standard right now. Yes. And uh, I think almost anybody would rather take the 90 hit points to be level ballable over the 120 HP. Yeah. Not quite as valuable as you may expect. And this is actually a huge energy to attach for turn, even though Andrew's not attacking. That splash energy means that after. This Kyogre potentially goes down in a future turn, this next turn even. It will return to hand, so Ethan, or Andrew will be able to just use it once again. Yeah, pass back to Ethan. Let's see what he's got going on. Lightning energy in the hand. Reggie Lecky. Lecky in the hand. I imagine that this Blitzel will evolve up into a Zeb Striker. We do see the Ultra Ball coming to the front of the hand, and Ethan deciding on which cards to discard. Pitching two Pokemon away, the Regilecki and the Mareep. They are easy discards since you can just put them back into the deck later with cards like Rescue Stretcher or Rod. The Electivire is the search, so not necessarily going for the Zeb Strika first, wanting to prioritize taking the KO on the uh, on the Kyogre. The Haymaker attack on Electabuzz cannot be used back-to-back -back turns. Right. So in order for that... In order for that Pokemon to attack, it would have had to evolve or switch to the bench. So evolving into Electivire and attaching the energy makes it for an easy knockout. And then Marnie, I believe, is going to be the supporter that we see. Contemplating a Rescue Stretcher first, but just going to go for the Marnie and see five cards, limiting Andrew to just four. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I, I do like this decision from Ethan to prioritize the Electivire over the Zebstrika immediately because he was going to be playing a support draw this turn, right? And the first card is Zebstrika. So yep. it works out actually just perfectly. And yep. yeah, this way you guarantee you're getting a prize this turn and getting Zebstrika is just kind of a bonus. Taking a look at this hand, uh, it's got the Amazing Raikou in it. It's got a Rainbow Energy in it, but you did not find an Electric. So you're asking yourself, okay, am I okay? Um, just keeping this hand, not sprinting. And giving up the Tynamo, if Andrew uses Amazing Surge, I think the answer probably has to be yes. Right. Um, you just let that happen. You've got the Rainbow Energy and an Amazing Raikou in hand, so it's possible if there is an Amazing Surge, maybe you can pull off some sort of nutty Amazing Raikou play next turn. And I think it's correct to just take this knockout, but my goodness, what an absolutely uh scary board state and actually okay so ethan is gonna let the hand ride i do like you know digging for the eel too they both have their value does not find it yeah four cards does not hit either a search card or the eel itself so tynamo regardless of ethan wants to let it go down it's gonna go down here if andrew can pull off the attack now andrew's hand was really good before that marnie he had the melodic ready to go pretty much he's gonna get the kyogre back to hand and he was going to be able to pop off and pull off the Amazing Surge. But now it's going to be up to this Marnie. What did it yield Andrew? Does he have a good hand? Let's see. We've seen an N. That's the top deck there. And, yep, the Kyogre is straight back to the hand. There's a Metal Energy. The two basic energy in the discard pile. It would be nice to be able to get a third to get the full effect of Melodic's Energy Grace to accelerate those energy there's a rod, it's not terribly good, and there's no pivots right now. Yeah, it doesn't look like he's pulling it off here. Does no. have an N in hand, but chooses to go with Cynthia first, maybe saving an N for later on in the game after the Zebstrika is KO'd. I like this from Andrew, just saying, all right, I want to 
get the metal energy into play, right? By putting it on the Articuno. I don't have to find it anymore. It's here. If the Articuno goes down, then the energy will naturally make its way to the discard pile. And I can use Melodic's Energy Grace to accelerate those three energy into play and start using Kyogre's Amazing Surge. This is going to be kind of a, a breath of uh, air for Ethan. I'm sure Ethan would have been kind of reeling if he had gotten smacked with the Amazing Surge this turn because of how much pressure that would have put on. Right. Losing the Tynamo and also having all of your Pokemon just one attack away from getting wiped off the board. That would have been tough. But Andrew, knowing his deck, saying, all right, that's going to be a really high roll off of this Cynthia to six cards. Probably is not likely. So I'm just going to take the slower route. Though this six-card hand does look pretty good. I mean, there's a lot of energy. I don't see, like, a, a float stone or anything, though, which is what it would have needed to get that uh, Articuno out of the active. Yeah, the only supporter Andrew has is Tate and Liza, which is not the strongest draw supporter. It only shuffles and draws five. Of course, it has the utility of allowing you to switch, potentially, at the right scenario. Quick Ball will discard the metal energy. That's the third type of energy Andrew needed to find in the discard pile. I needed to get in the discard pile. And he can grab the Manaphy here. The Raikou has hit the bench, but just putting this in play means that Ethan can't pull off any cheeky, like, you know, it Rescue Stretcher, Raihan, Counter Energy plays at some point later in the game, which is what I was going to talk about is something Ethan could maybe try to set up, but then he chose to sprint away the Raikou, so, yeah. Yeah, tough. It, it's tough hard sprint. to get to that, yeah. Tough sprint. It's weird because you don't, in any other in any other matchup, you're just putting down the Raikou. Yeah. Yeah, you're just saying, there he is. That's fine. Whatever. If he gets knocked out, I'll just, you know, revive him back later, or, you know, whatever, what have you. But against this spread deck, you have to be really careful. I mean, Ethan's already spread out to five. I do think that Ethan could probably get away without benching that Tapu Koko. It is a nice card to have, but not completely necessary. It's a mm. little bit of a luxury on the board. The Zeb Striker has to be there. The Electivire has to be there. The Dynamotor guy has to be there. The Zapdos it got was the starting Pokemon. So I think that the weakest link is probably the Tapu Koko, especially since the deck does play Air Balloon and the uh, Floatstone. So wondering if maybe that Tapu Koko will end up coming back to bite Ethan. So Ethan has the Guzma in hand, but the Blizzard Veil of Articuno is going to protect all of these benched Pokemon from being bossed or Guzma, gusted up, whatever it may be. They cannot come to the active spot. Yep. That Articuno putting in work, doing exactly what it needs to do with funny with the metal energy. It's not like it's any closer to attacking with Cold <laughs> Cyclone, which costs two water energy. But the Articuno is not really there to attack. It's just there to be a shield and to protect the bench from boss's orders. Boss's orders, Guzma, these kinds of gusting cards can be very good against the amazing Kyogre deck since it definitely wants to protect and build up its bench as it works towards its board wiping strategy. Ethan does have the opportunity to commit an energy and sprint if he goes with the energy onto the Electivire. It is going to be doing 180 damage with the Electrified Bolt attack to take a clean one-hit knockout on the Articuno. The, yeah, doing 360 damage because of weakness. Muscle Band going on to Zeb Striker. I mean, yeah. hey, listen, Head Bolt can get in there. Yep. And with the sprint, the Zeb Striker, it does make sense because now you are saying with weakness, I could do 160 damage to a Kyogre. Yeah, Ethan even pointing at the, <laughs> the Articuno. Oh, finds the escape rope. So if he doesn't want to knock out the Articuno, could escape rope. I do think that every target on the bench is more valuable than that Articuno. Yeah, right. right. Now. So that could be a big play from Ethan to push the Articuno out of the way. Unfortunately, you know, if it's Escape Rope Verse Seeker off that sprint, oh, then you're insane. like, yeah, then you're just in the money for sure. But I think Andrew has to push the Manaphy here. Yeah, it doesn't feel great, but it is the Manaphy. Yeah. Yeah. You can get it back. It's a basic Pokemon, you know, stuff like the Sobble. You have to get it back, and it has to be in play for a turn in yeah. order to have effect. If you're giving up the Manaphy as your choice, uh, Ethan fine. does have to switch. Yeah, he <laughs> yeah. might. He may have just said that he was switching and then yeah. uh, retreating immediately. But yeah, he does have to switch into does either. At least show us. Yeah, you know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's good. Okay. Yeah, maybe. Right. Yeah, maybe he'll show us. 
But who, he, who are you promoting, Ethan? He's got a couple of supporter <laughs> options here in hand. I imagine he probably just – he maybe said he switched into Zapdos sure, and retreated, sure. so we just can't hear the players at the table. All right, here we are. Thanks, Ethan. <laughs> <laughs> and then <laughs> Colrus. Well, certainly, yes, if you're going to Colrus, definitely do the switch first, you know, uh, because you, you wouldn't ever do that retreat if you're about to do a – you know, yes, you uh, shouldn't. You shouldn't. You ought not to. Even though, like, you're most likely attacking with Electivire, you it is totally optimal to leave up the free retreat Pokemon because theoretically, whatever you grab off Colrus could change what you want to do this it turn. Could inform your yeah. decision. Exactly. Even yeah. though we know Ethan is 99.999 percent of the time attacking with Electivire here, you never know. I don't know that there's any combination of cards that make him not want to attack with Electivire here, but it is still correct. You just yes. you just do it. Uh, because good practice makes good play, right? So you yeah. just want to get in the habit, you know, get in good habits of saving your retreat until the end of the turn, until all of your information is uh, gathered. Does find the electric here, so an Amazing Surge will not be taking a KO on the Tynamo. It's good. And he can use Dynamo to this turn. I do believe a Lightning is in the discard. Yeah, can start accelerating energy, but where else, right? At this point, is there any other attacker that you really want to start setting up? Yeah, yeah, I mean, maybe the Zipstrika, he put the Muscle Band on it. It can hit through a Kyogre that's got, like, a Fury Belt on it yeah. for enough. It actually does not KO a Pokemon, the Kyogre, with the Cape of Toughness, though, so. Nope. Yeah, so it's a little bit weird. You definitely don't want to, like, put down the Regilecki, but you also kind of do. <laughs> it's not great. Uh, you are taking out the you are taking out the uh, the Manaphy here, or the whatever it is, a Fion Manaphy. That's a Manaphy. That's totally a Manaphy. That's right. Yeah. It is, yes. <laughs> they look so similar. They, they're like... They're, as far as I'm concerned, it's the same Pokemon. Yeah, man. They're they're little baby water dudes. I don't know. <laughs> little, like, what even are they? <laughs> they're little water drops. Bro. Yeah, they're little baby water drop fellas. <laughs> Why? They both need to exist. I'm not exactly sure. <laughs> I couldn't even tell you, like, the physical differences between the two Pokemon. Fiona's smaller, bro. And then what's the one that's, like, a little, like, uh, a little fish, a little manta ray thing? The Mantine? Or Mantike? Oh, yeah, bro. All three of those? There's no way. There's Mantike, Manaphy, and Fion. I don't know the differences <laughs> between any of those. Mantike looks totally different than the other two. I know, but the name, bro. <laughs> They're all little Mantike, water Mantike, Manaphy... And Fiona. Fiona. Yeah, they're all little baby water fellas. Yeah. yeah, well, Fiona, you know, does start with a P, so that's a kind of a big difference, but... <laughs> little water fellas, yeah. <laughs> so Andrew sends up the Articuno. I think he does have the Irita in hand. So that can grab the Melodic out of the deck. Kind of curious that he sends up the Articuno here. Irita is going to be the play. Now he has to find a way to switch this Articuno out of the active. Yeah, needs to be able to pivot, so not... Not just committing the Phoebus to the active position to use Energy Grace. That's interesting. Is the Melodic in the deck? It is. It is. It, okay. it was at kind of the front of the deck there. Okay. Actually eyeing up Drizzile as the water Pokemon. Can also get, of course, an item card. Looks like Level Ball may be the choice. I wonder if we would see something like a you know, pop of the Melodic and then put the Phoebus back into the deck right away and then level ball go get the Phoebus to try that to get it set back would up. Be sick. Yeah, 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 yeah. That would be gnarly, man. That's pretty insane. And those are the kind of plays that are regular for this amazing Kyogre deck. It's exactly what it's built to do. Oh, and he can do it. Uh, he can. He's got the rescue stretcher yeah, in hand. Yeah. That is huge. So it can pop the melodic, send two energy cards to the discard pile. And it's not gonna do it quite like this though. He maybe wants to value getting the Manaphy back. I mean, the threat of Amazing Raikou is always looming. It is. It's very real. Especially, I mean, I guess it's not super real, though, if he's not <laughs> taking any knockouts. Like, what are you, you know, you're kind of worried about Raikou, but Raikou can't really come into play unless there's going to be a Raihan play or unless there's going to be a counter energy play. Those are the two ways that this particular build of Lightning can get a Raikou built up out of nowhere. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there was, I was playing a uh, multi-switch for a little while. It can allow some yeah, yeah, yeah. really spicy plays. That way you can't really account for, you know, what your opponent can do as easily. But this, uh, I don't think that this list that Ethan's playing is running the multi-switch. So Andrew grabs the Drizzile from the deck. Looks like he's just going to put it into the hand. I think that he's going to have to play a Tate and Liza here. 
in order to switch, which is kind of unfortunate. He could have just sent up the Phoebus. He had the Arita in hand, and then Melodic knocks itself out, and then you power up the Kyogre, and then you don't have to use your supporter for turn just to switch. Right. We go Drizzile, Drizzile's Shady Dealings. Counter it. Oh. Whoa. Okay. Oh, this is spicy. So he is going to use Cold Cyclone. It deals 70 damage, and then you move all water energy attached to the Articuno to one of your benched Pokemon. So counter energy can get pushed down to the Kyogre, and this will set up a two-hit knockout on this Electivire so that Kyogre has a chance to survive for two turns. Yo, that's kind of crazy, man. Andrew is galaxy-braining this right now. Yeah, and with the escape rope getting played... He knows that the everything on the bench is safe. Yes, the escape rope boss play is no longer an option. Could do something, you know do something crazy has andrew already played a supporter this turn he has not could like hex which would just be so annoying right yeah if you just if you just throw the hex here it looks like he's gonna get evolution incense maybe just prepping for an intelligent next turn to yeah i think kind of piece together everything he wants yeah if he can like hex plus amazing surge next turn that would be pretty crazy and then he also could theoretically combine it with the cape of toughness that is another card he would love to find because that zip striker is ready to start attacking as long as he gets one more energy card and it is able to one hit ko the amazing kyogre right now but with cape of toughness kyogre would actually hang on with just 10 10 HP. Oh, that's right. Andrew did play Arita this turn. It's been a long turn. That's but true, yeah. we'll move the energy back to Kyogre wow. with the Articuno dealing 70 damage, and it's so crazy. The water deck... Yeah, we gotta has, get that damage on the <laughs> Electivire ...has here. not really done too much yet. You know, Ethan's taken two prizes. Andrew has put 70 damage on the board, but there's a storm coming. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot happening here that Ethan has to try and prepare for, but... It almost feels like there's too many Pokemon in play. There are a lot of Pokemon in play, that is for sure. Andrew also could try to combine the next turn with, like, an N or something like that. Um, or Sur imagine if he went, like, Surge, Hex, N. Yeah. Like, so some crazy turn like that. And then you make it really difficult for Ethan to have any sort of response. Yeah, that could be really tough. There are some ways to deal with Manaphy as... The Lightning player, I don't think the Ethan has any text in the list for it right now. I mean, you could play Hex Maniac yourself. Does he have Silent Lab in the list? There's no Silent Lab no, right okay. now. Um, it's tough. Uh, for the most part, you just want to gust the Manaphy and knock it out, but that has not been an option No, with that Articuno there. That is true. Yeah, the uh, Blizzard Veil really kind of protecting all these Pokemon, doing what it is meant to do. We actually just got a card in the new set that has a really similar ability to this, that new Diancy. I'm really excited to see what kind of cool yeah. decks players come up with utilizing that card, protecting their benched basic Pokemon. Yeah, protecting the bench from boss's orders is really big in the Pokemon TCG because of how powerful gusting up two prize Pokemon and knocking them out is. Ethan, I think maybe just considering a play, asking Andrew, you know, what he's got going on in the discard pile. You got the three energy need for energy grace. Oh, yeah. And trying to figure out what to do with this hand. Is there something that he wants to dig for? Is there a you know, quick ball? Maybe just check the deck. Kind of take mental stock of what options you've got left. It's at these points in the game where, you know, you're really trying to just make sure you're taking the optimal step forward. And it's really hard. I mean, your deck is over 50 different cards and you're trying to make right. sense of all of them and all the different routes that playing each of them in a specific order could uh you know could create and then you want to pick the best routes going forward so it's really tough to navigate the gym leader challenge deck sometimes because of how complex the turns can be and uh how each resource can needs to be utilized for a very specific play. If Andrew can not use Melodic here, that would be really good. And he's got Aqua Patch plus an energy card in hand. And I think Tate and Liza. So he could Aqua Patch to the Kyogre, attach for turn, and then just Tate and Liza into the Kyogre. And then Melodic is there set up to pop once again on the next turn. 
if the active Kyogre would have gotten KO'd. Yeah, it's so brutal because they're, oh my gosh, all like the spicy plays from Ethan's deck are pretty much turned off by that Manaphy. That yeah. Manaphy yeah, yeah, yeah. is making it so that all the double prize takes that Ethan wants to do is the Lightning deck. They've pretty much all been negated throughout the series. Ethan was able to take that game one, uh, really tough game two, getting his board wiped and now just kind of seeing the the potential of the Kyogre to do it again, unable to disrupt Andrew's hand with the Octillery out and the Intellian. Andrew just able to route his way through this game perfectly and can use Intellian to pull off a pretty crazy surge play this turn. There's a bunch of different things Andrew can do here. Let's see exactly how he decides to route it. I would love to see that cape of toughness get put on the Kyogre. That is the number one thing I want to see him do this turn. He is using Shady Dealings and Tellian, and that Shady Dealings can grab any two trainers from the deck. The two cards he grabbed immediately were Lieutenant Surge's Strategy and Teammates. Now, Andrew's got all six prizes to take. Yes. This is really coming down on the wire. Ethan's got five Pokemon in play. Yes. Each of them will get, they will get knocked out um, with two amazing Surges. Ethan, I believe has Field Blower in the hand. Okay. I think that that's why he's just sitting on this hand. Okay. Because he's just waiting for the Kyogre to come up and wants to pop it with the Zeb Strika, which is built up, right? So I think Ethan's saying, like, okay, uh, I need to bench a new guy, uh, start loading it up, you know, next turn, even under Hex. I know that the Hex Kyogre is a thing, so I have to look out for that. What I'm hoping is that I don't get Hex disrupted, like, then like, N, yeah. Yeah, Hex, N. Like, that. that's... <laughs> yeah, the N is in the deck for Andrew, and this is a pretty good turn to play it. It looks like he's doing teammates. He so is using teammates, but he's played Surge. Yeah, so it's Surge teammates, so it can't be Hex Disrupt. Right. You know, which is at least pretty good. Yeah, it, it, but uh, if your opponent's sitting on a pretty sizable hand here, what's more valuable? Hexing right. them so they can't Dynamo or There's already two energy on the... Zebstrika, or, or is it N? N? Yep. And uh, hope that they don't, you know, off the three cards plus sprint, hope they don't get there. Yes, it's really tough. A really tough call. I think that Andrew certainly wants to go get the cape. He's already got the um, the retreats for the active. Is that a float stone on the active? Or Guzma? No, there's no float stone on the active. Okay, there's yeah. no float stone. He's, he's either going oh, to pop his active or... Oh, that's just a yeah. literal melodic. Yes, I'm yeah. starting to go cross-eyed. Okay. So There's he's eyeing the up in, and then he gets one more trainer or one more card. It, it can be anything, thanks to, um, thanks to the teammates. Yeah, and is looking at potentially Rod. I mean, really, just kind of grinding this decision out. If I like, are we using the melodic this turn? I think that we said that doesn't necessarily have to. I it's think with possible. the way he's playing this, he's planning to use it. Okay, because so no I don't. Point. His only case. switch card in hand is Tate and Liza. Okay. So I think this line means that Melodic is going to be used, and then he's going to try to piece together the Raihan stuff in order to attack with the next Kyogre, potentially. Right. It is really neat to see this amazing Kyogre deck doing its thing out here with Astral Radiance. I think that this deck gets a big buff in the form of Hisuian Heavy Ball, the Hisuian Basque Legion, uh, really making good use of these new cards from Astral Radiance. And then we'll see where Andrew goes using Melodic's Energy Grace and ability. Such a good combo with N here because he gives Ethan one more prize card, and that's one less card Ethan will draw off of an N. And this Kyogre is loaded up and ready to go with a three energy on it and a counter energy has got everything that it needs to start swinging with its amazing surge because of the electivire getting softened up now it is going to go down with the 80 damage to everything on amazing surge and going to be coming down the intellion getting powered up too and yeah. the Intellion's a serious attacker at the oh, end yeah. of the game. I mean, when Pokemon only have, you know, so many hit points left, especially because they've been surged, it's uh, yeah, it's definitely a potent attacker. At 160 hit points, pretty tough to knock out, too. Yeah, even for the Lightning deck, and especially since Electivire is going down, Zebstrika is going to have low hit points. It will probably be the thing that gets KO'd if, you know, Zebstrika comes up and KOs the Kyogre. 
Ethan here off of the end to two plus a sprint is going to be looking for field blower and of course can also play supporter cards to try and find it as well. And that's what he needs if he wants to KO this Kyogre this turn. And I think his only path to KOing it is through Zebstrika. I think it has to be a field blower grab this turn. Yes, I think the field blower grab with the Zebstrika would be big. You've only got one Dynamotor available to you. Your opponent's not going to be up on prizes, so you can't do anything crazy like... Oh, he gets play. research off of the end. Look at this guy. We'd love to see it. <laughs> yes. There's also Raihan, so he can guarantee oh whatever gosh. he wants. Yes. yes. So he can guarantee the field blower. Yes, he can guarantee, which actually might just be the play. Yeah. Yes. So you would do that. You could guarantee the field blower, but you... Okay, so then you probably go get the basic that you want to start dynamotoring to with the with yeah, the stadium. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, so I think that Raihan's probably the play. Ethan playing very quickly, saying, all right, I've got it, I've got it, i got it. Off the two cards, I got it. Here we go. This is what I need. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very close game. I only got to take two knockouts. All I have to do is uh, not lose. And, and I think he did put the Aleki back with the Rescue Stretcher earlier on in the game. So what he can do is Stormy Mountains, yep. go get the Reggie Aleki, which is what Star he's doing. Start charging it up. Yep. And then Raihan to, to it. To it, Dynamo And Dynamo, yep, 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 yep. And you're setting yourself up for, oh, game-winning sweep. This is so gnarly, man. Everything is coming down to this. The Field Blower needs to be found. The Raihan play is going to be huge. I think he's also got a special charge to yep. put a couple of energy back into the deck. That's big because it gives you more outs to find an energy attachment if it really gets down to the wire and you need that final energy to take the knockout with Terra Spark. Raihan is the supporter of choice, and it makes sense with a couple of lightning energy in the discard pile. You can attach the one, go into the deck, and find that field blower, which is incredibly important for this turn. And it's the card Ethan grabs instantly. Field blower discarding both Cape of Toughness and the Float Stone. And Zeb Stryka's head bolt is gonna get in here for a KO. Known for its sprint, known for being able to add support to this deck. Don't sleep on it as an attacker, though. Yo, this is gnarly. He's got sprints, so gonna let the hand roll as well, saying, I don't really need to hang on to this research. Just thin the deck out of the bad yep. stuff. Let's All just get through it. All he needs is to find a energy card for the next turn, pretty much. Uh, I don't know that he actually even has... Oh, my goodness. He does not have... Uh, and another lightning energy in the discard pile, does he? Oh, no. So this is actually no dynamotor happening. Wait. And there is not going to be a dynamotor occurring next turn because of the fact... Wait a second. Yeah, I don't think... I think he prized too many lightning energy, so he doesn't have it. I think he's just got the one and are, the two. Are his last two, two cards... Prizes are both lightning wow. energy. Wow. I think that they are, they are. I think I've only seen one basic lightning energy pulled so far. Maybe he found one, but it's in the deck. That is absurd, and we are seeing that time has been called. Ethan is turn zero. Oh my gosh, this is really tough. Ethan looking in the deck saying, okay, what do I have? I can't sprint next turn. Uh, I can't do anything. He really needed to find an energy to attach yeah. to the Regilecki. This is potentially a game-losing situation, not having an energy to attach to the Regilecki. Putting the Voltorb down is fine that's good because it can allow you to is it fine i don't know well i mean i don't know that andrew's gonna pull off an amazing surge definitely not this happening turn. right yeah so wants to get something down and getting this down you know that andrew's gonna be trying to ko this substrika and likely the other target will be the electric. electric on the bench it's only got 70 damage on it so it's only got 20 hp left so it's yes. perfect for the aqua bullet or it only has 10 hp left excuse me oh my gosh this is so tight this is so tight. Maybe if First Seeker's left in the deck, it could be another Raihan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is what I was kind of thinking. It's First Seeker off the prizes. What? That's so it wasn't Seeker. a lightning energy. So no. he can Raihan next turn. Yes. And has just one prize card left. This is crazy. That is so nuts. Finds the First Seeker, the perfect card. Can give him the option. Andrew has the routes to take a double prize knockout. He can knock out the Zeb Strika and the Electric. Try to eliminate these options from Ethan. I wonder if he can in again. If he can get an energy attachment for turn and find Versus Seeker to play in one more time. He has Versus Seeker. He oh has Versus gosh. Seeker. He's going to in Ethan to one card. And Ethan's going to lose the Zeb Strika. Yes, but this is turn one, so Andrew's only got two more turns to play. He's got this turn. Oh, my gosh. And he's got one more turn. 
So in order to not lose on the prize race, he needs to take four prizes over the course of the next two turns. So let's just explain exactly how things work once we go to time in Top Cut, because it's different than in Swiss. We are in single elimination. There has to be a winner of this game. There cannot be a tie. Right. Normally in Swiss, whenever things go to time, plus three turns, at the end of three turns, if no one has won the game, it is a tie. Yeah. But in Top Cut, after plus three turns, it is the player who has taken more prize cards that is the winner. And this being Andrew's turn one, it means he's going to have to take a double KO this turn and then find a way to take another Aqua Bullet KO next turn. And I don't actually know if he can do that because Zapdos and Tapu Koko, which are the damage Pokemon on the bench, they both have 30 hit points remaining, and Aqua Bullet only does 20 damage to the bench. Ethan looking for a miracle off of this N to 1. Andrew needs to take four prizes in order to stay in contention because if it's tied, it goes to the next knockout. Yeah, if, if they are tied on prize cards, that means whoever takes the next prize would win the game. Whoever is the first to go ahead on prizes. Trainer's Mail sees the top four. This it's is the Rotom Dex. Okay, the Rotom Dex, sure. Can try to, you know, redo the prizes if he wants to. You know, probably not necessary. He's about to take two right now. He's got the Aqua Patch. I think all the chips are on this Intellian. I mean... If the Intellion goes down, obviously he loses. There is no other backup tacker. There is no He needs to make of... sure we shuffle the deck after the trainer's mail. I think he's just debating. Yeah, it looks like it will be a Rotom Okay, phone that he we're going in, bro. How does this card work again? So he gets to take the five prize cards that he has shuffle them and into the deck. shuffle them into the deck, and then he counts out five different cards and puts them back as his new prize Not going to lie, I'd be incredibly nervous playing this card. I'd just be like, dang, bro, I just feel like I'm creating a game state major. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? Where are my prize cards? <laughs> yeah, just take my prize cards and shuffle them in. Nothing feels more illegal than that. <laughs> yeah. Ethan takes the Rotom phone, throws it across the room, yes. and then they can't find it. It's like, Judge, my opponent has no prize cards. <laughs> <laughs> yes, what has he done? <laughs> uh, he shuffled them into the deck. <laughs> so here we go. So now Deckle five cards. Cuts, five new prize cards just kind of spinning the wheel. And Andrew will be taking two of them with the Intellion, presumably knocking out the Zeb Striker and the Electric, making it so that Ethan does not have an easy out to victory. And with an end to one, no sprint as a backup. The Electrode would obviously be the hero if he can find that Electrode here. Aqua Patch being played maybe just as a pivot if Andrew had something like Guzma potentially. Maybe just trying to Scoop thin cards Max. out. Yes. He's digging here with the Octillery, Finds Compressor, and Rod. Rod. What was that other card? I uh, see Compressor, Rod, maybe maybe Field Blower. Okay. Uh, which could remove. No. There's Basque Legion Flow and stone. the Tate. No. It was Brooklet. Brooklet Hill was okay. that last one. Cool, cool, cool. This is close, Andrew. Man, this is so gnarly, Chip. I really have no idea who's going to be able to pull this off. It is all up to Ethan's top deck. Ethan, if Ethan's able to refine that Versus Seeker, that's game. That's, right. That is game. He's going to have the top deck and the card that he has sitting right there, which he has not looked at yet. No, he has he not. He does not know. None Look of at us the know. hands on the uh, head. This is a tense situation. Yes. Everything is coming down to this. So hold on to your seats. This is turn one of time. Ethan will be turn two of time. And Andrew's going to be going to three prizes remaining. We'll have to take another double knockout. So let's look at it. Is it even possible? The Zapdos has got 80 damage on it. The Tapu Koko has got 80 damage on it. Both of them have, what, 110 hit points? The Tapu yes. Koko? Yes. Yeah, so they can't be KO'd by Aqua Bullet. No, they cannot. So I think that that's what Andrew's digging for. He's wondering, like, is it possible for me to to ham outs like uh, another Kyogre. Is it even possible? I don't know yeah. that it is, but like, does he have, he like almost has to. Yeah, I mean, he cannot attack with, I mean, he cannot use the Melodic because that gives Ethan the win. Yeah. And I don't know that he has another way to power up Kyogre without something like Raihan and obviously can't use Raihan because that also means Ethan would win. This is so nuts. Here we go. The double knockout from Andrew. Andrew going to three prizes remaining, but Ethan is turned two of time. And his top deck, let's see, is it a revive that's in his hand? It is a revive. Okay, he's got revive, free retreat, Tapu and Coco. the top deck is 
Switch. It's a Switch. That is not great. Those two cards are not fantastic. He's going to take a look through and see, all right, does Revive actually do anything for me? At this point, Ethan is trying not to lose. He's like, okay, what can I do? Who can I promote to try and make it so that Andrew cannot take three prizes or even two cannot take two prizes on the next turn because that's what he has to do because if andrew takes two prizes on the next turn then it goes to next prize wins right yeah but i just i don't know that andrew can i don't think he can i think ethan's saying all right i'm gonna retreat into my fattest dude and we're gonna pass it over to you it's all i've got and wow we just have to you know say i hope you don't have it that was a really gnarly end to one and the Zeb strike a knockout pass, but this is turn three of time. Ethan's got to be feeling pretty good about this. Uh, the Aqua Bullet attack on the Intellion does 120 damage and then 20 damage to one of the bench Pokemon. That Kyogre threat has been neutralized. Obviously, if there's yeah. an amazing surge here, it's game, set, and match. But this, I mean, this is heartbreaking for Andrew because I think that if this game does not get decided by time, I think Andrew could win this. It's obviously going to come yeah. down to Ethan's next draw if he can get out of this. But I don't even know how Ethan's going to power up an attacker. It would have to literally be Raihan. the Raihan top deck, and that is it. It has to be Raihan top <sighs> deck. I want to see if the game does get decided by time. I want to see the top deck. Yeah. I want to know, man. I got to know. I got to know. I'm a looker. I, I take <laughs> I take peeks, bro. Just take a peek. See? Yeah, man. It's hurt me before, but I, I'm always taking a look after the fact. Man, and there's no way to, like... I mean, we're playing GLC, so there's no, like, option to Galarian Zigzagoon, like, nothing nope. like that. Yep. Yeah, just take a little peek. I don't think that the route is there for Andrew. This being turn three of time, this is the last turn of the match. They had 90 minutes to figure this out, and it's all down to this. This game three is certainly one for the ages. This is a really tight game, but I don't know that Andrew's got the gas in the tank to be able to take it home. I mean, he's not going to be able to do it this turn. Can't do it. And then that means that Ethan just wins. Because if it's one prize to two when turn three is over, yep. then the win the winner goes to the player with the prize lead. Ten damage away from tying this game up. Just ten damage separating Andrew from being able to continue this match. Wow. And there's the handshake. Ethan barely skidding through with that one and just gets up and walks away. Wow. What an insane game. I'm not going to lie, bro. <laughs> I'm reeling from that one. Yeah. That's was crazy that was absolute madness and insane best of three ethan sealing game one convincingly and then andrew marching back with a vengeance in game two and three game three as close as they come ethan having the game winning card with the versus seeker for raihan getting it end back into the deck end into trash with just one prize left to take but Andrew not able to march back enough because of the field blower rip and the ability to knock out that amazing Kyogre that one turn. If Ethan was not able to neutralize the Kyogre, it was Andrew's match to win. That match was crazy. Yeah. I mean, and there's so much on the line at this point. I mean, this is just top eight. Yep. These guys are moving from, you know, winning 100 bucks to winning 200 and a massive $1,300 up at the top. And, yeah. you know, Ethan Hegster Heggie is going to be competing for that once again. Unfortunately for Andrew, just didn't quite get there. So, so close. Feel bad for him. He played really well, though, and with a super cool deck nonetheless. Definitely. I know these guys have got to be, like, pulling their hair out. Playing a best of three in gym leader challenge format in top eight with so much money on the line is nuts. Honestly, in my mind, it's peak Pokemon. <laughs> this is what it's all about. That's what it's about, that, man. That's nuts, man. Watching a best of three in this format with money on the line, man, I have no other way that I'd rather spend a Sunday. This is fantastic. So... That is a job well done by both players. Another top eight appearance from Andrew and Ethan advancing to top four in his first ever gym leader challenge tournament with the lightning deck. Since that match went to time, I think we're going to get right on rolling with top four. We'll be right back with top four in just a moment. Don't go anywhere. Top four ready to get underway here at the Tricky Gym Full Grip Games 2.5K Gym Leader Challenge Astral Radiance Tournament. Kenny Pakala on the left and Trevor Redding 
on the right. And we have an exciting one here. It's going to be a grass mirror. And not just a grass mirror. These players are playing the same 59 cards. So 59 of their cards are the same. Just a one card difference between these two lists. Yes, Trevor is an experienced player in the Gym Leader Challenge format. Has put a lot of work into many different archetypes. I know the grass is one of the decks that he respects above all others, really. I mean, he considers grass to be one of the best decks in the formats. Whenever Trevor is talking about uh, needing to be a competitive deck in Gym Leader Challenge, he is almost always talking about what you need to do to be able to beat grass. And it's that reverence for grass that I think has made Trevor want to bring the grass deck to this Gym Leader Challenge. Oh my God, look at those prizes. Holy smokes. Just play a Tsui and Evie Ball. That's a lot of grass energy. <laughs> that is five grass energy. What? Prized I, whoa. <laughs> that's, that's, a Quite bad. A little absurd. <laughs> no Pokemon prize. You're chilling. Yeah. <laughs> That's Well, Trevor's crazy. like, I've got every single uh, Pokemon that I need in the deck. So that's pretty good, you know, but on the other <laughs> side, I, Trevor does play 12 grass energy. So there's quite a few in this list. And that's actually the one card difference. Trevor plays a grass energy uh, over what some other trainer that Kenny plays. I'm sitting here trying to look at this list and figure it out, but th there's so many. There's 34 trainers in Kenny's list, 33 in Trevor's, and everything's a one of, obviously. So Actually, it's a little hard to identify what the difference is. <laughs> <laughs> that, like, really hurts if you're Trevor because, yeah. uh, well, not necessarily that they're all grass. Like, I feel like that's probably a storm he can weather. Um, but the worst thing is that it failed to find a basic. You actually, oh, yeah, sure. you actually would just really love that to have found a basic Pokemon to put into play to help set up for the next turn. The only basic search that he has in his hand is the quick ball, right? And so the quick ball can go to get a Pokemon. He's also got a beach. So he's got to ask himself like, okay, am I going to quick ball and then beach for some cards? There's not really a great way to pair the hand down. So, you know, he's not going to have a lot of great options to be able to draw off of the beach. And he could also end up just kind of giving Kenny more of an advantage than he gives himself with the beach. So sure. it's tough. Are you going to be stingy with the beach and try to deny your opponent that explosive draw? Maybe use it the following turn? Or do you just lay it down and say, I'm going to try and uh, start pacing through my deck? Decides to go for the Grookey with the quick ball yeah, and attach a grass to it, and I think you do. You just have to say, eh, I, I need more. I mean, with Kenny already having three Pokemon in play and uh, and you not having a lot of great options in the hand, I think Trevor has to go for the beach here. And Trevor's actually got some pretty spicy stuff in the hand. There's Roselia in the active, Grookey on the bench, and in his hand he's got Timer Ball and Evolution Incense. Yes. Which means that what Trevor could do next turn is Evolution Incense, grab the La Parfum, the Le Parfum Roserade, go get Rare Candy from the deck, and then Timer Ball to get Rillaboom and start swinging for 140 damage right away with that Rillaboom. Yeah, Kenny is playing Gloria turn one, the ideal setup. If you're playing grass, honestly, turn one Bridget, turn one Gloria. Oh, these yeah, are so good. exactly how you want to start off the game. I'm pretty sure that these players are both playing Avery in their deck too uh, for the grass mirror because grass doesn't like to play parallel city uh, because of the fact that you're going to decrease the amount of damage that your grass guys do. Right. But being able to hit your opponent with a well-timed Avery can slow them down, make them discard things that they don't want to discard on the bench. And we see Kenny going straight for the Cricket Tot. Yeah, we have talked about this Cricket Tot with that bug hunt attack, letting you search your deck for three basic Pokemon, mostly here for the Cricket Tune, obviously, but that is a pretty dang good attack on an evolving basic. I don't know, man. Why is the Cricket Tot now my favorite card in the grass deck? <laughs> Look at the artwork, man. Why is he on the edge of a cliff with like a, a thunderstorm in the face? So epic. This is like the world's most epic Cricket Tot, and nobody cared until 2022. <laughs> you know, nobody yeah. gave this Cricket Tot a second look until just just now. Nobody ever thought about this card. Came out back in 2015 in the Breakpoint expansion. 
And just now in Gym Leader Challenge, it is finding a place. There we go. We've got Timer Ball, Tails, and Tails. No! no! This play would have been so good from Trevor. Even has Boss's orders to have been aggressive after something. I think there was there an escape rope in hand, too. There like, was. He had everything and hits double Tails. Just one heads there, and Trevor is popping off, capable of of getting wow. the Rillaboom into play, but Double Tails, that's the heartbreaker. Only 25% of the time, but every single time you flip Double Tails on Timer Ball, you remember. Oh, you remember. You <laughs> always remember it. We've seen, I think, three Timer Balls today, and two times it's been a, uh, a, been a Double Tails. So. Yeah, well, you know, Timer Ball deniers will tell you that the card actually is 75% Double Tails. They'll just tell you that there's something about the card that's incredibly cursed. They can't have... explain it with reason or mathematics, but they will tell you that it's cursed. <laughs> I have heard many times that Timer Ball is just a blank card. Blank card, yeah. So uh, Timer Ball deniers are very serious about their Timer Ball prejudice, yes. So Trevor, unable to go for the crazy Rare Candy Rillaboom play he really wanted to set up, but still has a solid turn two lined up here with a Gloria Filling the bench with a bunch of Pokemon. Looks like a Bulbasaur. We see the the uh, Turtwig coming down. Shining Genesect as well. And what's nice is that Trevor put an energy on the Grookey, but he can just move that over to the Genesect here if he wants to. Energy reload that ability, moving those energies around you know, from something in play to the Genesect. Can actually just hold off and see him wait if he wants to do that next turn, potentially. And we'll just Tropical Beach to draw a couple more cards. I think drew a couple more energies, which is kind of ridiculous, since he already has a couple in hand, and there's five in the prizes. Yeah, Kenny's board is looking really stellar right now. Trevor is able to, thankfully, just get some more Pokemon into play and say, all right, I'll be good to go next turn. Here's a timer ball, and it is double. Well, there's where the heads went. Yeah, Trevor is to... sitting there thinking, that must be nice, buddy. <laughs> yeah, feels good, man, to be in a, you know, 59-card mirror. And, uh, you know, someone's getting double tails on Timer Ball, and someone's getting double heads. <laughs> yep. And this is going <laughs> to allow Kenny to really start setting up explosively. Kenny is playing very quickly. You could tell that Kenny's very experienced playing cards, and I've seen Kenny around. He's a local player to this area uh, very experienced card player has been in the scene for a while. And even though this is his first tournament in the gym leader challenge format, he looks like he understands exactly what this deck needs to do and how he needs to navigate it in order to come out on top. I mean, he's been playing this grass deck all day. And honestly, when you get the grass deck firing on all six cylinders, it is a blast. Look at this thing. He's Grottle, setting up so well. Sun drenched shell. I mean, this is the dream, right? This is why grass is so good, right? Kenny eyed up the Peonia, I believe, off the Le Parfum. So there must be something really good in the prize cards that he wants to get access to. And look at this turn two. Four stage ones in play. Are you kidding me? Yeah, this is the dream. This is absolutely gnarly. And looking at the prize with the Peonia, I think that there's Genesect. something that Kenny is looking for, and I'm not sure that he saw it. He does get Genesect here. Looks like there's another Pokemon, maybe. I think that is... Is that the Rillaboom? It's the Torterra. Yeah. So maybe that is what he was looking for. Okay. Yeah, it might have been the Torterra. That is a great find off of the Peonia, but now just deciding what to put back into the prizes. La Parfum allowing both of these players to consistently get their decks rolling on their early turns of the match. I mean, isn't this nuts, dude? Like, they're, I, I promise they're standard decks that are not this consistent, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I, look at this board, man. There are, popping off. there are five stage ones in play. Five different. There are six different, six different, no, five different stage ones. Six yeah. different Pokemon, five yeah. different stage ones in play. This is getting... A little ridiculous, really solid looking start here from Kenny. And he's got a great hand, just filled it up to seven total with the Tropical Beach. Trevor now can attach to the Genesect and could actually play the Escape Rope. I'm pretty sure there was one in hand, right? Yes. Well, at oh, least maybe not. It's, uh, there it is. Yes, it's actually getting discarded. Okay. So wants to try and move the active somehow. I think that that was what was discarded. Yeah, that's a rope discarded for sure. I yep. can see it. Right over there. Yep. <laughs> in the corner. Yep, in the corner. So, yeah, discarding the rope, and we'll see what uh, Trevor's going for. The Swelling Tune, Cricketune, 
is in play on Kenny's side of the board. So yeah. all of Kenny's dudes are big. That is true. And I guess that's probably part of the issue is that if Trevor plays escape rope, Kenny can just pretty easily and confidently push the Zarud to the active spot. And uh, Zarud's got a lot of hit points. It's not going to get KO'd by Genesect, and Kenny is threatening a Venusaur next turn, meaning Zarud can one-hit KO anything. Bro, this deck is so gnarly, man. Look at all this stuff. You got like, Venusaur can double up the energy. Rillaboom can accelerate the energy into play. Cricketune makes it so you have 40 more hit points. I mean, what an absolute monstrosity of a what deck. What does any deck do versus this? Like, this is ridiculous. Got a parallel, got a... You got to Avery. You got you to gotta shut the machine down. Yeah, yeah. You got you to gotta throw a wrench at it. You can't, you can't just let all six of these Pokemon be in play. You got to, like, make something give, right? So definitely uh, there's a reason why this grass deck is performing so well at the event with both Trevor and Kenny I'm able pretty sure to make it pretty deep. Kenny could have gotten all his stage... Uh, his evolutions in play, but actually fails the Eva Soda. We know the Torterra is in hand. He can, of course, sun drenched shell for a Pokemon. So there must be, yeah, the other three prizes must yep. contain some of those stage twos. This is sick, honestly. Dude is going to be able to check all six prizes with Peonia back to back turns. And this is something that grass players have complained about with the grass deck in that the prizes can be really bad because there are so many evolution lines that you play in the deck and your reliance on cards like Venusaur, Rillaboom, your entire strategy hinges on your ability to set up these 1-1-1 one, one, one Pokemon lines. So like, you know, it's like really insane when you get the whole gang in play, but sometimes getting the whole gang in play could be a lot of work. Kenny does have the most glorious board I've ever seen with a grass type deck though. My goodness, here it is. This is outrageous and not even worried about putting two energies in play with the Rillaboom because their energies are all doubled thanks to Jungle Totem, the ability on Venusaur. Each basic grass energy attached to your Pokemon provides two grass energy. Ridiculous. Yeah. So here comes the Zarude with just two energy attached. That jungle totem ability makes it four. So the Zarude is going to be doing 140 damage, more than enough to knock out the Rose Raid. And Kenny is going to go up a prize here in game one. And this Zarude has 220 HP right now. Ah, uh, yeah. Plus 50 from the Cape of Toughness and plus 40 from the Cricketune Swelling Tune. Trevor has to two-hit KO this, but he doesn't have anything nearly set up enough to even threaten a two-hit knockout. Bro, this is so gnarly, man. Zarud is a monster right now. Base 130 HP. He's really, uh, really quite large, though, with the Cape of Toughness and the Cricketune. That's why you got to play cards like... Avery. I mean, Avery could be a godsend right here. I mean, obviously, Kenny discards the Roserade. Its job is pretty much done, but forcing maybe the Grottle to get discarded would be pretty good. At least then there's not going to be a, you know, 230 hit point Torterra coming anytime soon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Whew. Which is certainly a lot to deal with. What Trevor does have going for him, though, is that the deck he's sitting across from. His deck also has that potential. It does. Uh, because they are the same deck. <laughs> they are, yes. They are playing a very similar list. 59 cards being the same between the two of them. And Trevor might just be considering what the route looks like to come back in this one. Is it too far gone, or does he still stand a chance? He's able to promote this uh, Thwacky here, which has the Lay of the Land ability. If there's a Stadium card in play, it has Free Retreat, which is actually pretty nice, kind of giving you an extra little pivot in certain situations. Yeah, here comes the Rillaboom. And finally, the Jungle Totem ability will be online. Is it... Voltage Beat. What am I talking about? Jungle What's... Totem's the Venusaur. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, All yeah. right. Yeah. I was like, where did I get Jungle Totem from, man? All it's... of these insane grass <laughs> yeah. abilities. It's been a long day. But yes, the Voltage Beat ability is finally going to be online. And Trevor just sitting here really grinding this out, trying to think like, okay, is there any sort of out that I'm missing? Right. Um, or is this game pretty much a lost cause you don't want to you know preemptively scoop but this is 
a lot to come back from in game one, and you could just give yourself more time in game two, game three, uh, make it so that hopefully your opponent doesn't get to board state that's this developed so early, and then maybe you get to do this to your opponent one game, and then maybe you have one game that's like super back and forth, something like that. Kenny has only taken one prize card, so Trevor must feel like he stands a chance to come back in this one. It's definitely a difficult path to victory, but it's an entirely possible one. Yeah, I mean, especially with Pokemon capable of having uh, insane amounts of hit points. Okay, Trevor's Ooh. got teammates. Oh, Rare Candy R Venusaur? And this could be a knockout. I think Trevor just kind of like uh, figuring out the math. We could see a Rare Candy Venusaur play. The Rillaboom getting a whole bunch of energy. So right now, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. That is 100 and it's 200. He's doing enough. He's doing enough here because with each the, of the yeah, so the yeah. Venusaur comes down and now he's doing enough, plenty. Yes, yes. he's doing two hundred and fifty damage with the Shining Genesect here. Venusaur able to bail Trevor out here. I was wondering if Trevor should be conceding, and now uh. he has found the perfect response. <laughs> yeah, that is crazy. But now Kenny's got a potential Torterra play right. for the next turn, and Kenny's got a lot of evolved Pokemon in play. So yeah. losing the Zarude and the two energy, no sweat for Kenny. Kenny's got a very developed board, and the Grotto goes straight into the active spot with just one energy attached from hand. Yep. That Torterra is going to be able to use the Evo Press attack for 200 damage because there are one, two, three for five, 250 damage. Yep. There are five evolved Pokemon in play. 250 damage for just one energy is absolutely insane from a Pokemon that has 230 hit points because of Cricketune's uh, Melodious, is it Melodious Swell something? Song Swell? Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, it's like Cricket Swell or yeah, something like that. Swelling, swelling tune. tune, yes. Uh -huh. Because of the Cricketune Swelling Tune. Yeah, an absolutely monstrous board state for Trevor to have to deal with. He's got the Zarude on the bench. He's also got the Grottle, but he does not have enough Pokemon in play to be able to hit as hard as Kenny is able to hit with the Torterra right now. So Trevor just deciding to promote Zarude. There is that Avery in Trevor's hand, but at this point, the Avery's not doing anything no. because Kenny will just kick the Roserade and be totally content with that. Yeah, the turn for Roserade to be really strong has come and gone at yeah. this point. The unfortunate thing as well for Trevor, tons of energy in the prizes. So even though you've got Rillaboom and Venusaur set up, you might not have that many energy left in the deck to even accelerate into play. Yeah, this is... Uh, yeah, Kenny has been able to be really... Uh, really conservative with the energy. Only two grass energy onto the Zarude. And, oh, yeah, I forgot Trevor's got five grass prize. <laughs> yeah, and he did, doesn't have one in his hand, so I don't think he even took... I think, think he hit the net ball? He hit the card that was not a grass energy. It was a nest ball, yes. So <laughs> he might have hit the nest ball, which I think he did, considering I'm pretty sure that's the reverse Krikatots on the, on the bench that he just searched out. Yeah. Yeah, dude, the reverse Krikatots incredibly handsome. Let's just go take a look at the Krikatots one. <laughs> <laughs> bro, bro no. leave cricket on alone no, man. Uh, yeah man he's so <laughs> handsome <laughs> <laughs> Look at that cricket top, bro. I love Trevor's reverse cricket top. That's so cool, man. Oh, what a sick card. And yeah, the the Venusaur's got to go, yes. right? It is one of the most problematic cards on the board. So Trevor identifying that saying, "Okay, I'm doing is it just 100 and he's doing 150? Not quite enough yet." And Trevor Did he miscount? No. And I think and Trevor's going to scoop. Yeah, I look at this. He he's flipping five the prizes. Grass. <laughs> I know. I know. Kenny is just absolutely. Uh, Can't believe it. Yeah, he's blown away. Five prized grass energy. That is absolutely wow. absurd. So Trevor going to scoop that one up. Kenny Pakala now just one win away from punching his ticket to the finals and a shot at that $1,300. Yeah, even if that Venusaur had 150 hit points, it has 160. Yeah. Uh, it was getting 40 more from the swelling tune of Cricket Tune. So. Oh, yeah. yeah. Was, <laughs> oh, man. So it, 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 you definitely needed the 
extra evolution in play, the four evolutions, and Trevor just didn't quite have it. His start was nowhere near as on fire as Kenny's, and I don't know if you could draw it up better as a grass player than what Kenny just experienced in that game. Yeah, Michael Zeely was talking to me about the uh, about his experience yeah. playing Lightning earlier today, and he said that his opponent just got a turn one Bridget into a turn one Big Hunch to go get three grass Pokemon. Bro, and- why is Cricketot still on the screen? Because Cricketot is the leader of the deck. <laughs> <laughs> he's leading the way, huh? Yes, he's leading the way. How could he not be? He's like he's like a Spartan in 300 right here. He's at the edge of the cliff, bro. And uh, he's got some like serious Gandalf, you should out pa- shall not pass energy going on. Like, <laughs> he, dude, I can vibe with that that's for what sure. I'm saying. This Cricketot is the most epic Cricketot to have ever walked. Or does Cricketot have some scar, long live the king vibes going on right now? Has, no, uh, my Cricketot. Has he just shoved Trico and Grovile off the cliff? <laughs> because they got cut from the deck. <laughs> oh, man. You know, who is to say? <laughs> who is to say? Uh, Cricket Top will die with that secret. Yeah, so, uh, <laughs> fine. Keep your secrets. <laughs> so moving into game number two here. As Trevor, I feel like going second is kind of a popular choice for these decks, especially now with Cricket Top being a potential starter. Of course, you have Zarud as an excellent starter with its jungle hunt, I think is the attack, right? Yeah, of course. Searching uh, for three grass Pokemon, and you get the chance to play. a little better, yeah. Yeah, of course. (laughs) (laughs) Because it's got 60 HP and can get KO'd on turn two, right? (laughs) Cricket top attack is better. (laughs) So if uh, Trevor, I think, maybe wants to go second and try and get a Gloria or Bridget, something like that, to get a little set up. Even Ball Guy. Both of these guys do have Ball Guy in their list. Super strong alongside the grass deck with the new Hisuian Heavy Ball and also Net Ball. Yeah. Yeah, I love Ball Guy. And uh, previously, I was a fan of Ball Guy in decks that got to play kind of like an extra ball card. In grass, it was the net ball. In water, it's the dive ball. But now, I'm a big fan of Ball Guy in every single deck because of the Hisuian Heavy Ball. You can play a supporter to. It, it's basically, I mean, in Gym Leader Challenge, any supporter that does multiple things at the same time is going to be very good because your card value is extremely high. Right. So Ball Guy is a supporter card. If you're playing Hisui and Heavy Ball, that says not only oh, man, look go at get three ball cards out of the deck, it's also saying go get three balls ball cards out of the deck, and you could also go get a basic out of your prizes if you feel like it. It's it's nuts. It's like very good. It's a card that not only gives you prize access, but also gives you basic access, evolution access. And I think that that extra kind of, uh, that extra boost from Hisui and Heavy Ball makes Ball Guy a, a card that's gonna be considered in a lot of Gym Leader Challenge decks going forward. Trevor has taken three mulligans right now. So that is three extra cards. Make it a fourth extra card that Kenny is gonna get to start this match. And I wonder if Trevor's already decided. I mean, he you have to decide before you start setting up. Is he going first or second? And if he's chosen to go second, that is going to give Kenny a huge advantage going first because he's going to have so many more cards, such a higher chance to get basic Pokemon in play. Dude, four mulligans as the grass deck? Yeah. You're, you're eating good, man. <laughs> yeah, you get a hand, especially going first. The toughest part about going first is that you can't play a draw supporter. But Kenny basically... This is ridiculous. Five. Oh, Kenny is Kenny's hyped. loving it. Kenny He's is hyped. hyped. That's basically a turn one draw supporter. There are <laughs> there are not any draw supporters that let you just draw five straight off the deck. There's not even ones that let you draw four off the yeah. deck. <laughs> you got to do all kinds of crazy extra stuff. <laughs> yeah, no. This is just a raw draw of five off the top of the deck with no downside. This is, this is absurd. This is... A very low roll on Trevor's part. He's got to be feeling pretty bad about this. Yeah, it's not what you want being down game one. And we can see how amped Kenny is in the 59 card mirror. Doesn't oh, find a basic. it looks it's like there's the tot, a cricket tot. <laughs> it's the tot, bro. And let's go sound the alarm. So it's let's see. The tot. Did Trevor choose first or second? That is going to be the key here. And it looks like Trevor did choose to go second, which I yes. really like as the decision for this deck in general. And it gets paid off by starting Cricket Tot right away. Yeah. Who is still on the screen and, you know, at this point, rightfully so. Yes. <laughs> 
It is real cricketot hours out here. We're gonna get to see a bug hunch. Prepare thyselves, chats, because this cricketot's <laughs> going in and is gonna find three grass Pokemon and put them all into the hand. Why is he so good, bro? <laughs> It makes no it sense. It makes no sense how good this Cricketot is. Both uh, Kenny and Trevor open with arguably their ideal starters. The Cricketot is now one of the ideal starters in the grass deck. The Zarud is probably previously the ideal starter in the grass deck. And still the ideal starter, I'd say, if you go second, because you can actually pack call and then not instantly get knocked out. Right. Because you have 130 hit points. But the tot, you know, what he what he lacks in hit points, he makes up for in attitude. <laughs> yes, for sure. Bravery. And bravery. Yes. Spunk. Spunk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it looks like Kenny's going to be going for that Turtwig, potentially. Eyeing up between Turtwig and Grookey. I think his hand is pretty awkward, even after getting five mulligans. He's starting this game off with 12 cards in hand, which is over one-sixth of the deck. Absolutely insane. Yeah, that's a significant portion of the deck, Chip. Yeah. Yeah, that's a lot of the deck to have in the hand on the first turn of the game going first. Feels like a lot. Uh, but it's just a pass, so really not as bad for Trevor as it possibly could have been. Trevor plays the escape rope. And is it just a bug hunch? Is no. that it? No, yeah. he's got an a research. A research, okay. okay. All, right, all right, I was going to say, he's got something going on. Okay. Look how strong that Todd is with its fighting fury belt. He's huge, Chip. 100 hit points, bro. 100 hit points. This Todd's getting the treatment out here. Yeah, he's looking mighty fine. Reverse hollow, fury belt attached. You've never seen, you have never seen a Krikatot with a fighting fury belt attached to it, ever. This is your first time witnessing this, Chip. Uh, Andrew, you're not wrong. <laughs> I know. I'm just stating it. <laughs> that is that you are correct. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is maybe the first time I've ever witnessed a Krikatot attack. <laughs> yes. Is it not everything you ever dreamed it would be? I yeah. mean, it's it, Andrew. It's pretty special. Yes. Thank you, Chip. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for indulging me. Mm -hmm. We're yes. nine hours in, folks. So. Yeah. <laughs> And it's hot back here. The, the vibes are getting a little uh, a little weird. <laughs> <laughs> Trevor does play the level ball. Eyes up the, I think that's the Grookey there at the bottom. Really wants to get some of these basics into play. Can Bug Hunch for a bunch of them at worst, but you really want to bench them this turn so Bug Hunch can get you your evolutions. Yes, that is the... That is the key feature of the bug of the bug hunch, being able to go get yourself your grottle out of the deck, and then you can start using Sun Drenched Shell to go get your other Pokemon into play. Incredibly powerful effect. Roserade, you know, another card you can grab off of the bug hunch to start putting pieces together. The real question is gonna be, is Trevor gonna be able to find enough basic Pokemon off of this research? I think Trevor just kinda mapping out the prizes real quick in this game. Yep. Making sure that he's aware of what's prized. Going to go for Grookey. And then we'll probably see a bug hunch here shortly. Yeah, so. let's see if there's anything else in the hand. Maybe Rare like, candy. Yeah, okay. Can get the turn two, boom. Okay. Yeah, baby. And Kenny is probably going to know that it's coming because why there. else would you bug <laughs> hunch for the boomer? Yeah, you, uh, you're you definitely projecting this play. You're saying, that's right, I've got it. What are you going to do about it? Yep. <laughs> yeah. That's I'm right. getting Rillaboom, and there's nothing you can do to stop me. Unless it's Unless, a Marnie or N. Uh, yeah. no, there's a couple <laughs> things you can do to stop me. <laughs> yes, but if you don't have any of those. Hasui and Heavy Ball getting played from Kenny. Get a check of the prizes. Looks like Turtwig is in the prizes, so that'll be a pretty easy... Ooh, that's actually the Thwacky. So no basic Pokemon prized. It looks like it was Kenny's turn to prize some energy cards. Three different ones there in Sheesh. the prizes. Yeah, that is tough. And, not as bad uh, as five, though. No, not as bad. That was pretty hilarious to <laughs> see. I mean, it's one thing to prize five energy. It's another thing to play the Hisuian Heavy Ball and reveal to the class that you, <laughs> <laughs> that you have prized five grass energy. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, so the... Sun-drenched shell here. Yep. Going to grab a Grookey from the deck, try to get a little more established. 
While Kenny's hand was pretty awkward for turn one, he surely has supporter cards to work with on this turn. Yeah. Second energy, cape onto this rude. Eh, bro. <laughs> bro. He's saying, Trevor, you thought. <laughs> bro, no, dude. The Marnie, man. Oh, the no, power. No, no, Trevor put five. Trevor put five. He oh, put five. He, he just drew did. five. Trevor, Trevor no. should not have drawn that many. And Trevor. Oh, no. Why five? And there's the forehead smack. You already can see. Yep. Uh huh. No. He knows Trevor. what he's done. He's in game two of top four. It was that top card. He's yeah. shuffled his hand around a little bit, but it, he, that top card did not move, I'm pretty yeah. sure. Yeah. Oh, no. That is. That is really brutal. Yeah. So it looks like it's just going to be a shuffle because Trevor did move his hand around. Yeah. So what the judges will do here is they'll shuffle the hand, and then a card from the hand will get revealed to both players, and then it'll get shuffled back into the deck. Yeah. And Trevor will almost definitely be issued a yeah, two-prize penalty. Yeah, that's a double-prize penalty. penalty. I mean, these players are competing for $1,300 yeah. at the top of the event. Uh, you cannot draw extra cards. That is... That's really brutal. Yep. So now it's Kenny's, uh, you know, Kenny is, is got to be stoked that he's one step closer to winning. But at that cost, you know, you hate, you hate it to get decided like that. You want it to be decided because of some real tight gameplay decisions, not because of my opponent taking an extra card off of Marnie. It's the second time we've seen this. Yeah, and I really hate that this is a double prize penalty. With the way the rules are, that is the yep. correct ruling, of it course. Is. But I just hate that because the cards weren't going to change. If they catch it, it should just be like, okay, I won't draw a card my next turn. Because yeah. that was the card he was going to draw anyway, right? Right, and there's no other way to interact with the deck. Wait, did they shuffle the deck? Yeah, you're supposed to shuffle the deck. No, That's you're not the, supposed to shuffle the deck. That's the new... No, wait, they shouldn't have shuffled the deck because Marnie put cards on the oh. bottom of the deck. Uh-huh. Oops. Well... Because eh, now he could Keep it pushing, bro. Keep it pushing. It's unfortunate. That was the judge's decision. Yeah. It was not correct. But we're gonna keep it moving. Yeah, that was the that was the judge's decision in the moment. Uh, yeah, Marnie is one that you have to actually tiptoe around because the wow. order of the bottom of the deck does matter. But uh, it's fine. It's fine. We're just gonna keep moving, and hopefully, yeah, Trevor's got a, a search card and he's gonna reorder the deck right here. So, so it's, yeah, he was he, the or deck is gonna be reordered. Yeah. It is okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's fine. So. That's just uh, that's just part of it, you know. I think at this point we just keep it moving. That was a game time decision by you know by table judge, and that's that's okay, and yeah, that's okay. It does happen like that sometimes, but Kenny is going to have the two or Trevor's going to have the two prize penalty, so it's going to make it so that Kenny only has to take four prizes to be able to win this game and advance to the finals it's not to say that trevor can't win this one but with kenny already being up game one he's got to be feeling pretty good about his chances in this game trevor is definitely on the back foot right now and has leagues to catch up in order to get back in this game unfortunately was not able to keep the cricket hand the bug hunch and that uh, that hand got Marnied to the bottom of the deck. Yeah, Cricket Top might be hunching one more time after this turn. And I'm it's going to be a so. little bit better, though, because Trevor's going to fill the board with some Pokemon here. Ball Guy can get the Nest Ball. Looks like a Net Ball as well and the Timer Ball. And Trevor hoping for a little bit more fortunate of luck on the Timer Ball flips in this game, I would imagine. I think so. Going 0 for 2 on the last game was not good. No. Yeah, and then we saw how Kenny was able to develop a board with the double heads. So Cricket Tunes attack only does like forty damage, right? I'm, it, I'm, <laughs> you're just thinking, I'm just thinking what other what other routes? Yeah, fitty. fifty with the yeah, slash. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're probably not gonna see a slash coming down. No, you know, maybe sometimes. I'd say the Cricket Tot is incredibly powerful. The Cricket Tune, you know, the Cricket Tune is really just the enabler. It enables you to play the Cricket Tots. <laughs> yes. Playing Cricket Tune is just, it's like, I'm playing Cricket Tots, so I might as well find a good Cricket Tune, right? It's like that, yes. It's <laughs> like that, for sure. 
Yes. I mean, after talking with uh, Mike, Mike said that he had his eyes on this Cricket Tots. Mike Gibbs, who won the Fusion Strike Gym Leader Challenge release weekend event yep. with Grass, said he had his eyes on this Cricket Tots because the Cricket Tots was so good that he considered playing it just for the bug hunch. And then he said when the Cricket Tune came out, he was like, oh, yeah, auto include. <laughs> <laughs> So Trevor has grabbed the Rillaboom once again. And I think because he can Sundrench Shell for the other pieces and just want to go ahead and get that other one in hand, I suppose. So it looks like Kenny shuffling the deck here off of a, I believe, a Nest Ball being played. Getting down the Rosalia. And Marnie is going to be the choice again. Kenny is saying, Trevor, you do not get to pick any of these cards out of your deck with the bug hunch. They're going to the bottom. And please, Trevor, only draw four. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes. He even puts his hands up like, I pro I'm good. Yeah, four Dude, cards. So the top got Marnie again? Yep. This is so sad, man. Oh, poor Tot. Dude, the Tot... Tot did nothing wrong. No, Hashtag man. justice for Tot. Oh, this is terrible. <laughs> terrible news. <laughs> oh, I'm having a really bad time with this information. I really wanted the bug hunch to be super epic, bro. Instead, the bug hunch is just getting uh, disrupted at every turn. Not quite working out the way Trevor drew it up. And I'm not sure if he's... Yeah, he's got Peonia here. Was taking a look at what prize cards he... What things he had noted as his prizes. Looks like a couple energy again. Okay, we see a Pokemon there, not exactly. I think it was like the Venusaur, maybe. Yeah, could be our Ivysaur. Yeah, tough to tough to see. Looks like Zarude. Zarude is the uh, and uh, is that Torterra? That is. is Torterra. Yeah. Okay, so two really good Pokemon in the prizes. You really want to grab both of them if you can. You got to put three cards back, though. Yeah, and that's kind of the issue. We got to find three cards that are okay to put back. And the hand wasn't massive, so these decisions for Peonia, when you have, like, a medium-sized hand, are usually pretty tough. Yeah, definitely. That's what I'm saying. Pe Peonia is so difficult to play sometimes. It's like, man, yeah, I get to see all these cool cards, but then I got to, like, I got to trade for them. Ugh, you yeah. know, it's... Uh, it definitely feels gnarly to play sometimes when the hand size is low. It feels great when your hand is, like, gigantic. You're like, whatever, dude. Sure, I'll send these stinkers back in the prizes. But. So Trevor's saying, hey, if you're going to keep marnying my bug hunch to the bottom of the deck, I'm just going to have to get my evolutions now. Turf Field Stadium coming into play. Shun Drenched Shell on – say that five times fast. Sun Drenched Shell able to now search out an additional grass Pokemon, Ivysaur being eyed up by Trevor, and we'll probably see one more bug hunch, and if Kenny disrupts this one, it just wasn't meant to be. Yeah. <laughs> I think that that's probably fair. All right, with the, uh, let's see, Ivysaur coming into play. We gotta imagine that this, the third time is a charm. Uh, what is frequently said, and I think it is also true of a bug hunch. Will this bug hunch stick? Uh, Trevor's board is much more powerful than it has been the last couple times the Bug Hunch has been attempted. We now have a potential Venusaur coming into play next turn. Uh, the Rillaboom, maybe finally finally hitting the board too. And who's to say, maybe if there was going to be the Rare Kenny Rillaboom early on, this game would be entirely different. But yeah. Kenny with the one of Marnie had uh, the pieces. The perfect And turn. speaking of Rare Candy Rillaboom, Kenny Pacala pulls it out. Also has Venusaur in hand. Sun Drenched Shell can go get the Torterra or the Roserade to go get any other card out of the deck. Yeah, that is uh, a really stellar setup from Kenny. We can see how powerful that Marnie card is. I mean, with Trevor being on the, I guess, the the better side of the start, going second, getting a turn one bug hunt, right? Having the ability to potentially evolve those Pokemon into play faster, that Marnie that double Marnie is yep. now going to set Kenny on pace. Oh, and the Guzma targeting down the oh, Grookey. Oh, my That's gosh. just rude. Bro, this is so gnarly. 
the Guzma, the Venusaur, the Rillaboom. Kenny's got all the pieces here and is denying the, oh my gosh, the Rillaboom. It's possible for Trevor to potentially go in with the 150 damage Evo press, but that's not even enough to knock out this uh, this Zarude with the Cape of Toughness on. Yeah, Zarude having 180 hit points now, 130 base with 50 more from the Cape. Really difficult to KO. You don't have enough evolution Pokemon in play. Zarude can't evolve, and Trevor can't like pop an evolution out of s anywhere like a surprise because there's no. Force of Giant Plants anymore in the Gym Leader Challenge format. And rightfully so. Have you seen how explosive this deck is? That is true. <laughs> it's too much, bro. It's, it's kind of amazing true. that it existed for so long. <laughs> <laughs> yes, one of those cards where you look at it and you're like, nah, how did this thing exist? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, it doesn't really make a lot of sense, but uh, the game is better without it. That's for sure. Certainly. And I think that all keepers of the Pokemon trading card game have decided this <laughs> at this point in time yeah it's banned in glc banned and expanded you can't play that card anywhere anywhere yeah nobody uh, will allow it <laughs> go have go have fun in unlimited folks <laughs> <laughs> yeah nobody's gonna stop you <laughs> yeah so trevor just has to guzma the venusaur and if this is like a stalling play yeah it looks like it is and that just it's so hard for this to ever work whenever your opponent has rillaboom in play because worst case scenario kenny can just Jungle Totem, get two energies on it, you know, with the voltage beat from the Rillaboom yeah. and retreat. start attacking or retreat. Yeah, you could just retreat. Yeah. It's insane. I mean, Venusaur's got a fat retreat cost of two, but the Jungle Totem combined with the voltage beat is kind of like an instant get out of jail free card. You can just retreat the Venusaur and get it back to the bench. You never really want to solar beam i'm not gonna lie i solar beamed before i solar beam quite a bit you know <laughs> 90 damage you know hey listen it's cool it's only two it basically says two for 90 you know which, which is not looks, bad no it's not nearly as bad as four for 90 that, that's much worse <laughs> <laughs> but with that ability jungle totem it basically says two for 90 which is uh you know not substantial but it's not great uh but it's not uh not bad either so i'm trying to see what recovery item cards or what just recovery cards in general Kenny has. I wonder if there's ever a route for Trevor to just spam gusting cards on this big Venusaur. I think that's pretty unlikely. Uh, Kenny does have an ordinary rod in the list, but I don't see anything like Brock's Grit or anything like that, which is a card we've seen in the past. Yeah, in this the is going to be a scoop. And, yep. I think Trevor saying like, yeah, man. It ain't it ain't going. Especially with a double prize penalty. Yeah. I think all the wind has got to be taken out of your sails and you're just like Ah, oh, man, you know, game one went really bad. Game two with the double Marnie, you're taught. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this one just wasn't meant to be for Trevor. Really unfortunate, but, you know, these are long tournament days. Mistakes are bound to happen. You know, really tough get going in either of these games. Like, just couldn't quite get fired off. And Trevor's going to come away with a top four, which is still really solid. He is one of the most accomplished players here at the Full Grip Games uh, Gym Leader Challenge Tournament. So congratulations to Trevor but also congrats to Kenny moving on here to the finals. Kenny Pacala punching his ticket to the finals. We'll be facing off against either Grant Manley or Ethan Heggie, whichever player comes out on top on the other side of the bracket. So we're guaranteed to have a grass deck in the finals. We had a grass versus control finals for the fusion right, strike yeah. gym leader challenge tournaments. So we could see a repeat of that matchup here uh, for the fusion strike gym leader challenge tournament. It was Mike Gibbs against Azul Garcia Griego in the finals. Grant Manley losing in top four to Mike Gibbs. That's right. So we could see that matchup played out again, or if Ethan is able to come out on top and uh, overtake Grant in top four, we're going to see a lightning versus grass finals. But either way, we're going to get to see Torterra from Brilliant Stars. Honestly, I think that that card underperformed at the Brilliant Stars event. I agree. Uh, because Torterra is one of the best new cards from Brilliant Stars. But Grass was not really featured in, what, the top four even, I don't yeah, think. Yeah, I, I think players were trying to cram too many stage twos in their deck was the issue. A lot of people still had the Sceptile in there because it is so good. Yeah. 
and it's just a little too much. You've already got, you know, Venusaur, Rillaboom, uh, you know, and then the Torteri, throw that in there. That's a lot. You know, add a fourth stage two line. And we're talking about a singleton format where it's not the most consistent to necessarily set yeah. these things up. So replacing those stage twos with some stage one lines. Ros- Roserade, of course, making its way into pretty much all the grass decks at this point. Cricketune coming out now in Astral Radiance. It's really worked out pretty nicely. I think so. And I think the list is much more streamlined. I'm a big fan of this new kind of grass deck that we're seeing without the Sceptile, without the whatever the Shinotic is, right? Yeah, With yeah, yeah. just the Grottle. So it's, it's the best you know, searching one, just do that one and the Roserade. And with those two, you can search out whatever you need. Right. Right. I really like that, uh, that kind of logic with the grass deck. And I think it's really showing that these players have put some time into this list. I know Mike Gibbs played a big part in pioneering this particular build of the grass deck. So big shout out to them and Kenny, who is going to be making his appearance in the finals momentarily. Let's get Kenny back here for an interview and hear about his tournament run so far. I am here with your finalist for the Gym Leader Challenge Astral Radiance 2.5K event. Kenny Pakala, how you doing, Kenny? You know what? I'm on cloud nine. I didn't expect to be here. <laughs> yeah, you said this is your first time playing Gym Leader Challenge format. You said yeah. yesterday didn't go as planned. Mm-mm. So tell us about your experience today and your first tournament playing the Gym Leader Challenge format. So, after like round one, I learned going second is probably the most important part about this entire (laughs) format. Because there were so many games where I like went first and I was like, oh no, this could get this go south really quick. But all around, like the aspect of like a bunch of one ofs, like makes you think, like with the Peonia play I had to do earlier, I had to like completely not only remember what one ofs I put where, but like you when you do your first deck search, you always have to remember like, like what is there. And if you mess up, it's like, you know, it's there. Yeah, exactly. So there's a lot to consider with each of the routes. You know, each resource is a one of. So you're trying to figure out when's the best time to utilize those. Your board state was looking really powerful (laughs) in those top four games. What were your toughest matchups? Did you have any that were real close, came down to the wire uh, throughout the tournament, or any that you felt like you really had to grind through? What were your toughest games you played so far? By far, Mike Gibbs. Yeah, I ended up playing him in round four or five, and I was so scared to see him because <laughs> I knew for a fact, like he's my local. He gave me the list. He understands it way better, but he he even got went like second and got everything going for him. Yeah. But, like, I ended up snowballing him because he prized something really weird, I think. And I ended up bossing up the Rillaboom in the end, and that was it. Wow. But then probably the closest one was my loss. It was against Water, and yeah. it just came down to I marnied him. He drew a pass for five turns, and I gave him those turns. I couldn't find Rillaboom, and I was like, really? <laughs> Whatever, dude. <laughs> yeah. It's like that sometimes when you're, you know, all your evolutions are just one, one lines. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, it doesn't always work like a dream, but when it does, I mean, obviously you're you capitalizing, get you get rolling real fast and, uh, and, and the deck is really impressive to watch when you have all the different Pokemon working together towards that common goal. Now you said yesterday didn't unfortunately go as you had planned. What deck did you play yesterday and how'd you feel about the standard format events? You know, I played Reggie Gigas. Okay. I, uh, Ricky Cornett ended up showing me that deck, and I was like, I hate this deck, but I'm going to play it anyways. It looks like <laughs> so much fun. It can beat everything. The fact that you can, like, almost 90-10 Mew is amazing. Oh, like, sure. The Reggie Steel kills the V. The Gigas kills the VMAX. But um, standard, the, the I'm excited to see what it can bring, especially because sure. Astro Radiance brought a lot of interesting concepts to the game um, and a lot of new you know, archetypes like Palkia. Palkia, of course, we've seen like Suicune. Yeah. But like, you know, Reggie Gigs being a one prize rogue deck, that's kind of insane. Pretty cool, right? Definitely. Now, you're either up against Lightning or Control in the finals. Mm-hmm. Uh, is there a matchup you'd rather play against? Uh, kind of sussing them both out? Lightning, I played against Michael Zealy earlier. And yes. And that matchup, like, I feel feel like is fine i would rather not play against control but mike sent me like a whole essay of how to play against that sick so i'm like because <laughs> he beat control the last time with like i think Twice. caleb and grant yeah uh, he beat azul, azul and, grant. and grant that's yes. what it was mm-hmm. and i was like mike how do you beat this he goes oh well, well. <laughs> i'm like no. sit down <laughs> you got so some i'm time. excited <laughs> 
Yeah, that's uh, that's awesome. Well, uh, best of luck to you in the finals, Kenny. I'm really proud of you with your finish and glad you're having a good time here at the Gym Leader Challenge event. Thank you. Let's get some hype going for the finals of the Full Grip Games Astral Radiance Gym Leader Challenge 2.5K event. We have got Kenny Pakala on the left with a record of 7-1-1 one, and one with his Grass-type deck against Grant Manley, who was able to win yesterday's standard event with Mew VMAX and is back in the finals of the Gym Leader Challenge event with his control deck. What's up with Grant and playing decks that people don't like? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, playing the Mew VMAX yesterday. But let's give some credit to Grant here, playing two extremely different styles of deck. Yeah. High power, high octane Mew VMAX, just chasing KOs, being super aggressive. And then now today in GLC, playing the long game, going with the control, the hand lock deck. And this has been Grant's go-to ever since Gym Leader Challenge got released. This was one of the first decks that he built. He recognized, hey, none of these cards that are banned and expanded are banned in this format. I can have a field day with some of my favorite <laughs> cards from the past. Yes, Bell Elba and Bryson, man. Lieutenant Surge's strategy. Pick, pick, ice axe. Delinquents. Many of the most degenerate cards from the history of the Pokemon TCG are uh, available for play currently in Gym Leader Challenge format. And Grant Manley is definitely a player who likes his control deck. So he's really taken to these control archetypes in Gym Leader Challenge and has been working on perfecting this colorless control deck. It really has been interesting to see. This is kind of like a... Um, yeah, kind of like an all-star squad of all the, yes, you know, the most really famous is. control cards throughout the history of the last 10 years that I've been playing the game. And there are a lot of really cool cards in this deck. So Kenny here on his second turn will play an Avery Grant forced to discard something. Munchlax hits the bin. Three cards off the top for Kenny. Now, this is not the first time we have seen this matchup in the finals. No, it in is not. In fact, Azul GG lost in the finals. He was playing the control deck, and he was defeated by Mike Gibbs, who was playing Grass. So does Kenny have what it takes to run it back and defend the title for Grass versus the colorless control deck? Can he make it happen? This is actually a beautiful start for Kenny. Kenny has... The only two Pokemon that you care to have in play. Yeah. Rillaboom and Zerud. That's all you want. You want to pump energy onto Z Zerud and start taking knockouts with repeated whip. Uh, the Rillaboom can make it so that you can accelerate energy into play turn after turn. And Kenny is trying to race down Grant. Kenny was saying before this finals match started... Uh, he got a debriefing from Mike on how to play this match. Mike spent uh, no less than what uh, three to four hours playing against these guys in back-to-back best-of-threes in his route to the Fusion Strike uh, Gym Leader Challenge Championship win with Grass. And during his final you know, championship interview, he was looking kind of dazed and confused, a little lightheaded. It was like, dang, bro, that was tough. Yeah. <laughs> they uh, are that was stressful a lot. games for sure. <laughs> that was a lot to deal with. Now, Grant does have escape rope. Going to push the Thwacky into the active spot. The Thwacky does have the lay of the land ability, which makes it so that if Kenny has a stadium card, he can retreat for free and start attacking with the uh, with his rune. There is the stadium. The Tropical Beach and the Rillaboom. Rillaboom will use Voltage Beat. Kenny not interested in wasting any time knowing that the control matchup can be a long one. So just going to go into the deck with Colrus, see five new cards. Great. And this is smart as well. He's trying to kind of lower his hand size. Kenny does not want basic Pokemon in his hand because one of Grant's strategies whenever your opponent does something like this, and this is a common strategy from... Uh, players when they're playing against control just have a couple of Pokemon in play. So a strategy Grant can try to employ is 
Captivating Poke Puff. If Kenny has a bunch of cards in hand, it's pretty likely one of them is going to be a basic. Grant can hit it off the Poke Puff, put it into play. That cupcake looking too sweet. The Dude, Pokemon can't resist. Bro, this five card hand from Kenny is absolutely insane. He's got the gas. He's got Quick Ball and Super Rod in the hand. So if he, and no basics. So if he top decks a basic, yep. he can instantly discard it and put it back into the deck where he wants it. That's right. Because but he needs to keep basic Pokemon out of hand and out of the discard pile. And he knows this because he got the debriefing from Mike. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, Captivating Pokepuff can target the Pokemon in the hand. But Kenny can't just discard them because Grant also is playing one copy of Target Whistle in order to bring Pokemon from the discard pile back into play. Yeah, and this is why Grass is so uh, is is the deck that has the potential to beat this colorless control deck because it is so low maintenance. You get the Rillaboom out. You get a big attacker out, and you just start swinging, and you do what you can to keep all of the excess out of your hand. Keep the basic Pokemon out of your hand. Try to keep the basic Pokemon out of the discard pile and force the control deck into a situation where it just cannot win. So I think Grant is playing a different card in this list, something that he did not play at the Fusion Strike tournament. He is playing one copy of Team flare grunt mm. so some t sort of play grant could try to pull off would be like you know if kenny doesn't put enough energy on the rillaboom on the bench something like that it can still get trapped in the active with a hex maniac if you can start flare grunting away some energies and force kenny to commit too much to the active because you can't Ooh. split your energies up with the voltage beat and this reset stamp is kind of awkward in the mid game it will give kenny more cards in hand though yeah the reset stamp actually is super good because Kenny had the perfect hand. He just wanted to sit on this hand while he waited for Grant to do things. Now, one of the weird situations that can happen in this matchup is if uh, if Kenny is unable to give, you know, Kenny is able to make it so that he's not giving Grant any Pokepuff targets, not giving Grant any target whistle targets, then Grant might have to just start going for Baloba and hoping that he hits a Pokemon, right? right. That's like the the last resort is that you're just doing things like that. The Cynthia will shuffle the hand back up, and Kenny's going to be able to see six cards. The Zerud now with four energy on it is going to be able to use repeated whip to take the first knockout of the game. I'd say that Kenny's pace is looking pretty good at this point. Grant's not at the bottom of the deck yet and is going to start taking knockouts with a pretty well-established board. And this is what you want to do against the control deck. Put on pressure pretty quickly and force them to respond. If Grant gets to the bottom of the deck and you have just taken your third prize card, it's too late. That's exactly what Grant wants to see happen. Yeah, that's for sure. The Cynthia and Caitlin uh, is going to get the Peonia back from the discard pile. Grant looking for something. Yeah, there must yes. be something important prize that he's needing to fetch out. Because he's already Peonia'd once. We can yep. see the three tilted prize cards to help Grant identify which cards he has looked at already. But hunting for another card. Battle, battle Compressor. compressor here, yep. yep. At this point, I think he's kind of done with the Hisuian Heavy Ball. He's getting ready to Peonia again. So he's like, I'm cool on that. Uh, it's not going to be a Hisuian heavy ball situation. It is going to be a me peonying for those final three cards and just getting it, uh, getting what I need over there in the prize cards. So now Grant likely going to play that Peonia, looking for something here. There are so many important pieces in this yet, deck. Right, oh, yeah, I did Cynthia, play the yep. Cynthia Caitlin. Yeah, yeah, so yeah no surge, eyeing it up yep. for the next turn. Yep, yep, yep. But, you know, there's so many important pieces in this deck. You need Scoop Up Net, Del Caddy, Chip Chip Ice Axe. We've seen the reset stamp already. You need, you know, some recovery cards, Rescue Stretcher, Rescue Carrier, ways to get back your Bunnelby, Recycle Energy. Like, all of these one-of cards are essential to the lock happening. Yes. And Kenny uh, does have Avery in the deck, which is pretty cool because Avery can kind of disrupt this board yeah. a little bit, make it a little bit tougher for Grant to turn through. Uh, that Shining Arceus is kind of you know pointless right now. Sure. So that is an easy discard. Grant hasn't committed anything else to the bench yet, but maybe yeah. at some points later on in the match that, uh, that Avery could be useful. Yeah, yeah. I got a versus Seeker, grab it, play it once again. Then we see Trainer's Mill does get the Robo Substitute. This is a way that Grant likes to kind of try and buy time. He's got the one Robo Substitute and the one Lily's Polka Doll. These cards 
act as Pokemon when they're in play, but they are protecting your bench. They are not letting one of your actual Pokemon be KO'd. They take the hit for you, and your opponent doesn't get a prize card for it. Yeah, just going to pass with the... Uh, the chin the Minchino in the active spots. Yeah, I was thinking about attaching the Recycle Energy, but I think remembered, oh, I've got Gallarmine in play. My Minchino cannot retreat. It cannot <laughs> actually do that. Yes, the Gallarmine increasing the retreat cost by two. Let's take a look at what Kenny has got going on over here in the hand. Trying to... Does have Versus Seeker. Yes, does have Versus Seeker. Just going to decide to Cynthia again. There was the Roselia in the hand, maybe spooking him out a little bit. Doesn't want to keep that there because he doesn't want it to get captivating Pokepuffed into play. So that's fair. Uh, the Roselia can evolve into Roserade, so it's not that bad. You could always evolve into Roserade and go get like Scoop Up Net and move it. Something like that if this list is playing Scoop Up Nets. Scoop Up Net is a great card because it can it not only removes a Pokemon from play, uh, but also a switch. Not sure if the list is still playing. It might just be that escape rope instead. Yeah, I think Scoop Up Net was a little bit more popular when you could Roselia and Force Giant Plants Roselia yeah. again. Don't think it doesn't look like Kenny has it though. So let's see. Also, Grant has to uh, when going for the captivating Pokeball play. I mean, you have to like kind of uh, you're trying to decide like when to swing. You know, when do you go for it? Right. Right. It's it's tough. And Grant said that that can be kind of awkward because you're just trying to guess. I mean, you don't really have any guarantees. You don't know. You don't have any way to peek at the opponent's hand. Yeah, it's a total guess. Yeah. He's talked about playing Lavender Town in this right. deck, to just so peek. you can know. <laughs> yeah, take a little peek. Yeah. Uh, but it's ultimately been a card that, you know, has not been worth it. I think it's probably like a 64th, 65th type card, you know. Right. Not, not super necessary. It would be nice, though. Yeah, the Rescue Stretcher will bring the... Minchino back to the bench, and it looks like it's going to be a gust on the Pidgeotto. Yeah, I like this. Orders. Slowing down. The Pidgeotto and Kenny just taking another prize. Not going to lie, I really like watching both of these players play Pokemon because if there's anybody who could actually match Grant's speed... <laughs> it seems at, like it's Kenny. It, Kenny actually is bringing the same kind of energy to the table. <laughs> and I'm sure Grant is happy to see that because yeah. this is the type of matchup that is not great, the best for him. And also being here in the finals... If you go and lose the first game, you still have enough time to theoretically win two more games if your opponent's playing at this speed. Yes, for sure. And as a viewer, it is uh, a big relief as well Certainly. because there's a lot of game actions that can occur, especially in the control deck. Uh, same with Mew yesterday. Watching Grant play the Mew deck, there's a lot of game actions that can occur with that Mew deck. And being able to just kind of motor through the deck and get through all the game actions at an appropriate speed is very nice. It kind of feels like I'm watching this game on 1.5 speed, and uh, I like it. <laughs> so Kenny has not put any energies on the Rillaboom yet, and I kind of think this is a little bit of a mistake because he's given Grant a very tasty target for Countercatcher. Yeah. Grant, I mean, this works just fine for Grant. He can go Countercatcher, bring up the Rillaboom, start spamming the Gust, uh, the, the Hex Maniac every single turn, excuse me. Rillaboom's not going to be doing anything while it's active. Yes, I think Kenny is uh, now. Yep, yeah, we're now is the yeah, turn. Yeah, okay. Yeah. okay, here we go. Got to get some energy onto the Boomer. Got to do that and get this thing in a situation where it's not just going to be, uh, not just going to be kind of stuck. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> yeah. Doesn't want to get it stuck. Does have three retreats. Ooh. Ooh, he's just going to put two energies, though. Gallarmine is in play, so cannot retreat out just yet, even with the third energy. Yes, opt in to keep two, which is, uh, which is interesting. We'll go down to two prizes. It is possible for... Uh, I guess it's possible for a Gust Hex, but you can't... Oh, and then, yeah, you could, like, reset stamp, but then you can't totally remove the hand. It's like, it's, it's not all possible quite yet, right? Yeah, Grant, I think, is going to need for these Robo-Subs and Lily's Pokedol to take a couple hits here and buy him just a little bit more time. He is getting pretty low on the deck, probably about six, seven cards left there, so next turn he should be able to pull off the lock if he has those pieces available. He's going to have to. Yeah, yeah. Yep. <laughs> well, well, no, because Kenny's not going to take a prize this next turn. Ideally, right, for Grant. Yeah, I mean, there's rope There's always there. a chance, yeah. There's, there's, yep. there's more Gus. I mean, so it's certainly possible. Yeah, it looks like it's about seven, eight cards. Yep, 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 yep. Decent amount of cards left in the deck. Grant has Peonia twice, so he has seen all of the prize cards and has been able to kind of hand select what cards he wants to set aside into the prize cards now, having played that that supporter two times. So 
Let's that have that, that is just such a big hand. Del Caddy there in hand. Maybe thinking about finding a friend from the discard pile. Getting back a supporter. You're going to search for a friend here. Yeah, there we go. Del Caddy. And what supporter are we looking at from the discard pile? Del Caddy's find a friend. Always nice to find a friend. Yeah, everyone needs a friend. Honestly. Del Caddy. What a nice friend. <laughs> so Grant, I think, grabbing back the Surge and Hapu, it looks like. So he could play Hapu here and just discard most of the remaining cards in deck so that he can guaranteed get to the bottom. The problem's going to be, does he discard too many of the important pieces? Yeah, it looks like he's Ooh. eyeing up the reset stamp. He definitely wants that. But delinquent and, delinquent. and rescue carrier. Yes. Rescue carry needed to get back the Bunnelby. It is in the discard pile right now. Yep, does Surge he have has not been stretcher? played yet. So like the... Okay. He, We've got like, you know, the NAR is all here. He's got everything mm -hmm. now, but what if Kenny like disrupts the hand? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, this is the type of turn you want to do it. Yeah. Uh, a like, Marnie or an uh, N. Yeah, Marnie, and it's just like, well, <laughs> uh, that's all down to the bottom. And yeah, like Marnie rope would be pretty, pretty sick. And then you're just like in a gust situation. And yeah. The thing game. about the way Kenny's been playing this though, is like, he's not been playing too many draw cards. It's just right. shuffle draw. He's not discarding his hand, drawing a bunch of cards. Yep. So it's a little hard to have that many of those type of one of combo pieces all at the same time, yep. because you're not getting through the deck. It's just no. kind of what have you gotten off of the Cynthia plus the last couple of top decks. You just got it like that. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, and it's possible. Certainly. Uh, there's a boss and verse seeker in the discard pile. So it's just the Guzma. Yep. That is left. Which makes it a little awkward because Rillaboom would have to get two more energy, which he can obviously pull them out of the deck, but... Yeah. Uh, I think either way, definitely, you know, we're kind of itching for some sort of hand disruption this next turn, and Grant has basically got his deck in his hands um, and uh, can do, like, whatever he wants now. They're at the critical moments. Grant's, yep, grabbing the Bunnelby. So I think he's going to Rototiller this turn, put a couple cards back, and then next turn is the turn. He's just got to hope. Yeah. If he's getting this card out here, I think he's going to be discarding the sub and going in. Yeah, I think so. Uh, it is definitely game time. Here is, yep, the Rescue Scarf. The sub's getting discarded. And it's Rototiller time, baby. Scoop up nets the Del Caddy. And look, how many players can play this deck, man? <laughs> you know, I mean, like, look at this crazy. And this it's, it's... is really smart from Grant. He's replacing the stadium right now because when you play Delinquent, you have to discard a stadium. And the stadium he wants to be in play is Gallermine. Yeah. So by replacing the stadium now, he puts it in the discard pile. And now Rototiller puts it back into the deck, yeah. which will make it harder for Kenny to retreat this Rillaboom. And this is the moment of truth. Okay, Kenny's got a pretty big hand. What are we looking at here? We got like an evolution incense. There is it is worth playing? There is a Pokemon playing? in that hand. There's several Pokemon in that hand. Yes, but does Kenny have anything? No, uh, it looks I, like it's just a knockout. Attacks, and Grant gets both those cards back, the Recycle Energy and the Bunnelby, thanks to the Rescue Scarf. Captivating Pokepuff. It's going to hit a couple Pokemon here. Yes, yeah, it's going to hit both the Turtwig and the Cricketots. The extremely brave Cricketots. This he is tried the turn. His best. He did. <laughs> and now Grant gets to counter catcher one of those Pokemon back up to the active spot. I think he's going to have the pieces to pull off the lock here. Yep. Three cards Probably. left in deck. He can make do for two and then airmail to get the bottom one. Yep. Ooh, no, there's four cards left in deck. There are. First Seeker and okay. Gallermine. I think that's the one he would want to see put on the bottom. The other two cards being the scoop. One of them being scoop up net. He definitely needs. And then make do. There's the scoop up nets. Here's the Bunnel B and the Recycle Energy. Uh, can he also? Yes. Here's the Surge. Surge coming down. Lieutenant Surge's strategy going to allow Grant to play two supporters because he's behind on prizes. Reset stamp. Putting Kenny to just one card in hand. And then Grant is certainly going to be comboing this with Delinquent, the supporter card that allows you to discard a stadium card in play. And if you do, you discard three cards from your your opponent is forced to discard three cards from their hand. Yep. And there it is, the Delinquent and the card getting discarded as teammates. Not like that was doing anything. <laughs> Not at yep. all. And now Grant can search for some friends. Get back the surge almost definitely. Probably Hex Maniac. Gonna chip chip first though. Guzma, Guzma in. Wait, what's that other card? Stadium and a draw and Marnie. It's oh my god. Guzma gosh. Stadium Marnie. Yes. So what's he have to give him the stadium? Stadium, yep. Wow. 
So search for friends. Maybe he's going to get back delinquent here, knowing that he needs to discard that turf field from play. Yes. Or do you really care if uh, Kenny goes and gets uh, evolution Pokemon every single turn? It's tough. Um, well, I guess he can hold off on putting his own Galar Mine in play because he knows Kenny's not going to have energy cards. He's going to Hex Maniac, well, so you can't is pull he him out of the deck. Yeah, he is going to Hex. Oh, yes, he has so to Hex. Yeah, has to Hex, yep. Scoop up Nets. There goes the Skitty, and this is the cycle that Grant wants. There is that counter catcher in hand, the last piece of the puzzle. Maybe deciding what is the optimal basic to bring up Turtwig or the Cricketot. Probably the Turtwig. The extremely brave tots. Well, Crick, I guess Turtwig does accelerate energy to itself, which you don't want. So yes. even though Cricketot can get energies out of the deck, I mean, how fitting. We saw you know so much from Cricketot in the last game, and now he's the one trying to defend the rest of the team. Yes. The Cricketots is incredibly brave. Hang in there, tots. You've got it, bud. <laughs> uh, it's crazy. Just one energy separates Kenny from being able to win. And, and he, he can't doesn't have do it. it. He can't do it. Grant is preventing him from doing that. Kenny has the turf field stadium. Taking a look through the discard pile, just thinking, is it worth putting this in play or not? I feel like you keep it. You you keep it and to like increase your grant. If you increase your hand size, you like make. Uh, you can also like sh force shuffle the deck with it. Yes. If like there's a situation where that matters, I guess. Yeah. Um, it, it could potentially be a thing, I guess. So airmail. Let's grant. Look at the two cards. Puts one into the hand. Here comes the chip chip ice axe. Mm, level ball. Something else being put on top there. Yeah. I gotta assume it's something useless. Yes. So really, at this point. Kenny's best chance, and really only chance, is for there to be three good cards in a row. If Kenny has three good cards on top of his deck at the same time, Grant's going to be forced to leave him with a supporter card or energy, something like that. But Grant is prepared for those instances. He is actually playing a hiker in the deck, so that even if he hits three good cards off of the Chip Chip Ice Axe, worst case scenario, he can go Surge, Hiker, and then Hex Maniac still that same turn. Shoo. Yeah, that's tough. And, I mean, this whole game, if Kenny just doesn't have those two basics in the hand. Right. He's in the clear. The game's over. Yeah, the game's Kenny over. Kenny would win. Yeah, Kenny would win if he just doesn't have the basic in the hand that turn. It all came down to that one play with the puff, right? Um, which is tough. It's part of what makes it so hard to play around this hand control strategy with the Bumblebee and the... Uh, and the Del Caddy and the Chip Chip Ice Axe. There's just so many. Um, there's so many uh, different cards yes. that are that are really tough for the opponent here in the colorless deck. So Grant's gonna play Lieutenant Surge's strategy. Gonna Chip Chip first. So something Grant's gonna need to start doing eventually is playing Belelba and Bryson Man. Yeah. Because when you're using Chip Chip, you're leaving your opponent with bad cards. Yes. But that means that there's good cards still remaining in the deck. There's still supporters. Yeah, uh -huh. And so eventually, if they're gonna just have all the bad cards in their hand, and you play Chip Chip, you're gonna start to see only three good cards supporters yeah. energies those type of things and so grant needs to start playing belelba and bryson man to start milling cards from kenny's deck having a decent shot to get rid of those supporters and play the rest of the game out from there it is going to be a lieutenant surge's strategy turn and just loose mean i guess wanting to increase the hand size this will definitely get back surge and maybe just ooh wants to get back a stadium actually okay maybe wants to delinquent there we go. Scoop up net. Could want to delinquent the cards out of the hand, right? Just to make it so that Kenny doesn't have any options at all. Is going to just play Sky Pillar, maybe wanting to force. And just going to ro Roto Tiller. Okay. So the. Net, uh, nest ball just getting played and we'll see if Kenny actually decides to go get a Pokemon I think you might as well yeah because it's yeah. a bad card right so yeah. you're what you're doing is you're taking a bad card out of the deck that yeah. Grant would be happy to leave for you looks like Kenny's actually failing it uh, I think I like taking a card there uh, maybe just a one retreater if there's one uh, because there's no difference between that one retreater and any other you know one mm, retreaters yep. that you have in play so you might as well get the one out 
and then Turfield. So it could be time to start getting some Pokemon out of the deck, and why not go get Grottle, right? I mean, Grottle is thicker, harder to retreat. Um, there is no Gather Mine in play, uh, so there's that. So Grottle comes down, tough, can yeah, use Sundrenched tough. Shell, can start to just get cards out of the deck every turn if he wants to. Well, yeah, not if he's being hexed. Yes. Well, just kidding, yeah. yeah. That's a good, <laughs> uh -huh. This is a good point. Yes, yes, yes. So let's see what Grant is... Cooking up over here. Has the chip chip. Going to start with Surge, though. Beloba and Bryson Man going to discard the top three. There's a Bridget. Juniper is a big hit. That is a big hit. Doesn't really mind seeing the Venusaur. Kind of wouldn't have minded leaving Kenny with that card. Yeah, so Let's I'm see what these cards are. Level Ball again. Guzma and Quick Ball. Definitely don't want to give him uh, the Guzma. That is for sure. Yes, and I'm thinking that Grant probably wants to... Uh, Wants to delinquent, right? I mean, it's a way to get this kind of turf field out of there and also remove the remaining cards from Kenny's hand. So you're kind of working towards that goal eventually. Scoop of net, hex, and... He, he's got Gallarmine, and yeah, he, he just mine. wanted to get rid of that turf yeah, field. Yeah, just get rid of the turf field. So that's why we saw the Lusamine go get the Sky Pillar, so he just yep. wanted to bump the stadium. Oh, that makes sense. Yep, yep, cool. Yeah, Grant has actually told me a story before. He was playing a wall deck at a regionals one time. Yep. Not not a control deck, just like a Steelix wall deck uh, or Ridgy Gigas, something like that. And he had an opponent that had an Ultra Space in play, and that opponent used Ultra Space every yep. single turn <laughs> for uh, about 15 seconds. Yep. And they tied that match. <laughs> uh, yep. <laughs> so I think Grant is wanting to avoid any situation like that. Doesn't look like Kenny was going to be doing anything like that anyways. No. But yeah, I mean, these deck searches do take time. It adds up, and time is of the essence when you're playing control. Oh, yeah. We got 90 minutes, best of three, baby. There's a Grass Energy... There's a ball guy and uh, some other card, and I'm guessing that uh, Kenny's getting the other card. <laughs> yeah, not the good ones, that is for sure. Search for friends, getting back a couple supporter cards. Probably just going to be some Surge, Bell Elba pieces. Hex Maniac, of course, is going to be the Insta grab. Yes, and Grant is on the loop now. He's doing the thing. We are going to... See Grant, search for friends, get the Hex and the Belelba, play the Hex, scoop up Nets, the Del Caddy. He's been doing this all day, so yep. he knows exactly what he's doing. Kenny takes the top deck, pass, right? And at this point, he's just got to let Grant do it and see if eventually the chip chip fails. This is kind of like the control loop. Ooh, Tate and oh, Liza. Oh, yeah, hits Tate and Liza Very off big the top. Hit. Here's Timer Ball, Rod, and... Another card, yeah, and that's what Kenny gets. Yeah, yeah, it is uh, definitely looking rough out here, but you know this is kind of like the long game one. If Kenny wins, you know, if Kenny, yeah, if the lock breaks once, Kenny wins. Right? Yes. So it's like Kenny just has to sit here and kind of like weather it and say, just okay, hope. Yeah, hope. Hopefully the lock breaks. Right. There's some combination of cards that just doesn't work out. Eventually, you give yourself an opportunity to go for game two and try to win game two, right? And when you go for game two, you say, all right, if I win game two, all I have to do is uh, be up by the time time gets called a game three. Right. So you let this game go. Uh, it's, it's coming in on like 30 minutes now, and you let it go yeah, long enough for you to be able to win a game two, but not long enough. Uh, you know, not at a point to where game three yeah. would conclude. So Kenny right? is very fine and wants this game to play out. Yeah, yeah. wants this game to play out uh, because you don't want to... I, well, that's the crazy thing about controlling a best of three. All you have to really do is win one game and right. you can win the set. So that is... That's the strat. Uh, Mill three, escape rope, escape rope and an gone. energy. Yeah, that's really big. Actually, that is huge. And ooh, in... Roselia and... Roselia, yeah. Yep. Roselia is a easy card to let him have though it could become well never mind i was gonna say it could become roserade but uh you know if you're hexing every single turn roserade does not matter yeah no it does not and scoop up nets to reset the del caddy and roto tiller putting back those two cards chip chip ice axe and the scoop up net Rose, uh, Rosalia, sure why not yeah yep. you know come on down <laughs> endure this with the rest of the team Yes, uh, at least I've got my nice cricket tot up here on the overlay. I guess I'll 
put somebody else up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's get Bunnelby up. Yeah, yeah. Cricket Top's not even in play, Andrew. No, well, you know, he's in play. He's just underneath the tune. <laughs> so. so all Grant wants to do is get to Kenny having eight cards remaining in deck. If he can do that, yeah, he'll have to just... Lieutenant Surge, Bell Elba once, Del Caddy get back the Bell Elba, Bell Elba once again, and then Burrow two times, and that would award Grant the win. There we go. Bell Elba and Bryson Man, Rod, Evolution. Okay. And Kenny's just going to cut it, say, yep. Oh, well. Let's go to game two and see if I can't set up a, you know, a situation where I can win game two. These two players are so fast. I mean, with a 30-minute game one, it could theoretically conclude. Yes. Yeah. So that is a third of the time allotted for the best of three. Just a 30 minutes game one. Grant Manley coming out on top. Now Grant is just one game away from control, taking its first ever win at the Full Grip Games Gym Leader Challenge Tournaments. And that would be a big win for the control archetype. Yes, absolutely. Grant has been saying forever that this is the best deck in the format. Hasn't gotten the win just yet to prove it, but he's trying to make it happen in this tournament today. Also, Grant, of course, let's not forget, won the standard tournament yesterday. So he would be the first player to ever win both tournaments of the Full Grip Games doubleheader. I know. And with two entirely different decks. Entirely like you said, different decks. I mean, Mew is like the degenerate, you know, beat stick deck. And this is the degenerate uh, control deck. Uh, you know, they're both decks that players dislike for different reasons. But yep. uh, Grant is able to channel that and does not care. Just plans on trying to take those fat dubs any way he can and you got to respect the hustle absolutely grant is someone who will always play whatever deck he thinks is most likely to win the event he doesn't care what his favorite deck is he doesn't care what he's spent the most time on if he thinks that a deck if someone hands him a deck the night before the tournament and they're like hey this is the best deck in the format it doesn't matter if he's been working on a deck for a week if he feels like the new deck is the deck yeah that's what he's playing cool so grant has got some basics now. I think the bun will be Pidgey as well. And Pidgey. And Kenny gets one mulligan. We'll see which Pokemon Kenny opens with. And it is the Tot. It is the Tot. Normally an excellent opener, but it's a really bad one in this matchup because that's an easy target for Grant to bring up it turn is. after turn. It is. Not exactly what Kenny wants to have him play. Kenny wants to just have the Zarude like last time or maybe just the Rillaboom. Uh, it could be a situation where maybe Kenny is only building up the Rillaboom this time and actually you can use the Tot. It's not the worst starter because you can use the Tot to just go get the Rillaboom. Yeah, so sure, it's sure. like pretty low maintenance, uh, which is nice. At least it goes and sets up the other guy without having to put any other guys in play. Sure. So that's nice so long as the... Rillaboom is in the deck. That mm. is kind of the major thing. Uh, there could need to be some other cards played if the Rillaboom's not in the deck, which is not great. Grant gets the Chinchino and the Pidgey in play. Turn one, the two draw support Pokemon. Definitely what he wants to do. Kenny here has a Guzma in hand, Colrus, Marnie, and N. I think, yeah, you just do the bug thing. Yeah, seems good to me. Yo, how sick would it be if Grant could donk this thing? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, get in there with Chinchino, right? Yeah, just, you know, I think it's got like 50 hit points. Or yeah, a little too much. Yeah, yeah, too many. He's too strong, bro. <laughs> a little too big. Yeah, he's too big. A 60 HP basic bug? You don't see many of those. No, yeah, the filthy tots, dude. The filthy, filthy tots. Playing the trekking shoes here. Find a discard delinquent. That's a lock piece. He doesn't need to see that until later in the game. Playing the... Oh, yeah. I was going to say, probably the best card to get off the Poke Gear here would just be Winona. And there and, it is. Yeah, that's what he gets. He can go get Chinchino and Pidgeotto now. Yes. So, Grant is going to start churning through the deck. He is definitely not bricking here. He has got everything that he needs to get this deck up and moving. I mean... The turbo deck is control card, or the control deck is turbo cards and control cards. Yes, that's just what it is. Yep. It's either a card that helps me draw a lot of cards, or a card that helps me control what my opponent is doing. And those are the only two cards that are in the deck. So the deck is very consistent. It sets up very quickly, even though there are, you know, uh, there's not like I guess there are, there are a lot of draw cards because that's like all the deck is is right. draw cards and control cards. Like, look at that. Beach, Snorlax, you know, like Chinchino, Pidgeotto. You just motor through the deck, get to the bottom of the deck, 
get all the broken control cards, and loop them. And that's it. So Grant did see the Recycle Energy. That's a very good card to find at some point, but put it on the bottom of the deck and just discarded the Beloba and Bryson Man, a card that he's going to want but does not need until way later in the game. He doesn't even need Beloba Bryson Man until after the lock is set up. So he's happy to let it go to the discard pile because he will later be able to get it out of the discard with Del Caddy's Search for Friends. And it looks like Kenny is getting the Zarud into play, so choosing to go forward with that's and then uh trying to decide whether or not to play a card in his hand what's crazy is that it was that random reset stamp in the middle of the game like kenny had the perfect hand to be able to deal with the the puff and then just the random stamp just yeah. like got him into a hand with basics and he couldn't like you know figure his way out of it right so it was like a weird situation for kenny just unfortunate uh, looks like Kenny is doing the bug hunch again with the cricket dots and going to give uh, going to give Grant another turn to continue setting up this control strategy. The more time, the better. I think that Grant is definitely in a pretty good position because uh, yo <laughs> getting to control the top deck already <laughs> with the chip chip. Yeah, I yeah. think he's just wanting to thin cards out of his hand to try and draw with either Snorlax or Tropical Beach here. And he's going to uh, pr play Professor Sycamore anyway, so oh, okay. might as well just play it. Yeah, just say, hey, take this card, not that <laughs> one, right? Exactly. Makes sense. So seven cards off the top of the deck with that Professor Sycamore. And level ball. Yeah, oh, getting, traded away. Getting make dude away. Yes. And should be like a nine card hand now. Going to Pidgeotto Airmail, eight card hand. Yeah, I think it's unlikely he's going to get to use Beach, but retreating into the Lily's Poke Doll is pretty nice. Yep. And Snack Search. There we go, Snack Search. Tails, so no card from the discard pile for Kenny. Kenny going to get that rod off the top. I think every single time I have seen Grant use Snack Search today, it has been a Tails. <laughs> yes. You don't use it all that often with this deck even, but when you do use it... Uh, I mean, I don't know. It, it's not super crucial right now. It doesn't feel like, but yeah. I mean, I'm sure he would have would not have minded uh, hitting the heads there. Right. It getting is like a sycamore or something. Nice that Kenny has access to uh, the Marnie. I actually. Oh. This is huh. wait. Grant Grant has rescue carrier and rescue stretcher in the discard pile. Those are his only ways to recover Bunnelby. So if Kenny could pull off a turn of going Guzma knockout Bunnelby. Grant Yo. would not be able to recover the bunny. That's kind of poggers. That would be... He could snack search it, bro. He could snack search it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a good point. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Got to flip a heads, though, for mm, snack search, which yeah, Grant has struggled with. But eventually, yeah, he, he would hit the heads. Yeah, eventually you get there. But snack search can do it on the munchlax. Uh, you just end your turn, flip a coin. If heads, you put a card from your discard pile um into back on top of the deck yeah top of the deck looks like that's a make do yeah yeah just making sure he hasn't done it yet which he has not got just a pile of prizes there he does have all six grants deck does not take prizes nope and um, there is a snack search heads okay so yeah and kind of acknowledging so like okay i see that that's a uh, card needs to get back pronto <laughs> yep the Cricketune is now in play, and it will be an end to shuffle Grant's deck. He knows he just stacked a card on top, wants to just shuffle up and get a new hand, opting not to use Rillaboom's Voltage Beat before the end, which I think is fine. Uh, you actually are okay drawing into Grass Energy. You just don't want to draw into Basic Pokemon. Right, so keeping the Grass in your deck gives you higher odds to not draw Basics. Yes, which is exactly what Kenny wants at this point. I do think that Kenny does need to start accelerating grass energy into play, though. Um, the Cricketune can take knock out this turn. Yeah, slash. Actually, not even using Voltage Beat, which is... Uh, that's interesting to me. I'm trying to think of why why you wouldn't use Voltage Beat quite yet. I guess you're not really worried about the Hex Loop yet. Um, but it does seem like you probably just want to get uh, all three of these dudes just filled up with energy. Um, seems to be the situation, right? Grant puts Capture Energy on to Bunnelby, bringing down the Skitty, one of the key cards in the deck. Need to have it and eventually evolve it into Del Caddy. 
Looks like a hiker being debated, being played. Or sightseer, actually. So this will allow Grant to discard cards from his hand and then draw until he has five. Yep. You discard yeah as many cards in your hand as you want. And we got to make do two more cards. Air mail, two more cards. Choose one. Other one goes to the bottom of the deck. Battle compressor, thin the deck a little bit more. Get that ball guy out of there. Yeah. Don't need that anymore. Uh, maybe about a dozen cards left in the deck. Faba pretty useless in this matchup. Yeah. Nest ball not good any longer. Hisuian heavy ball can Unnecessary. go. Unnecessary. Yep, and the battle compressor. Just allowing Grant to get down to the kind of meat and potatoes of the deck a lot quicker. Kenny, unable to secure a prize card yet, doesn't feel good. No. Uh, this is kind of the this is the danger zone against the control deck. I want to say Kenny was doing much better game one. Uh, when it just came down to whether or not that, uh, yeah, whether or not the captivating Poke buff hit, and really the entire game hinged on that captivating Poke buff from Grant. Yeah, it is entirely possible for Grant to lock Kenny without actually playing the delinquent and the chip, the uh, you know reset stamp and all of those things. Because when Grant plays captivating Poke buff, he gets to see Kenny's hand. Yeah. So if he knows Kenny doesn't have any supporters, doesn't have any switching cards in the hand, he would be fine leaving him with that hand and yeah. just start chip chip locking right away from there. Exactly, exactly. So it's a nice hand check and gives him a lot of information, which is good. But, yeah, Grant does seem like he's a little too deep into the deck at this point uh, where with Kenny not having taken a prize yet. Uh, Kenny does have to kind of... Okay, Ooh. we're going to Guzma now. I'm going to target the Pidgeotto. Pidgeotto. Seems really fine. important card for the end of the game for Grant because that's how he, you know, Rototiller's two cards back in, and then that's how he draws both of them. He draws for turn and then air mails for the second one. Yeah, so Grant uh, Kenny is on the board now with a single prize taken. Does mean that Surge is now an option. Kenny does need to get more energy into play in order to make his Pokemon uh, more or less safe from gusting. If I, uh, I, I think that probably you just want you know like four energy on Rillaboom. You want at least three energy on the Zerud, and you want at least like four energy. In my mind, you want four energy on Krikatot. Right. Because it's not taking any knockouts. So you want to be able to retreat it yeah, through sure. Gallimard. <laughs> so in my mind, you want four on Krikatot. You want four on Rillaboom. Uh, that's eight, nine, ten, eleven. And then four on Zerud. That is, in my mind, that's exactly where you want them. So you don't want the Zerud to be in Flare Ground territory. No. Uh, but, yeah, it's it's a lot to ask, right? It is a lot to ask. You, you probably don't want to locate. And I do think that Kenny only plays 11. Yeah. So you actually can't put four on all of those guys. Nope. So kind of tough. Yeah, it's got to be three, four, and four probably, or, you know, could just leave two on the Cricket Tune since it can just start attacking, I guess. Even though you're only dealing 50 damage, you're at least doing something and forcing Grant to, you know, he, he can't it. get yeah. his lock cards back if he's having to flare ground, right? Yes. Uh, I do think that potentially Kenny should not have set up the Zerud at all, and that it actually should have just been Rillaboom and Cricket Tune mm -hmm. because... Uh, Rillaboom hits 140, so what do you care? You right. know, it, it, it one hit KOs everything in Grant's deck. Avery. Ooh, big. Okay. Munchlax and Skitty hits oh, the discard pile. Oh, that's big, actually. That's, that's pretty big uh, at this point in the match. I think this would be better if it was coming, like, in a couple turns from now on a turn whenever Kenny would be locked by Grant otherwise. Yeah. But the fact that it's coming now still not bad. Definitely not bad bad it's i mean it's good against Grant's it's good deck, it yes. is good for sure it's gonna force grant to have to do some things uh that he might not love or you know it's gonna it's gonna slow grant down a little bit he's gonna have to kind of reestablish instead of maybe just going for the perfect hand situation so Cynthia and Caitlin. Is Grant getting played. the Peonia back? Like, he did he, get the Peonia back. Does he, he need something in there? He might. He, it's really weird. He's peonia once. He's gladi he gladiated first, and then he's peonia So there must just still be something else he needs. Yeah, that's unfortunate. But, yeah, he must have had two things in there that he needed. Yeah, and only got one of them with the Gladian. Yes. So here we go. Let's see. What is it? Versus Seeker is one Scoop Up Net was scoop the up one. Scoop Up Net was the card. Okay, he was looking for that Scoop Up Net. Yeah, Scoop Up Net is a necessary card. <laughs> the lock does not work if you can't play Scoop Up Net. Yes, absolutely need it. Because you need to be able to pick up that Delcaddy and allow it to use its Search for Friends ability. 
This nope. is where Peonia can be so tough because Grant's hand is just full of the necessary lock cards. Yes. And he has to put three back. He does. Now, what's crazy... Uh, what's crazy about this deck, too, Hex is also so good against the control deck. You know? He's actually putting back the Pokepuff. He's oh, debating it, it looks like. Gonna have to be fine like, locking he can just up. lock the tune, right? Yeah. You know? yeah, he can. Or the Rillaboom, even, if Kenny does not put energies on it this turn. And this is the turn Kenny should put some energies into play on it. Yeah. But even then, if it only gets two energy cards, Grant can still pretty comfortably countercatcher it up. Yes. Yes, it is. Wow. I mean, what what a crazy what a crazy game. Uh there's really a lot a lot going down here. I mean, Kenny racing towards the finish line. Four prizes left to take. Uh Grant's board a little bit sparse. Does get the skinny back down. Has both the uh Chinchino and Pidgeotto established again. Yep. It's amazing that he's been able to continually establish these cards even though Kenny's been knocking them out. Yes, they're just uh they're back, you know. It's uh <laughs> it is insane, All right? It's absolutely insane. So, we're going to go for escape rope and the rescue carrier. Looks like and those get roto tailored back into the deck. And Grant only has like four cards, so he should be able to see everything next turn. Yeah, so let's see what Kenny is Working with that is a big hand. Yeah, right? could Colrus for you less? Colrus to like put cards back into the deck if you care to. Uh, looks like Kenny identifying that it's going down. Yep, this the three uh, prize turn. Yep, this is when things start to hit the fan. So we're gonna put some more energy into play. I don't think he can spread them, right? Oh, he cannot. No. So he's just putting them both on to the cricket tune. Which means Rillaboom is a uh, juicy, a plump target, target for for the counter catcher here. Yeah, it it is. That's it is. Now with this huge hand, what's Kenny got going on? A Cynthia Colrus going to Colrus for five. Doesn't want to get hit with the captivating Pokepuff, but the Rillaboom at this point is as much of a liability as anything else because of the hex counter catcher. Yes, exactly. Shenanigans. Exactly. Yes. So Grant will be happy to pull that Heavy Retreat Pokemon into the active as long as he can continue to play Hex Maniac every single turn. Yes. Let's see, does Kenny... Uh, what's he got here? Revitalizer, not super good. Netball can get super, an energy. Uh, yeah, nothing terror. really great. Yep. Just going to be the knockout. Bunnelby comes back to hand thanks to the Rescue Scarf. And now if Grant just has the recycle energy, he can throw it back down. And I think we're going to see a lock turn, Andrew. Yes, I'm thinking that that is what Grant's got queued up. Here is the make do and then the air mail into the bottom of the deck. He's got the rescue carrier. Yep. There's a robo sub. Rescue carrier can go get back the bundle bee and potentially the munchlax. Looks like those are the two cards that get grabbed. And that is a big hand. We have got the reset stamp. We have got the delinquents, right? To completely remove the hand. The chip chip axe. All of the key players are here. Here we go. Search for friends. Hope you're not attached to this hand, Kenny, because you're not keeping it for long. That is for sure. Del Caddy going to use its search for friends ability to get the Lieutenant Surge's strategy and delinquent. Lieutenant Surge's strategy allows Grant Manley to play two supporters from the hand during this turn because of the fact that he's behind on prizes which is uh yeah the situation because this deck doesn't take prizes so it's always going to be behind then he is definitely going to end up using delinquent yep. to remove that hand completely yep. and kenny tosses the hand onto the board there yep. it goes would have loved to have played a cynthia held on to it let's see what these three cards are rope and uh, i think that is a rosalia Yep, there was definitely a bad card. Here's the Hex, and that is the final supporter of the turn. I have to imagine that it is Counter Catcher up the Rillaboom time. Scoop up Nets, and here we go. Counter Catcher up the Rillaboom, and yeah. that is that. Kenny is not pleased about this. You can tell by his mannerisms. Yes, he is stuck once again. The Rillaboom has got a thick retreat cost. Of what, like four or it's something? Three. three. Yeah, yeah he's, he's a big a boy, big dude, man. He's not moving out of that active position easily. It's, he's probably such a high retreat cost because he has to carry that drum around with him everywhere. Uh, he does. Yes. Level ball, ball guy. Yeah, this is 
This is tough for sure. Chip Chip Ice Axe able to rearrange the top three cards of the opponent's deck. Why would Pokemon print a card like this unless they wanted this kind of deck to exist? You know, it's a great question. <laughs> yeah, what is what is the point? It is literally for a control archetype. I mean, I think that it's healthy for control to exist in some form, but I don't know that they really realized how oppressive Chip Chip Ice Axe would be. Yes, right? It's like, uh, yeah. I mean, not every card printed by the Pokemon Company is a card that... Uh, you know, it was maybe a great idea. They've certainly walked it back on a few cards. Trump card did not last very long at all. <laughs> no. Uh, approximately, what, one and a half sets? Something like that? Or yeah, one set. It lasted one set. It was released in Phantom Forces. It lasted through Primal Clash, banned instantly with ro Roaring Skies. Yeah, so, Shaman really kind of made that card just absurd. And those cards are getting designed at the same time. They're right. in the same block. Exactly. You know? The game designers knew that those two cards were going to coexist. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You got to wonder what's going on in the lab at times. Sometimes I just feel like it's Willy Wonka's chocolate factory, <laughs> man. Like there's just, you know, uh, it's just, it's just all fun and games, bro. And uh, yeah, what's the worst that could happen? <laughs> this. Yeah. I exactly. think this is the worst that could happen because this is the culmination of all of the cards. And Vin <laughs> Kenny using his V-Star powered V-Star yeah. scoop. Picking up the cards, and Grant Manley will be the winner here at the Gym Leader Challenge 2.5K Tournament at Full Grip Games. Grant Manley has done it again. Back-to-back -back champion. Wow. I mean, our first ever, and now is the most winningest player at the Full Grip Games release weekend tournaments, dominating at day one with the most boring Mew VMAX list you've <laughs> ever seen. And then finally taking his control deck, which he's been saying is the best deck in Gym Leader Challenge yes. format, but none of us have believed him. I believe him. Uh, I was like, ah, eh, bro, just win. I knew, man. I, I told Grant deck, he had to win. I knew. I told Grant he had to win one before he could claim it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Grant definitely cementing himself as the colorless gym leader after this so. one yes yeah. colorless uh with its first win that's right this is the first win each of our gym leader challenge tournaments has seen a different type win we have had the grass deck win we've had the colorless deck win we have the dark deck win and we had the psychic deck that's right win, yep the very first one so four different gym leader challenge tournaments four different types have taken home the cup and this one goes to Grant with his broken colorless control deck. <laughs> yeah, just an all-star deck. All of the best control cards from the last few years. I know Grant has had a marvelous time playing this deck. Sometimes oh, yeah. players who are playing these control decks are like, yeah, I mean, I... I'm just playing it because it's good. It's, I mean, I know that it, you know, is not fun to play against, but Grant doesn't care. Grant is having a blast. <laughs> He's care, loving bro. his life playing this deck, I promise you. <laughs> bro, yesterday at dinner, Grant Manley was just sitting there kind of in his own thoughts, you know, having just won the uh, standard event and just looks across the table and is like, bro, I flipped so many heads on Kramovatic. <laughs> You know, he yeah. was just sitting there just reveling in it. He's, today he's going to be like, bro, I decked out so many guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Yes, absolutely insane. So major kudos to Grant. Grant pioneered this archetype, uh, really, and built it up, has shown up to three out of the four Full Grip Games doubleheader weekends. Uh, was able to finish in... Was, did he top eight all of them? No, he did not top eight at the first one. He, he had a that. really bad showing in the first one, unfortunately. Yes. Yeah, so has cultivated this control deck over the course of a half a year. Yes. I mean, really. Uh, has been working at this for a long time. So this is definitely a champion title well-earned. Whether or not you like the control deck doesn't take away from the fact that Grant earned this and is the only player who knows how to play that deck this well. Congratulations to Grant Manley. I'm excited to see how he's feeling. I'm sure he is ecstatic being the back-to-back -back champion. The first time we've had that here at Full Grip Games. Let's get him back here for an interview and see how our champion feels.
I am here with our back-to-back two days of winning champion Grant Manley. You won yesterday with Mew VMAX. You win it today with the colorless control deck. What's going through your mind, man? How you feeling? Feels good. Feels good. Just played the best deck both times and uh, worked <laughs> out. Sometimes, uh, sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. Uh, but yeah, pretty good. Um, pretty good run. Yeah, pretty happy with it for sure. Absolutely, as you should be. Congratulations on the run. So you played two totally different type of decks between the two days. I mean, both decks I think people love to hate, right? <laughs> yeah. The the Mew deck and standard control deck in GLC. Mew definitely known as just being super aggressive, kind of a beat stick deck. You just go after prizes, you chase them really fast, big one-hit knockouts. But Control takes quite a different approach to the game, playing the long game, trying to lock your opponent at the end. So what made you kind of, you know, choose different types of decks for these two tournaments? Um, it really just comes down to I just play whatever I think is the best. Uh, day one, I I really didn't know what to play, so I, I just played Mew. It seemed like it, it's, it's a good deck. You kind of have to high roll a little bit. Control, you don't really have to high roll. Uh, it's pretty consistent, and you have a lot of uh, control over over your game. So uh, a lot of the games play out the same way. Um, so yeah, I just thought they were they were both the best, <laughs> both the best deck for for the, their respective formats. And you won the tournament today undefeated. Did you even drop a game in any of your matches in top eight or anything like that? Uh, no, I did not. Did not drop a game. It's pretty uh, good. Both, didn't <laughs> drop a match both days, so it's pretty cool. Both days, actually. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Wow. Congratulations. Right. Very, very cool. And you can uh, you can find your double full grip champion on twitch.tv slash trickroar, <laughs> where I stream Pokemon <laughs> a lot. <laughs> Never missing an opportunity to plug. You got to appreciate it. <laughs> All right, Grant. So, Gym Leader Challenge here. Closing it out with the control deck. I know you've said time and time again that this is the best deck in the format, and it's really kind of like an all-star deck of the past 10 years of good control cards, oh, getting yeah. to play some of your favorites from over the years. What do you think there is in the format for people to counter this? Is it counterable? Is there a way people can build their decks differently? Honestly, if Expanded had no ban list, the deck would probably look pretty similar. It would probably be like all the one ofs yeah. uh, for all the control cards. As far as countering it, uh, there are like a couple cards. Like uh, a random Bellaba could really get you uh, if you like run through your deck and then have three cards left before you lock them. Obviously, if you lock them, you are not going to let them have the Bellaba. But if they happen to have it and they let you run through your deck and you don't know about it, that will get you. But that's like a one time surprise. Uh, other than that, uh, like item lock is kind of annoying, but it is beatable. Um, the the most the best you can really do is play well and learn the matchup, which nobody plays control, so it's not, people aren't really incentivized to do that. Um, and that gives you you're still like not like control is still favored against good players, but they significantly increase their chances because they force you to have so much more and they force you to play really really well. Um, so luckily, yeah, I don't I don't think any of my opponents like this tournament like played it perfectly. Uh, which is really hard to do, and again, oh, for sure. no one really knows. Uh, no one like no one plays control, so it's like pretty unlikely you'll even play against it at all uh, in the first place. Um, but yeah, there. As far as like counters, uh, I do play the basic fire energy. So Faba, which would normally be a counter, isn't isn't really that that effective. Um, I don't really know what else. I think it would just be the Bellaba. <laughs> Yeah. Honestly. Yeah, Faba is probably pretty annoying because then whenever you're yeah, it's having to because yeah. you have to you have the super rod to get the fire back if you need it, right? And that's just forcing you to play so many more cards oh, every single turn after Giraffe a Rig. knockout, right? Giraffe oh. Rig beats this deck. Oh, for sure. There's, it's very hard to play around Giraffe Rig. Uh so yeah, I guess if you're playing Psychic, you could play Giraffe Rig or like Garbotoxin or something like that, but it's like only Psychic. Wabafet maybe. Yeah, Psychic is not a very popular deck. Uh, Wabafet's not bad because we played the rope for Weezing, so we're like, we're okay against Weezing. That's true. Uh, and stuff like that. But yeah. Well, congratulations, Grant. I know you're very excited to win back-to-back. -back. You, you, So you won in Standard, won in GLC. Did you have a uh, more favorite run throughout the tournament? Did you enjoy your run through Standard a bit more, or did you have a good time hand-locking everyone all day today? <laughs> and getting People's reactions when you hand-lock them with the is priceless because they don't, <laughs> when they don't know what's going to happen, they're just like, okay, I'm just going to, I have a fully set up board by turn three. They're like popping off. They're like, okay, I have all my Pokemon turn one Bridget or whatever. And then they get all their evolutions, their attackers with the energies. And, and they probably I'm, think your deck is yeah, terrible, yeah, right? Because you're doing nothing. I'm not doing anything. I'm just drawing cards. I'm drawing cards, drawing cards for the first, first four turns and doing literally nothing else. So they're just, you know, and then 
boom, it all crashes down all at once. And then they like, after you play all of those cards, they read half of them. Uh, then they realize they're like, oh, I see what's happened here, <laughs> yeah. and then it's too late. <laughs> and then so it is, is too priceless. late. Mew is just like I just kind of high rolled. I kind of sacked everyone with Mew. I flipped a lot of heads on Kramomatic, so it, that was fun. It was like all right, but I uh, control control deck is, is definitely uh, near and dear. Uh, so yeah, we we you know you, we worked on the deck together at the beginning of the format when we the did, format yeah. was first created. I was like, yeah, uh, no ban list. <laughs> I think control is going to be the best deck. Uh, so it finally gets a dub though. It, it hadn't quite won uh, one of these full grip events yet, but it's done pretty well. So yes, it finally gets the dub, and congratulations! I know you're happy that you're the one to get the dub, not someone else <laughs> piloting the right. deck. As always, really close last time, <laughs> uh, which was fine, you know. But yeah, it definitely feels good for sure. Well, congratulations, Grant! Winning two tournaments in a row. What other tournaments are you going to be at this year? Where else are people going to be able to see you? Uh, Milwaukee NAIC World. So I think that's like everything that's left for yeah. North America and, and then World. So. Uh, yeah, I think that sounds about right. Well, good luck the rest of the season, Grant. Hopefully we can make you see you make some deep runs at some of these other tournaments as well. I know you'd love to make it happen, certainly. And congratulations once again. I'll be right back with Andrew, everyone, and we'll close out the tournament. Thank you. That's a wrap for the Gym Leader Challenge, Astral Radiance 2.5K, and the Full Grip Games 6K double header weekend thank you so much for being here with us chip a weekend full of pokemon tcg action with both of our champions grant manley and grant manley <laughs> take it home the grand prizes yeah i know that grant manley's favorite person is the person that won the other tournament yes, so <laughs> yeah definitely he had the highest words of praise for yesterday's champion as well yeah <laughs> Absolutely. Well, thank you so much, Andrew, for having me. These tournaments are a blast. I love getting to be a part of these broadcasts. It feels like Full Grip Games is doing something amazing here. These tournaments have just continued to get bigger and bigger and bigger every single time that one has been put on. So thank you so much for having me up here and for all the work that you put into this stream and this show as well. And congratulations once again, Andrew. Let's get a hip hip hooray in the chat for Andrew passing 30,000 followers on hey, Twitch, man. That yes. is a massive number. Thank you guys for that. We've got 30,000 followers here on Twitch now. Very excited. And that is all you guys. So thank you guys so much for supporting the channel and for hanging out with us while we play Pokemon cards every day. It really is a blast. And I feel like I'm living the dream here. So thank you guys for being a part of the community. I'm going to be taking off. Monday and Tuesday. Enjoy your Memorial Day. Go and celebrate and have some good times with your loved ones. And then Tuesday, I'm going to be probably doing some collaborative content with Chip so that you guys can enjoy that at a later date. Chip, where can everybody find you? Yeah, you guys can find me on all social medias at Trainer Chip. Twitter is probably my main platform right now. So be sure to check that out. You can also find me on YouTube and Twitch. And I also do a podcast with Azul GG, who a sponsored player from Full Grip Games. We put out a new episode every Tuesday at 7 a.m. Eastern. It's called Uncommon Energy. You can find that on all podcasting platforms. And we also have a YouTube channel for it as well. Andrew, thanks so much again for having me out here. Yeah, you guys all have a great rest of your day. We're going to get out of here and go enjoy our Memorial Day weekend. And sleep. Yeah, <laughs> and sleep and shower all of the gross nerd sweat off of me. See ya.